video you do. That's throwing a rock out there, making a ripple. This right here, being on here, this could turn into a big ripple. Well, exactly what you said is so funny because I said the same thing before. Uh, I learned about carnivore through Dante from Frigno Freedom. Then I watched Dr. Barry videos. Now, yeah, yeah. my sister's doing it. My other sister's doing it. My mom's doing it. My stepdad's doing it. And now, like, how many people are going to ripple out from those? It's exactly. Like 10 more, That's 10 more, it. 10 That's more. It's, it's going to be a critical yeah. mass yeah. pretty soon. It's spreading like wildfire. Exactly. It's a great network, isn't it, that we're creating here? Yeah, it's the craziest mm -hmm. thing, too, because I've had people say to me, oh, you would have done the same thing if you just uh, got rid of all the junk food and ate plants, which is a whole sure. ridiculous conversation. But I'm like, where are the YouTube videos of people reversing type 2 diabetes on plants or IBS or colitis or depression or anxiety on yeah. plants? I, I'm not yeah, there's many. Those. Yeah, there's many like simple arguments you can make. I mean, I get that. Yeah, of course, you're going to feel great if you go onto a vegan diet, whole food diet when you're coming from highly processed. Of course, you're going to feel great. But 84 percent of vegans quit in the first year. Yeah, right? That tells you everything. It's not a diet that's loved by people. It's not a diet that tastes good. It's deficient. Your body cries out for real food. That's why it's, you know, they're abandoning it at, at such high rates. Um, I think after about 5.5 years is the average that, you know, a lot of these passionate be vegans last. Some will last longer based on genetics, epigenetics, and and just honestly how inert you are. Like that's that's quite often the case. You're so loyal, but it's destroying you. Yet yeah, you're still going to be loyal because you you know you bought the propaganda. Or I don't know. I think there's another thing as well is like you get you get attacked, like they call you a bad vegan or like you, you never were a vegan. Like the moment you fail and it's like, you didn't fail. You know, you're, you're about to succeed by abandoning the diet that failed you. You didn't fail, it failed you, right? It didn't work. Right. So I feel like a lot of these vegans, they're scared to be attacked by their following or their peers, the people around them that are vegan. And so they're almost like loyal to the cause that's destroying them, which is crazy. It's crazy. Right. That's very mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Well, mm. Lee, this has been great. I wish we had more time to do this, but if you ever want to do another video together, I would, I'd love to talk yeah, to you course, more. Man. Absolutely. I, uh, yeah, I love your course. YouTube channel too, by the way. I love your Appreciate editing. It, really cool. Thank I you, highly man. suggest everyone yeah. check it out. I, Appreciate it. Is that, is that like you do editing for a living or something? Because the videos you're putting together, <laughs> the Jordan Peterson one you did was awesome. Right. Um, nice one. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. It takes yeah. a long time, but I do, I do enjoy it. There's something about tidying it all up and it coming together. It's, uh, it's quite satisfying for me. Yeah. Takes yeah. a lot of time though, right? But it, I, I, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. It's, on the that. Long, it's the longest process. Yeah, I, I'm like, I should probably start editing these so much, you know. And my equipment isn't great, so I would love to expand a little bit and and, and invest in some better equipment because, uh, yeah, make, it make this, the process faster. I could also handle larger files, and and there's probably better software out there where sure. I can make a bigger impact. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're you're fired up and passionate and inspirational. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone go check out Ken's Carnivore on YouTube. Uh, and I got a link in the description below, too. Thank you so much, Lee. Appreciate nice it. Sure. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Awesome. Have a great day. Thanks, Bye. Lee. You too. Right. Take care. Take care. Take care. All right. That woke me up. Fire Let's up. go. I was wondering when you'd wake up. There we go. <laughs> wake up, buttercup. <laughs> Adam, how are we doing? <laughs> Adam, awake? Suck it Adam, up, buttercup. It's awake. $29,177. Let's go. Wow. We still got like five hours left. Wow. For you, there's five hours left. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like we got Jonathan here. Should we bring Jonathan in? Yep. Jonathan, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good. Thanks. How are you doing? Hey, Great. how you doing, bud? Yeah. Awesome. It's me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Welcome. That's very big, isn't it? <laughs> it's you, man. Thank you it's for joining me. us here on our 24-hour live stream. We're, uh, well, we got two hours and 52 minutes left. We're holding it together a little bit, but please pardon us if uh, we sound a little loopy. It's, it's been My a pleasure, while. yeah. Uh, yeah, you've been you you've been very well so far. I think I'm um, impressed by your your endurance. I don't think many vegans could keep up with this. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. So, um, would you mind maybe telling us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you found carnivore? Sure. Yeah. So my name's Jonathan, as you'll see on the screen. Um, I'm 28 years of age. I'm probably one of the apparent youngest people in the carnivore community online in terms of like YouTubers. Um, I kind of made this channel. I felt obligated to do it. 
Uh, so my channel is Carnivore Muscle. I found that there's a lot of young people out there, especially on the increase, that are suffering with illnesses, bad symptoms, from things that would otherwise be prevented, you know, or cured at least. Um, so I'm trying to get to the younger sort of audience by talking about nutrition in the realms of fitness, you know, building muscle, losing fat. So I'm trying to get people hooked on it through there. So I'm trying to approach it from a slightly more unique angle than some other people, but um, it's trickling along slowly. Um, so when I started, a bit like Lee actually, so I started with, that was just on, a sort of very little equipment next to nothing. I had like 200 British pounds on me or something. I bought the cheapest um, from like a pawn shop, a, um, a laptop I could get. Didn't have a microphone, didn't have headphones. I just recorded stuff and see what I could do. Um, I didn't have the confidence at the time to really make better videos. I think as I've progressed through the diet, I've been more, a bit more stoic, a bit less anxious, a bit more confident, a bit less shy maybe. And it's become second nature to me now. So like this doesn't cause me any anxiety at all. Um, so for those of you that might not be aware, you probably haven't come across my channel yet. Um, I was diagnosed with autism at the age of 21. Um, with that is, there's a lot of comorbidities associated with that. So that's digestive issues, depression, anxiety. I've um, got something called synesthesia, asthma, eczema, the lot, you know, you, you name it. Um, now, I wanted to speak a bit today about the depression, anxiety side of it, because I've got a much larger platform to speak about in this instance. So if people want to know more about me when it comes to like um, bodybuilding, losing fat, head over to my channel, subscribe there. But I'm going to try and keep this talk, if I can, about the mental health side of it. Um, I think that people on the autistic spectrum are almost hidden um, online, if that makes sense. So you'll often hear about like, very confident, extroverted people out there saying about things you know, great weight loss journey, things like that. But there's a very, it's a very small niche. But I think the people that stand to benefit from the most from the carnival diet, outside of pe obviously people that are um, an end of life care, perhaps something like that. I'm going to say the best representatives for that, the best um, kind of the people that almost deserve the diet the most for themselves are the people that have neurodiversity. So for people that don't know, the average autistic person, statistically speaking anyway, lives for about 16 years less than their neurotypical counterparts. So for me, that's quite shocking. So their starting point before the diet, before any other health issue is less than the average person. I think a lot of that is due to like elevated stress hormones. You just age faster. Your body has a lot more to deal with um, on the kind of psychological level, if that makes sense. Um, now, how that comes into the carnival diet, I'm going to say it emits all of the anti-nutrients, all the things that we know are detrimental to the um, atypical brain. So that's things like oxalates. Um, casein as well is actually one of them, but some people do tolerate it fine. Um, there's heaps of other things as well. Pretty much any any plant chemical can interfere with um, brain focus and processing. So for me, the carnival diet has been very helpful. Now I started in February, 2020, on the 2nd of February. I think it was like a Tuesday or something. It was a weird day. I just thought, sorry, I've had enough now. Um, now, I dabbled in this diet about, oh, it's about the age of 15, 16. So I wanted to get into shape for a bodybuilding competition. Um, little did I know I didn't eat enough fat. I didn't realize this was a diet. It wasn't a thing back then. You know, 10, 10 11, 12 years ago, it wasn't a thing, really. People did it, but it wasn't known, really. Um, so I just thought, we'll cut back, just get to, you know, the meat, um, a tiny bit of fat, so tuna and eggs five months got quite lean but i didn't feel much better but i did notice that my digestive function was a lot better so that told me okay, something here is working um then i kind of went through my depressive anxious late teens early adulthood kind of stage um, and i found that i started to add in more and more carbs so i became so hyper focused as a autistic bodybuilder on building more muscle so i began to eat more and more so i got up to a thousand grams of carbohydrates a day for months and months on end um so an astronomically large amount of food and I found with that it's probably been toxic to my body or it has at least I know but I can't really prove it um so what we know about that is it age you faster so I'm 28 years old I've been told to look about late 30s apparently um but I'm trying to reverse that right now by following a sort of sensible diet and yeah I seem to be doing well things are on the up um probably the most noteworthy thing for me with this diet has been the fact that eight days post spinal fusion surgery in December last year, I was able to exercise. Um, so that meant I could do, you know, with my Zimmer frame back then, I could do some stuff. 
do some dips, push ups against it on an incline. Um, well, I tried to do some sort of like half squat sort of variation, but it wasn't very good. But most people couldn't move for the first two to three months. Most people were let it up in bed for that long. So it told me my information is um, appropriate. I didn't need quite as many meds as a lot of people did. Um, most people were getting through like two bottles of morphine. I think I had one. Um, so yeah, the healing stuff, when you let your body do what it needs to, needs to do, it just gets some of it. You know, so for me, it's really impressive. Um, now, the other thing I think about the carnival diet is quite useful is that people often think it's the diet and that's everything. So you get a lot of people in this sort of area and they'll be like, okay, what diet I need to do? What macros do I need to do? What food? What meat? How often do I eat? All this sort of um, extra stuff. I think the most important thing is just to be as strict to the diet as you can. And that's something I've noticed myself. If I can keep well above 95% um, adherence rate, then I feel so much better. Um, so it is a lifestyle change. It's not something you do get a result, then hop off really, I don't think. Um, but getting back to the point, I think a lot of the benefits people have are in the area of the ancestral tenants. So emitting blue light, um, appropriate light exposure throughout the day. So I've got a little red, red light thing here. Um, it's morning here right now. It's 10 o'clock, but I find it calms me down a lot. So for me, you know, it's, it's a useful kind of thing to add like a little hack. Um, so as much as I like to sort of say the diet has done everything, I think these other little subtle hacks made a difference as well. So going to bed on time, um, you know, grounding. If it's warm outside, I can eat my food outside for breakfast, lunch, dinner, even better. So that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, so yeah, three and a half years into carnival dieting, I think 1,320, 23 days or something. And it's it's pretty effective. So how did you, I can how did you hear about the carnivore diet, Jonathan? Sure, yeah. So um it's funny actually. So I was working at a vegan health food shop. Um and I was managing that place. And you know what it's like when you go to these places, you know. So I, I partly got more interested in it because I had a lot of health issues and I wanted to supplement my way into better health. I realized that wasn't the case. Um some supplements are useful, but for the most part, they're not gonna fix a bad diet. Um, what I noticed around me was anecdotes of people on the vegan diet or vegetarians, plant-based people, and they weren't getting better. The aging, every time I saw them, if they're coming in for their mon monthly shock of like, you know, seeds or whatever it was, or like uh, B complexes, so told me, we can supplement all you want. But if your diet isn't aligned the correct way to produce a certain health outcome, there's no way in hell you're going to get better. You know, some people, like Lee said in the last little segment, um, you'll some people can free epigenetics deal with a bit but not a lot you know there's um i think there's a rate of adherence to like the kind of well, sorry the vegetarian or vegan diet for like a year and after a year they 84 percent fall off something like that that tells me it's not optimal but now we're getting testimonies from people like myself that are i wouldn't say i'm long term but you know longer mid-term sort of carnivores that are saying well yeah it's good my blood's good i'm clean i'm healthy my kidney function's excellent um, my muscle mass is good. I'm pretty fit. I heal quite fast. My brain works. Um, so for me, someone that had a chronic fatigue for the last 14 years and couldn't previously, um, you know, spend 10 hours a day online making videos, communicating with people, consulting people. Is that your favorite change? The, the lack, like now that you don't have the fatigue anymore? Yeah, that's been life changing, honestly. Um, I used to spend about 18 to 20 hours a day in bed so I could get up to eat. Um, I'd try and find part-time jobs at that point in time, but it wasn't, you'd try and do it, but then you, you sort of have a requirement to, oh, you need to come in for eight hours a day. And by eight hours with chronic fatigue, with um, a spine that's um, kaput, basically, it's not physically possible. So yeah. now I've got my, my you know, carnivore-focused fitness YouTube channel. Um, I can work through here, so I can sit right here now, um, half an hour, hour, whatever, you know, where it is. Then I can lie back down. I can go about my day and do different things. So I can work from home, which has been very helpful to me. Um, so this platform in of itself, outside of the diet side of it, has been very useful for me. Absolutely. What's your exercise looking like, Jonathan? Yeah, so I train between three and four days per week now, six to ten total sets, no warm-ups, um, no cardio activity, just because I can't really do any right now. Um, I train pretty intense, train to usually at least isometric failure. So we're talking, I maintain my physique right now or build it slightly on about three hours per week, maybe four sometimes. Wow. So, that ain't bad. Yeah. So and what, I, used to what, I used to train 15 hours. That's wow. crazy. Jonathan. What's been your biggest challenge on carnivore? 
Um, I think sifting through the information. So for me, I've obviously listened to people that have been doing it for a longer period of time, people that are you know well-versed nutrition, people that have been experiencing it. And at the start, I thought, okay, you need to go on your chronometer app on your phone, my fitness power, whatever, look at your nutrition and hit 100% everything. So I was trying to do that when I first started. I think that was the biggest mistake I made um, in that your body's requirements change all the time, which is obvious. Stress levels change, sleep changes, lifestyle, season to changes. Um, so you, have to, you just got to feed your body what it needs and you should get a good hunger signal for that food, uh, providing the fact that you're metabolically healthy. So that's that's kind of what I think. How do you think uh, your your over me- your overall mental health is doing on carnivore versus before carnivore? I'd say excellent. Yeah. So um, if if I'm completely honest, I've got a lot of stuff to be really pissed off about. You know, like a lot of people in this space, you have health issues because um, there's been negligence in some areas. Maybe you've not been given the right medication, the wrong therapies, treatments, things like that. I don't really have remorse, resentment, hate, which is weird, you know? Um, so people like, I know, um, I think Graham's, yeah, Graham is here. So Graham, he's a very upbeat gentleman. Yeah. You know? And I look at people like that and think, we, he's a bit older than me, but he's very happy. Then you see on the other side of things, so people like, um, I think it's that 85-year-old lady that's been on the carnivore diet for like 60-odd years. Yeah, she's so yeah. upbeat, and that's like that's a it's a light of inspiration. So that's um, something that shines true to me as someone that you know previously couldn't get out of that deep depression where you're just sat there in your bed thinking, well, "When's this going to end?" You know. What was the turning point for your 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 depression and stuff? I think in terms of like a time period, I'd say about a year or two. So it wasn't until I got a bit strict to start to be a bit more on the ball with the diet and realizing, okay, every day that I take off on the sheet and say, I've, I've done my job here, I've eaten properly, I get an inch closer. And it's adding up that percentages, I think, that makes the biggest difference. Um, I'd say, obviously, it is lifestyle dependent. If your life's not great, you know, you got to get your life sorted out. And I was actually asked on a podcast, um, I think I hosted maybe two, two days ago or something, and he sort of said, what do you say to the people that say they can't, uh, afford the, the food or don't have the time to sort of cook a meal like this and whatever i said well how much do you spend on food today and it's about 40 percent more than me and he's smaller than me um uh, and I'm, I'm a heavy sort of bodybuilder um then i sort of said how long do you spend cooking each day and it was again more than me and i was like you do have time this isn't something which is un- inapproachable um so would you so suggest on- the carnivore is yeah. the diet is is affordable compared to other diets like you're buying stuff out of boxes you know these other diets yeah well, that's the thing isn't it you buy a big box of cereal what's that nowadays over here it's like three or four british pounds maybe like five dollars well i could buy two pounds of ground beef for that mm. and that's going to give me you know, about two meals or something so that tells me it's not sustainable and infinitely more nutrition as well like we look at these cereal boxes oh it's fortified with this okay well, well, if it is so nutritious, why does it have to be fortified? And what particular isomers of all these vitamins and what variations of these minerals are inside this food? Assuming it's a food, but I don't really agree with that. So yeah, it's not it's not bioavailable, if that makes sense. So yeah, the diet itself has been so much more, more effective and it doesn't cost time, everything. I can tell you're thinking, man. I, I like the way your your gears are are moving with the carnivore. I, I can see it's got you uh, doing good. Yeah, hey, Jonathan. So you've done a lot of YouTube videos, like what 351 YouTube videos, and you've you've had a lot of really interesting carnivores and other people on there. Is there an interview that really stands out, or someone that you spoke to that that really memorable for you? That's tricky. I did more at the start of my um YouTube career, if it were. Um, my most popular one seems to be the Emily Harvo high fat carnival one. Um, the one that I found the most benefit from, I think I'm going to, I'm going to have to say any of the Bart K ones, honestly. Um, but Bart K has been very helpful for me in terms of me on a personal level on my YouTube. Um, and cause he's so similar to me, not in that I'm like him, but we, we both suffer from autism. We both trained in um, nutrition science. We both have, have a bit of exercise, you know, sports, things like that. So for me, that's been probably the most useful eye opening for me. So I kind of say 
well, he's someone who's done it. You know, now I'm trying to pick his brain to work out what I need to do in the future and how I can apply it to my clients. Um, I think everything he says is pretty much bang on. So that's been for me. Any of his interviews I've had, I have him on every month. Uh, most weeks he's on my channel on a video. So they're, they're ones to look out for. Mm. What tips would you give like a, a, a beginner starting carnivore? I'd say transition slowly. I think um, I, I help a lot of people with transition to carnivore diet. I've probably spoken, at least consulted with about three or 400 of them at this point. I'd say the key point is transition over four to eight weeks. Um, the way you might do that is eliminating one of your meals every week to be a, uh, a carbivore to a carnivore kind of style meal. So your breakfast is no longer eggs on toast. It's eggs and bacon, for example. Um, then just do that every few weeks. If you want to be a bit more precise, you can drop carbs by 20 grams, increase fat by about 10 grams. That will work as well. Um, and outside of that, outside of being so, like measured, is like just feed your body what it wants. So there's no one online that's going to be able to tell you, okay, I need, you know, two pounds of beef per day and six eggs. We don't know that. A year from now, you might need 10 eggs and one pound of beef. My diet has changed and evolved a lot over this time. I don't think it's a static um prerequisite if that makes sense i think the diet changes as your life has changed so going back to the point i said earlier about how your stress levels change and things like that your dietary requirements will change your body will give you a signal for that change if you allow it mm. um, so i'm at that point now where i can say i can quite happily intuitively eat um maintain my body fat without much thought process which is you know 10 12 percent right now so you got any big plans for your YouTube channel coming up? What's something you can clue us on in that you maybe got in the works up your sleeve? Yeah, so I'm um, so I'm probably going to remake a lot of my old videos. Um, that's probably my the forefront of my mind right now, just because I know I had the information about them. I didn't have the presentation ability right mm -hmm. then, so now I now I do. I have better equipment, better setups, so I can do it a bit better. Um, so you'll see a lot of the older stuff, the same information, just repackaged, repurposed. Um, but yeah, a lot of what I talk about is about the diet, the macros, a bit about the physiology. A lot of it is just logical speaking. Like what I'm saying, I try to make it as digestible for people as possible. So I'll make an eight to 10 minute video, how to transition to a carnival diet. What is leaky gut? You know, what is deuterium? How do you deplete it? Um, what macro should you follow? What's a good guideline? What do I think about macronutrient ratios and percentages? Like I've got every video you could probably ask for outside of like very obscure kind of, um, focuses like. I think a lady earlier had like Sigrun's disease or something. I don't have a video on that. Um, but I've had clients, you know, experience amazing effects that have had like lupus. I've had three clients with lupus. Um, I know people that have, I think you touched on the point earlier, someone did um, on brain cancer. I met Andrew Scarborough and he's been in remission of brain cancer for nearly 10 years now. So, amazing. you know, there's a, there's so much to go into. I just, I'm trying to keep it in that niche right now of like, um, building muscle, losing fat. So I think there's enough people out there right now that can talk about, you know, the benefits of the carnival diet. I'm more working at the end of that that funnel. The people that have got through it and like, okay, I, I've put my health status into um, a good position right now. Okay, I want to get in better shape. I think as much as non-scale vi victuals are useful, I think everyone wants to look in the mirror and be happy. Absolutely. You know, that's the common. I don't know anyone that doesn't really care to me. So there we go. That's where I'm. Weightlifting, building muscle, man. You're on carnivore. You're killing it, Jonathan. Jonathan There's a few Jonathan, of us. Yeah. Jonathan, are you going to continue with the exercise videos? <laughs> yeah. Because <myself? laughs> yeah, I saw one. <laughs> yeah, they're not as frequent as your ones, Graham. Um, yours are pretty cool, to be honest. I'd, I'd like to, but they are quite tricky to set up. Um, it, it'll take me about five hours to make a 10-minute video. Wow. Um, yeah, most of my videos take about three to five hours just because the the autistic nature of me is like, right, I'm going to zoom into this right millisecond here and make sure the transition is as accurate as possible. Um, but sometimes spending that extra hour isn't worth the 1% improvement. So. Well, it sounds like you got diligence, though. Yeah, it's a good thing to have, man, because some people really don't Extremely care about consistent. their craft. Yeah, we, we have to, I think. Um, ultimately, you hold yourself to a higher standard and other people look up to that, and that will inspire mm -hmm. them. Nothing I'm doing is unachievable. I don't have a degree in video creation. I'm not extremely charismatic. I'm pretty straightforward, but I can somehow make videos that kind of sh shines true to the fact that anyone can do it. So I'm really inspired that um, thanks to Kerry from Homestead Howie sort of like said, oh, you know, make a YouTube channel, come on the streams, whatever. Brilliant. 
more people have carnival on the name, the better, the bigger impact it has. Yeah. What do you say, Carrie? A rising tide lifts all ships, right? Yeah, for sure. I, I love that, man. Yeah. Well, it was like, um, like Lee was saying earlier too. It's the, uh, the ripple effect. You get one YouTube channel out there and then a couple people see it and then people see that one and it just keeps spreading. So we're rippling. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much, Jonathan. So your YouTube channel, yes. uh, I, I've got a link for it. It's, um, carnivore muscle and it's at composition consultant, right? We'll be hitting you up, bud. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. Check it out, subscribe. Watch some of uh, Jonathan's videos for sure. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I won't keep you guys too long. I think you've got uh, Michael Mason on next. I think he's uh, another British or UK carnivore. Yeah, I think we we have one. We have Rick, Rick next. next Rick, Rick, Mike yeah, Black. Rick before him. Yep. The forty. JT, year ask him about the ducks. Yep. Ask him about the ducks. Seriously. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ducks. He loves to. He loves. I got these here for for Rick. Uh, yeah, I'll do the uh, job. Uh, <laughs> oh, Rick, I want to grab something now. All right, cheers, guys. Thanks very much for having me, and um, take care. And thank you very much for what you're doing for this live stream. It's much appreciated. Absolutely. Yes, thank yeah. you, Jonathan. Thanks thank for you helping. For we appreciate it and supporting. See you, Jonathan. All right, I'll be right back. Hmm. Graham, how's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Yourself? I'm I see you there. trying to keep it. Up. What's that? I see you trying to keep your eyes open there. Yeah. <laughs> You're staying open a little bit. I, um, I ate so much food today. It's incredible. I had, um, mm. well, I don't know if you saw earlier, but this company sent me some steaks for free to try them. I'm not an yeah. affiliate for them or anything, but um, they, were, they were very good. I'm very thankful they sent them to me because mm. I ate all of them. <laughs> they, they sent me... I had two wow. ribeyes earlier. <laughs> I guess it was over 24 hours, but I had two ribeyes and then two strip steaks and then two power bowls and then two fillets and a whole bunch of wow. butter. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. I've been but really hungry lately. This moment, and then, really... Yeah, this is a lot of stuff. So Got to eat to stay awake. Oh, we got Rick. Yeah, bring him in. Let's go. Rick, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. Uh, How's it going, bud? Spice man, Rick. Hey. <laughs> Mine's got his little floaties on, so he doesn't uh, have a bad day swimming. Uh, this was a present I got from a friend of mine. It's actually a candle, believe it or not. But, hey, it's a duck. <laughs> I'll put Rick, the thank you for here. joining us here on our 24-hour live stream. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be legit without having the original uh, carnivore on here. I hope you're doing well. Oh, I'm good. Even though I've been up, I've been through the whole thing, as you've probably seen. I've made comment after comment. So, oh man, I love you, Rick. Man, you've been up mm -hmm. right with us, man. I figured that if Carrie can do it, yep. I can do it. Especially considering how long I've been on Carnivore, and you know, I really don't get tired. This is the funny thing. I was starting to think you went to bed. I didn't hear from you for like a little bit there. <laughs> I had some computer issues. You know, every all my hardware is old. And the stupid thing kept freezing up, and I had to turn it off. It actually overheated, so I had to shut it down for a while. I put it in the refrigerator, and then <laughs> I brought it back out. <laughs> I suppose it was on for a couple hours, right? Oh, I mean, it's been on since this morning. Uh, what was it, 8 o'clock? You know, it starts yeah. up, and I'm like, okay. And I, I, did, I had to work in the morning, but, you know, after about noon, I've been here the whole time. I haven't really moved from this spot, so... You talk about getting up off the couch. Well, I've only done that to eat and go to the bathroom. Oh, it sounds like what we're doing here. Yeah. <laughs> I've been glued to the screen all day asking for donations, right. interviewing people. <laughs> well, well, Rick, you said because we're carnivores, it's pretty easy. It's so weird. For the last five and a half months, it would have been easy. But just the last couple of weeks, I've been so hungry lately. I don't know what's going on. So it was weird timing, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get through it. No problem. Mike hey, has you know, been here too since the beginning. Well, you know what it is. Once you've been on this diet for a long time, you, you, your your hunger just goes back to what it's supposed to be. People always laugh at me because I eat so much. They say, "Oh, you know, don't let the food around Rick." So I said, "Look, eat your food first, and then I'll eat mine afterwards." <laughs> because I eat more than anybody I know, and even people that are really, you know, heavy, they they can't eat as much as I do. So I think it comes with the diet. Once you've been on it for long enough and you know exactly how much you can eat, 
then your hunger goes back up to what it should be. So I, I got a friend now that's transitioning. I've got him transitioning from his, you know, plant-based diet to a carnivore diet. And I said, look, start with one meal at a time. And, you know, now there's hunger starting to go down. I said, it'll be like that for a while until your body adapts. And then after that, who knows, you know, you may be eating more than before. Yeah. It was a big change. I was surprised. Well, hey, before we jump into it too much, I think everyone here knows you, but there's a lot of people on this. Would you mind uh, giving a little bit of your background and how long you've been a carnivore for? Oh, of course. You know, my story's been all around the internet, but I was sort of in the carnivore closet when it comes to the internet until last <laughs> summer. And then one of the carnivore channels I had made, I was making comments on a lot of the channels and he says, you know what, I'd, I'd like to put your story out there and we went and did an interview and all of a sudden there's like hundreds of thousands of people watching the video. Then I started getting on a bunch of different channels. So ever since then, I've been known as a 40 year carnivore, even though at the time it was only 39 years. I, I started the diet in a different way than most of you. I mean, most of you started the diet because you had health issues or you were overweight. Actually, I, I always believe that being overweight is, you know, a result of a health issue. So you know, obviously, if a person has aches and pains and they're overweight, whatever, that, that's a problem. But in my case, it was different. And, you know, I actually have a picture that I, I found and I haven't really shared it that much, but it was from my junior high yearbook, which is the picture that was taken like five, six months before I started the carnivore diet. Really? And it, it, yeah, it shows the story. The girls and everybody else were bigger than me. I look like somebody, you know, a couple of years younger than everybody else. So it was just a frustration, you know, I was a kid that was small and picked on all the time. And, you know, I had, I didn't have much confidence or anything. I thought, you know what, I'd, I'd rather just be dead. So, of course, I'm not the kind of person that would harm himself willingly. That's not the way I was brought up. But I thought about, you know, what would be a good way to go? And, hey, I figured the best way to go would be to have a heart attack. Because, you know, on TV, if you've ever watched Sanford and Son, you know, that the Fred Sanford I'm goes, oh. Elizabeth. <laughs> 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 so I thought, hey, you know, what a what a great way to go. You know, instead of somebody doing something to themselves that's not good, just, you know, just have a big heart attack and you could be in front of everybody and, and they'll all watch you fall on the floor and like that. And, you know, it's over. So you go out with a bang. I thought, hey, you know, how could I have a heart attack? Well, the easy <laughs> And then, I don't know, another thing I was thinking about is when I was a kid, they used to have Time Magazine commercials. I don't know if you remember. They always said, you know, I think it was, this is Time and you were there or whatever. And they'd show all the different ads. And I clearly remember, you know, after I started the diet, they had this, this ad. And I used to see it in a grocery store. And, you know, it said something about like heart disease. And it had bacon and eggs, like a frowning face. So, and all everybody was saying low fat, low fat, low fat. I thought, okay, what's the worst thing I could do? Eat as much meat and fat as possible. Then on top of that, my dad was always into health food. He used to read Prevention Magazine. You know, he was always talking about healthy whole grains. When I was growing up, they gave me granola and whole wheat bread and all this stuff. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to do the opposite of what they told me to do. I'm going to have, you know, eggs for breakfast. I'm not going to eat that stupid oatmeal or, you know, that ridiculous bread. I mean... The duck food? I, the duck food, you know, and, and that's the other thing. Oh, look at the ducky. <laughs> oh, I love duckies. You know, I, I tell everybody I'm just a big old quack. You know, that's just the way I am. But it was. You grow was bananas, part. too. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I grow bananas and, and I love bananas. I love He's my got plants. more bananas than a movie monkey, guys. <laughs> my really front does. yard. My front yard and backyard look like a jungle. It's it's crazy. <laughs> and and my vegan friends and even my non-vegan friends, they line up for the mangoes, the papayas, the bananas, even the tomatoes that I grow. Everybody's crazy for that. How'd so, you get a you green know, thumb when you're a carnivore? Well, ever since I was a kid, I like plants. I don't know what it is, but I was always fascinated that you could take this little seed and put it in the ground and it would grow. And, and next thing you know, you have all this stuff that, you know, you could eat or an animal, look at the ducky, an animal could eat. And then, you know, I was just one of those kids that didn't like a lot of things. You know, I, I was more into meat and, and dairy than anything else. So a lot of times they'd give me the healthy foods, the healthy food. 
I remember disgusting things like cooked carrots. Oh, I, I to this day, just the thought of it makes me want to throw up. You yeah, know, I, it's I, it's it's disgusting. And then all the peas and 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 the green beans and you know, I thought to myself, how can anybody eat this nasty stuff? <laughs> it is terrible. You know, it's like why why would you eat this nasty stuff when you could just have a a boiled egg instead or a piece of meat? And that that was the thing. You know, ever since I was a kid, the meat is what I liked. You know, I wasn't into any of that other stuff. And I was one of the few kids that wouldn't even eat candy because I didn't like it. I, I never understood the appeal of candy and especially chocolate. Ugh. It looked like something that came out of the rear end of an animal. You know, you have these <laughs> like little things dipped in chocolate. It's like something like <laughs> the chocolate was just disgusting. I thought, man, how could you, you know, and, and then, you know, chocolate milk is like, you know, what is that? Poop water is nasty. <laughs> all this stuff is just nasty. And then somebody has a birthday cake and a nasty cake with all that, that sugary crap on it. And all this, it's just terrible. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I couldn't, I couldn't understand it. And to me as a kid, you know, it was just the barbecue place is what I always like. You know, you go by Dixie Flynn's Dixie ribs and mm, you smell that delicious barbecue. I mean, even the Burger King at that time, which is down the street smelled good because it's meat that's cooking and, and on the weekend you know people have their barbecues and oh it's just you love that smell to this day you know i can't resist a good barbecue how many meals a day are you eating rick i eat three meals a day as i always have wow and like how, how like how much how many pounds of meat would you say you're eating per meal um right now for breakfast i have Let's see, I'll have about one pound of usually either ground meat or some kind of tough steak along with six eggs. And then for lunch, it's going to be about two pounds of meat. Usually lunch is, is either some kind of ruminant meat like beef, but it can be chicken, it can be fish, it can be guana, it could be anything. So it's usually about two pounds of meat. And then for dinner, that'll also be somewhere around two pounds of meat. And, you know, either meal, there may or may not be some dairy, which is usually homemade yogurt um and that's pretty much all that i eat you know if you open my refrigerator and freezer you'll see there's just a bunch of meat and a little bit of dairy well i saw you in the comments you were talking about eating peacock i have eaten peacock once i only did it once because i had a friend that had a serious peacock problem the neighborhood <laughs> he was living in yeah it was down there in the redlands and the stupid peacocks were just they were scratching up the car they were taking over <laughs> so I thought, you know what? I'm going to get the head peacock and I'm going to take him away. The so head I, I one. Oh, it. no. Yeah. You know, it was, and it wasn't easy catching him because those things, <laughs> first of all, they're faster than they look and they can fly really well. But we really? set up a trap. Yeah, we set up a trap and they make this sound like. Arr, arr. I mean, it's it's horrible. I, I can understand when you live. It's a nightmare with all that noise. And then, you know, so, well, they're protected. No, they're not protected because they're invasive. And it just came down to, you know what, let's just trap the thing and relocate it. Well, I, I trapped the thing. And then where am I going to relocate it to? Oh, you got to get rid of it. And the thing was aggressive anyway. So he didn't quite make it. So he made wow. it about as far as my kitchen. And How was it? What, what it does was peacock taste like? It was surprisingly delicious. You know, it tastes <laughs> almost like turkey. But I don't really like turkey. Yeah. It's it's somewhere between Muscovy duck and turkey. It, it has a more beefy flavor. It's actually quite good. You know, that's one of the best kept secrets of poultry. Peacock is delicious. Huh. Rick, was that one of the weirdest things you've eaten? Um, I guess weird is a relative term because, <laughs> as you know, I routinely eat iguana. And right. Some people would think that's weird. So <laughs> that's hard Have you to tried say. to juice an iguana? No, but I'm thinking about doing it for a video. The problem is my blender is too small, you know. I was thinking about that Saturday Night Live sketch they had back when I was a kid. They had, was it Dan Aykroyd, the Super Basimatic 76. Remember that? I thought about getting a little iguana and putting it in there and, you know, juice it up. I, I, got, so, I got so many laughs for my vegan parody video. It's so funny, you know. Now, Rick how do you vegan. grab the iguanas? Uh, it depends. I mean, you can use a catch pole. You put like a, a rope inside of a pipe and then you kind of slip it over the front because iguanas don't, they can't look behind them. They can only look forward. So you put it over their head, then you pull the, the rope and it'll, <laughs> it'll get them around the neck. The other way you get like a crossbow or a pellet rifle and shoot them. But the problem is a lot of times if you hit them, they're going to run in the canal and you won't be able to get them. So it's like a waste, you know, you shoot the thing, it ends up alligator food. 
So what you do, you use a catch pole. You can usually catch them. And then I'll, I'll keep a bag where I can stick the iguana in there. Problem is they have really sharp claws if you've ever seen an iguana up close. So it's not something that you'd want to handle, you know, barehanded. But if you get them by the tail, they're going to try to run away. And then you just have to lift them up and drop them into a bag. And hopefully they don't claw their way out. Have you ever gotten scratched by an iguana? I've gotten a few, usually, you know, on the on the arm. You know, it, it, it can be a pretty... Eh, pretty nasty scratch, but you know how it is when you're carnivore. It doesn't take long to heal. And you guys, uh, he keeps down the, the duck population by uh, getting some free eggs, right? That's right. You can see some of my videos. When I discover a nest, the first thing I do is raid it for eggs. And, you know, those are the ultimate free-range eggs. They're a lot better than the stuff you get in the store. Mm. How many of those duck eggs you eat at a time, Rick? Um... I've had up to six at a time, but usually I mix them with a store egg, so it's usually going to be one or two. Um, that way, you know, I'll, I'll get a reserve of them. They don't lay that many, and I probably have about 15 females that are, you know, laying eggs at any time. So, And plus the neighborhood, if one of my neighbors tells me they got a duck nest, because they're kind of wild here. They run all over the place. So if they call me up and say, oh, I got a duck nest to deal with, then I'll go there and take care of that. So it varies depending on, you know, how many eggs are available. I bet your neighborhood loves you, man. You're, you're controlling the ducks, the iguanas, man. You're giving away bananas, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They they love my tropical fruits. And definitely, you know, the, the iguana situation was out of control. Those the iguanas, they were going in swimming pools. They were digging holes. I mean, eating up everything. They, they were It was pretty bad. It was because this neighborhood sits between two canals. Actually, three. There's a canal, the main one at the end, and then there's one on the east and west side. So iguanas like to live near canals, and they just, they took over. It, it was about 10 years ago, it was incredible. You go outside, they'd be running back and forth. Everywhere you drive, they'd run across the street. But I pretty much got rid of most of the problem. You, you see a few babies now and then, maybe once in a while a big one, but that's about it. Hmm. How do you cook an iguana most of the time? Do you make a soup out of them, or you just... You can stew it. You can, you know, you can make a soup. I, I prefer deep fried. That's the way I like the iguana the best. But, you know, you just take the iguana, you cut it up, and then just get some lard or tallow, heat it up, and throw the pieces in there. It's like frying chicken. Man, that's quite the uh, bananas and iguanas, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, and the bananas also make a good French fry substitute for your carboholic friends because those plantains and um, burro bananas, they're just... They're a lot better than potatoes, and you can run them through a fry cutter, throw it in some beef tallow, and you got yourself, you know, they're not carnivore, but, you know, they're hard, I call them heart attack fries because the thing is, instead of using that healthy vegetable oil, you throw it in lard or tallow, and then that way, you know, you can really get that artery-clogging goodness going. I heard BW3s cooks their chicken in uh, lard or tallow, something like that. Somebody said it was something decent they cooked their chicken in. Beef tallow. Beef tallow. You're talking about that Buffalo Wild Wings? At least the plain wings. Oh, you know, okay. not the breaded ones. They got the ones with the bone in them. Right, right, right. Because right. I know I know around here they have a place called the Sports Grill, but they cook their chicken wings in seed oils. Uh, but I, I don't know if the, I've never – I don't really eat out. I don't think I've ever been in one of those places. The only time I've eaten out would be like at a – sizzler which is no longer around a sweden house or a chinese buffet or a golden corral i think the last buffet i went to was last year at golden corral and that place doesn't like me i don't think because you know <laughs> i usually i go there for lunch and i stay for dinner and i eat more meat than anybody else you know i, I probably put away four or five pounds of meat before i finally leave the place <laughs> how many of those buffets you got kicked out of rick um well the chinese buffet they had one called what was it called it was called no oh, i can't remember i think it was called fortune house that's it they kept playing the games they only put out a little bit of food at a time and they finally you know they finally went out of business so i didn't really kick me out but you put them out of business <laughs> i put them out of business and then there was that other one well the other one the health department put out of business because their food was just not let's just say it wasn't up to par if, if you look at we have a TV show around here called Dirty Dining, and I think it was called, um, I can't remember what the place was called, but it was down the street. I call it the Concord Buffet, but I think it was actually called, um, oh, I can't remember, but it was down there. and It was on the news. They finally shut it down. There's a couple others that they came and went, but yeah, you know, 
when I went to the buffet, look out because I will get my money's worth. What's your favorite cut of beef, Rick? We we got to know what do you fry? What do you put on the grill most of the time? A T-bone steak, of course. I know a lot of people like ribeye, but I've never, I hardly ever get one because I'm not a rich guy. But you know, usually T-bone steak. I I love that. T-bone steak. Mm. I'm already, I'm getting hungry again, guys. Yeah. I'm have to eat again. It is house. the next day. Fry up some <laughs> hey, Rick. So you've done a lot of uh, interviews on other channels. Uh, any of them real memorable or anything stand out? Well, um, the first one, obviously, was on that Carnivore Camaraderie channel. That got the most views, so that was a big surprise to me. I've also, you know, I've done, I think I've done a lot of them. Um, let me see. The first the first really popular one, I think, was uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee yeah. because I got a lot of new people interested in me because of that. And then... You know, I've also had, well, a lot of the newer YouTube channels that have popped up, they've used me as the first interview. I mean, look, even Ali's Can we channel. pop his, ch uh, his uh, YouTube channel link into the uh, comments for people because they're yeah, asking. Yeah, I, I have it in the description. I'll oh, okay. the comments too. I just yeah. threw it in the description. Um, right. So, yeah, I mean, even even Alia, she I think it was her first interview. And, and Dave Mack, we all love him because he's such a fun guy. I was his first interview. So I, I think a lot of times the new carnivores would contact me because I look like somebody friendly that they could interview and <laughs> would be entertaining, even though, you know, I'm, I'm not the most popular guy out there. I think a lot of times people look at me like I'm some kind of nut. Oh, and, come on, Rick, man. We all love you. Yeah, well, here you do. But I think in the general public, they think that I've lost my mind. You know, you think about it. You go to somebody's get together and they offer you all these so-called good foods and, and you just no, no, I, I don't want any of that. Just give me a piece of meat. In fact, I you know, mm -hmm. a couple of days ago, I went to get together and they have all these wonderful so-called foods. And, and they said, well, don't waste your time with Rick. Just just make a mistake. He'll be fine. Oh, do you want steak sauce? I was like in horror. What? steak sauce i've <laughs> never seen anybody react that way why would you why would you put sauce on a steak that's terrible you know that's oh just awful and when Usually they do when it's no good you got to put a bunch of stuff on it you know to try to fix the flavor that's how that was my thinking you know and that's it and i've been chomping away on uh, cheap steak and people laugh at me always chewing on this thing i said you know i enjoy the chewing effect you know you're over there you get one of those chuck steaks or you get a top round i usually get top round because it's the cheapest and you're chewing on this thing and you know it's like a shoe leather or whatever i don't care it's still flavorful and i enjoy it and i think a lot of times you know even my teeth have always been messed up i haven't had a cavity since i was a kid so and then it's like chewing ice a lot of times i would drink uh, ice water and chew the ice oh your teeth are going to fall out well well guess what I haven't been to a dentist since 86 and they still haven't fallen out. <laughs> you know, but they told me when I was a kid, I was going to have to have my wisdom teeth pulled and I never got them pulled and they grew in just fine. So I think mm. by then, because of all that chewing, I think it helps expand your teeth out a little bit. Ah. And, and I'm not sure what it is, but Hey, at least I didn't have to have anything pulled out. This got broken in a fight, you know, when I was a kid, because I got picked on a lot in junior high, and I you got were pushed playing down. around. You said that's it, man. Today's the last time, man. Well, that's what happened. By the time I got to high school, you know, once I switched to the carnivore diet, it seemed like my whole attitude changed. I just got to the point where I, I didn't, I didn't feel intimidated anymore, you know, and I wasn't even getting any bigger at that time. So I don't know what to say, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, I went from being a nervous and very frustrated kid to being sort of a, a, a joker, you know, having fun and just looking at everything in a different way. I, I just, it, it just seemed like when I was a kid in the seventies and eighties, everybody was following the trend. And then by the time I got to this diet, I didn't care anymore. And, and I wanted to go back to like the sixties or fifties. I thought, Hey, you know, that'd be a great time to live. So that's why I changed my hairstyle, changed my look. And I've kept it to this day because it's just, I don't know if it's a side effect of the diet or it's just sort of an awakening, but I got to the point where it's like, why would I want to be nervous? trying to be something that I'm not when I could just do what I enjoy. And if people like it, Hey, they can come to me. They can be my friend, whatever. They don't like it. They can leave me alone. And that's exactly what's happened. Someone says, I thought Rick was Ben Stiller for a minute. Really? <laughs> there you go, man. You're getting mistaken for a celebrity now. That's how popular you get, Rick. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not bad at all. <laughs> Unless you don't like Ben Stiller, then I guess then you'd be ah. bad. 
Yeah, maybe, but you know, I who knows? I mean, at my age, it doesn't matter. You know, whatever you look like, people can judge whatever they want. You're happy and healthy, though, man, and you're thriving on carnivore. I don't see a gray hair on you, dude. Nope. Yeah, look there at that, guys. Wow. I mean, there's there's nothing there. Yeah, the only no. thing you'll see is dark hair and a bunch of lard. Is that what you used to style your hair? That's what I used to style my hair. When I was a kid, I got the idea from a Tom and Jerry cartoon. I don't know if you ever remember. They Tom had and Jerry, one. They always was, tried to kill each other, man. Right, and they had one. And he, I think, it was called the Zoot Cat. He made a zoot suit out of a a hammock and I forget a, a lampshade or whatever. And he got lard and put it all on his hair. I thought, you know what? With the way the kids used to mess my hair up and harass me, I'm just going to put the nastiest thing I can find on there. And originally, I used Vaseline. But, you know, and, and then eventually I said, hey, why waste my time with that? I want to use pure lard. So then, then my parents said, oh, your hair is going to fall out. It's going to it's going to be bad for you. Well, well, guess what? You know, I'm 55 and it hasn't fallen out yet. So I don't I don't think that whatever you put on your hair is going to make it fall out unless it's toxic waste. But I'm uh, telling no, you, you define all the odds, Rick. Every everything someone told you something, you said no, no, no. I'm going <laughs> well, the other direction, and this is going to happen. I love well, that. It, dude. That's the thing, you know, and I think that's the one thing that changed my life because I got to the point where I, I realized that most of the stuff they were telling you was not true, and I, I didn't think at the time that it was done on purpose. In fact, I don't even think today it's really done on purpose. I think it's just somebody comes up with these ideas, and then it becomes sort of the the norm. You know, everybody gets used to it they repeat it and i guess if you repeat something enough times people are going to accept it so that that's probably what happened i got but, a question for you rick why do you think it's important for people to support the documentary bud i think the biggest problem is that we're still kind of unknown and i think that in our little space here on the internet you know i mean look i didn't even know the carnivore existed until 2020 so and i've been eating this way my whole most of my life so imagine all the other people that have never even heard of it. They don't know anybody like me. Look, I have friends that have known me for years and they know how I live and they still haven't tried. They thought it was just some kind of a joke, I guess. But if you could get something out there in the mainstream where the average person could see it and then they could realize this is a real thing. This is not this is not a scam. This is not like some infomercial where they're trying to sell you something. This is something you can do right now. You don't doesn't even cost you anything. All you got to do is change your mindset and, you know, accept something that you may have been told was wrong. So that's why I think this is very important. Now, I don't know if my example would be good for a, a documentary, but there's so many other examples out there that people can identify with. I, I think it's a great thing. Rick, I think you could have your own documentary, but I, <laughs> you're that interesting guy, man. We do one just on you, my guy. Well, that's good to know because a lot of times I've always thought that I'm just sort of an oddball. And, you know, I've never met anybody that's like me. I mean, I've met people that have There's only one Rick. There's only one Rick. And I've said that many times. You know, it's like I said, hey, identity theft, you could pretty much imitate a lot of people, especially if they're clones. But someone like me, I mean, how many things would you have to put together to make another Rick? I mean, first of all, <laughs> there would be too much work to try to figure out how to replicate you, man. They'd be like, yeah. oh, he does that, too. I didn't even see that coming. Yeah. Just well, that, well, pick a different that's one, it. man. You know, we're, first of all, you got to find somebody who's skinny and six foot six. And then you got to find somebody that has all these weird interests and, and has a certain style. You know, I mean, even you look at look at my video. How would somebody even copy that? How would they copy this goofy set? You know, there's just so many things they'd have to do. And, you know, and that's what I like when I meet people that are authentic. I mean, and look at you guys. Every one of you is unique. I'm look wearing at a Carrie. bacon suit, man, and, and a cow and hat. I mean, you're wearing a bacon, bacon suit with a cow hat. I mean, how who could who could make who could replicate what you have? It's just you not can't make it up. You can't make it up. Exactly. I mean, who would have an old theater and a homestead and, and an interesting family and all these things? It's it's not it's not typical. You know, not like these celebrities, so-called celebrities or these influencers. They rent some expensive car and some crappy McMansion or whatever. You can copy those every day. But people like us, you can't copy because we are the real deal. Mm, that's beautiful, Rick. You guys, I'm telling you, man, he, he's supporting the documentary. He's on here sharing his story. He's trying to hype up the uh, the fundraiser here. And you guys, uh, I guess 
Adam, how close are we? How close are we? We're like very close to hitting 30,000, I think. Wow. Yeah, I think so. I think oh, there he goes. Oh, there's Adam. Let's see what he says. Oh. We are at do do do. Hang on a second. $29,432. Wow. Let's go, guys. Wow. Almost All we need is one donation of another person who wants their name in the credits and, yep. and to get a phone call from Carrie. Put 500 in there and, and get another person who's getting their name in the credits, man. And you're, you're etched in history forever. That's why this is such a rare opportunity. If you don't snag on it now, it's probably going to be gone because your name's going to be etched in history because this, this documentary, <laughs> that's what it's going to do, man. It's going to make history. It's going to change a lot of lives. And it's going to be a, a real beacon of light out there. I really believe it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, this is another thing, too. You know, now that you mention it, that's the one thing that I want to change. You know, I've been on the diet forever. I mean, most of my life. But the next step is going to be I want to move out of here and I want to start something, some kind of uh, new business or new income where I can actually have money because I've been scraping by for years. I took care of my parents. So I think that, you know, the next step is going to be not to change the diet, but to change the rest of the lifestyle. That way, the next time that somebody needs resources that I could be one of the people out there that could donate, you know, I'd have a bunch of money. I could be like Dr. Kiltz and have thousands of dollars and just throw it in there and say, here you go. So that would be great because there's a lot of people out there like us that need, you know, we're not, we're not trying to beg for something. We need that little extra uh, support so that we can go forward and give even more to the rest of the people. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not like, Oh, we want something. It's like, we want to increase what's there. You know, it's like you start like the Bible with a talent and then you increase that amount of talents by your actions. And that's really what we're here for. Mm. I love that. Yeah. And if we increase what we're already doing now, we're just going to keep adding momentum and we're going to help more and more people. Cause each day that ticks by, man, unfortunately we're losing, we're losing soldiers, man, every day in this, in this battle it really is true. Yeah. Rick, yeah. have you ever thought about getting a duck named Morty? Rick and Morty? You know, I don't know. I guess that's possible. I've had several duck pets. I've had Donald and I've had Daffy. And, you know, my oldest duck <laughs> lived to be 15. And then one day he just died. And I believe it was a heart attack because when I dissected him, there was definitely, you know, the, the blood vessels are weak. I think he had an aneurysm. But, I mean, how long can a duck live? 15 years? It's like, yeah. And with all the meat that he ate, he ate a lot of that meat that they used to throw out at the Winn-Dixie. So, hey, I said, ah, oh, he died of a heart attack, and I laughed about it. Hey, I someone's said, yeah. got a quick, quick question, Rick. Where do you get your beef tallow before we go? Usually what I do, I just get fat from either the grocery store or a couple of other places that I know, and I just put it in a crock pot and render it myself. There you go, Carnivore Nana. That's a tip from the 40-year carnivore. We got Michael Mason coming up next. Man, that yeah. flew by, Rick. Of course. You know, when you put me on a channel, you know the time's going to go by because we're going to have fun. It's not going to be boring. It's not going to be the mm -hmm. usual monotone. It's always something different. We're talking ducks, iguanas, and Tom and Jerry. Where else can you get it, guys? <laughs> Where else can you get it? Rick. Well, that's it. You know, and that, it's just like a comedy relief. It's uh, you got comedy relief and information at the same time. I'm not as funny as your buddy Russ over there, but hey, at least today I don't have a space shuttle mic. <laughs> no, you're, you're back on Earth, man. I love it. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rick. We appreciate right. you. A pleasure being here. Email me, bud. I'll talk to you later. Okay? Everyone check out Rick's channel. I got a link in the description. Charger Mopar. All right. Email me, bud. I will. Okay. All right. See you, Rick. All right. Michael is coming up. Michael. Hello. Hey, Michael, Hello, Mason. Michael. Mason Survival Protocol, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Doing well, thank you. Thank you for joining our 24-hour live stream. We're, we're, we're getting down there now. We're under two hours. We're a little have you, been, <clears throat> have you been up all night? I've been up all night. I've been up since uh, four in the morning. So we're, we're going to do our best. Uh, we, we'd love to hear your story. And uh, yeah, stick with us. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully we'll make it a little while. We got JT over here with the bacon suit on. So yes, I wonder. I, I, I wonder. Party, what, man. I, I wondered what that was. Yeah, this is my bacon suit. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Michael, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and how you found the carnivore diet? Um, Michael Mason. Um, I live in the UK. I'm uh, 59. I'll be 60 in uh, January. Um, <clears throat> I can't really say that I found the carnivore diet because it's been something that I've been doing, um, a meat-based diet, pretty much all my life. And kind of like Rick. And pretty and you know and you know, pretty much, you know, my life's journey has been about um let's call it evolving myself as a human being, how I can get a little bit stronger, how I can be more more functional, how, you know, streamline stuff, what's a better food for me to to you know to, to eat. But always there's I've always understood the benefit of not eating shit food. Um, you know ultra processed food although you know when i grew up there wasn't so there wasn't so much of it as you know is it as it is is now so my journey has been always about you know finding out what what works better for me and what worked well for me in my 20s is different to to how it's been for let's say the last you know 20 you know 20 years or so and so over the <clears throat> excuse me over the years i've just got less and less vegetables less and less fruit more and more you know me and i and i've done i've done everything every diet not because of a health issue but every diet i have i have i've tried i tried being a veg i was a vegetarian for for 3 years and the last 6 months of that i became i was vegan because i wanted to try and this was in this was in the late uh 80s where you couldn't google anything you had to buy books you had to go to a library um there wasn't the same amount of, even then there was loads and loads of processed, like processed sausages. And and I remember like looking at them, I think like one, they're very, very pink. And the list of ingredients was just, you know, and, and it's not, it's like one of those things that people like, you know, all these um, movie stars and rock stars are getting on the bandwagon of um, advertising, uh, meatless products and they say oh this tastes fantastic well those sausages that i used to get the sauce mix tasted fine but they weren't doing me any any good and and, and people have just got into this thing about what it tastes like rather than what's actually in in there anyway so i digressed a little bit mm. so i tried being um a vegan because i was playing around with <clears throat> um protein and, and carbohydrate combining and just and being vegan made it made it actually quite easy but it was to be a vegan or to do it properly it's it's an effing nightmare because it, it it's and that's why people just want to go for the process stuff because it's easy and and generally most people let's let's call it lazy you know laziness they don't have time blah 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 they just get it off the shelf. Oh, vegan. They don't care what's in it. And so I tried that for six months and it was, it was a smell of, um, there was two things. It was a smell of bacon sandwiches, you know, like, you know, fresh smoke, you know, like bacon. And, and my mum used to make these, um, these fried fish balls, you know, uh, I think, you know, in, in America, they call it kefilter fish, but this is fried fish balls. She used to cook them in um, in beef lard. This was then. And just the smell was just, uh, I thought I've had enough of this. I've got to go back. And so that was my journey into, that was in the late uh, 80s. And then it's just been a just progression of just trying things. What works for me better? Um, I've always been very active. Um, I'm a coach, coach a lot of different things. And, you know, I just... You know, I knew when <clears throat> going through this whole process of trying different things, you know, the zone diet, well, as long as you're the blocks um, accounted for that, the, 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 you can still eat shit because it hadn't had a number. And I thought well, that doesn't work, even though loads of CrossFit people were doing it. So people follow that. And then, you know, paleo and paleo was paleo was 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 was, was, was great because it meant that you could make things like fruit crumbles, not with sugar, but you make it with agave syrup because that's paleo. 
loads of nuts and things and more garvey syrup and coconut oil and stuff like that and and it was just fantastic however that's not very good because you still stuff your face full of it it's still so i knew sort of like okay this is paleo but cavemen wouldn't have been eating blueberry crumble because just because it's maybe the garvey syrup or maple syrup or silver birch or, or, or you know or whatever so so i've tried lots of things um <clears throat> and but for me you know eating meat i knew as a kid eating meat made me feel really really good strong um and so really my my journey has just been just evolving it and and defining it and i haven't come from a place where i've been um let's call it metabolically sick. So for me, it's just been about, you know, and I think, you know, Dr. Ken Berry sort of like, you know, the proper human diet. And then, you know, 20, 30 years ago, we didn't have all these, um, these names for things. So we just like, well, what are you having for breakfast? I'm having steak and eggs. No one said to me, oh, you're a carnivore mm. or anything like that. It's like, that's what having steak and eggs, having bacon and eggs having salmon and eggs, you know, a high protein, you know, high protein diet. So a little bit of a digression, but that's, that's my, my, let's call it intro into um, the, the well-being of, uh, of the human. Yeah. You're just like naturally into it and we're just testing things, trying things out, almost like an elimination diet, almost you were eliminating things, right? Well, I mean, I think, I think, I mean, I think you, you know, you said it, you know, you said it perfectly, just, you know, wanting to naturally adhering to a natural diet. You know, I remember, you know, I remember quite clearly the time when, you know, back in the seventies, my mother went from having butter to having margarine and, and the, and the things that we have here, because it was like, butter is bad, you know, eat this. And I, you know, and as a kid, <clears throat> you know, carnivore, not carnivore, we all love, you know, buttered toast, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing, you know, you get good bread, you know. And I remember just having, you know, like butter and then it going to this thing called, uh, well, I can't remember what it was called, a floor or something like that. I'm thinking like, this doesn't taste the same. It doesn't spread the same. It doesn't have the same... It doesn't. It just didn't have the same sort of like feeling. But I remember that that you know that time <clears throat> when she went from butter, and then as a kid you don't know what you know. It's like you just you just go along with it. Yeah, it's like uh, butter's bad. But then here, try this thing that looks like butter, and we want you to treat like butter. I can't you know? believe it. I can't believe it's not butter because it's yeah. not fucking butter. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, 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 they got these burgers that they're made out of plant, but they're like it tastes like meat. Well, if it's like if meat is bad, why are you trying to make something like meat? You know, if butter's bad, why did you make margarine that's just like butter? It does, well, that, never that's I mean, sense. that's I mean, that's the interesting thing is that if you're, and I understand people's viewpoint on you know on on the environment and about animals, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and, and the welfare of of animals we must save the animals they should blah 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 i understand where they're coming from but why then have <clears throat> a vegan product called bacon or called hamburger or called meat and it looks it looks the same it tastes the same but it's made with plants why would you why would you um, without getting um and i try not to be I try to leave the controversy to to other people who are far better at it than 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 me, but it's almost and and I probably lose a load of followers for this or maybe I I I, I, I gain a, I'll, oh. hello oh. yeah we're still here yeah we're yeah still here, I've buddy. just I, I I just had a call. That sort of um, okay. No, no problem. So it would be like almost like a pedophile would use a doll. I mean, I, 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 there's just weird. There's just weird sort of like it's just weird sort of stuff. 
you know, you know, with 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 that. So, so for me, it feels perfectly natural. I feel good. Um, I just, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I just feel pretty amazing. I mean, it, it's it's a, it, with, with with what I do, how I eat, how I train. What are you eating life. in a week? Pump. What are you eating in a, during a week? What do you what does a week's worth of eats look like for you? Um, well, I I generally eat just just twice a day. That sort of that works for me. Just just you know, I was playing around with that type of um, protocol, you know, a long time ago, and it just seems to <clears throat> it just seems to work for me. I find not eating in the morning is really, really I just find that works for me very very well, and then. You yeah, know, look lunch, at Jack, man, it's working for you. I mean, lunch. I mean, I'll have, I'll have steak. I'll have steak and eggs. I'll have steak and more steak. I'll have steak and bacon, and and you know, I make my own jerky, and and I have a whole, you know, I have a whole load of that because it's delicious, and I can't stop eating it. Um, and then and then come sort of dinner, it'll be it will be pretty it will be pretty much the same. Um, you know, I make, I, I, I grind my own beef. So I go to local butchers, I get different sort of cuts. I make, I make my own uh, beef patties. Um, you know, I cook that up, just really, really delicious. I, I render my own tallow. So I get beef suet. Mm. Um, I get really, really good butter. So everything that I try to do is that, and not every, but I try to get the best not necessarily the most expensive, the best that I can, the best that I can afford from local farms, um, from, yeah. So from, from people that, from people that I actually know that I go in and say, hi, Jake, you know, so. You're looking pretty Jack, man. What are you doing for exercise? So, I mean, I've always been, you know, you know, I've always been, I've always been training. I've been doing martial arts since I was a kid. Mm. I was a professional ski coach um strength and conditioning coach and i've always you know i've always you know worked out i mean my work my workouts now are are different um uh, you know i called it sort of like smart training um so uh, you know so for, so for me training is a big part but not necessarily the um the part that you go completely crazy with or i've got to train you know i just like to move I walk the dog a lot. I've got a dog. So I'm What's your always... dog's name? Wolf. 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 That's carnivore. <laughs> yeah, he's he he he's a Czechoslovakian wolf dog. So they were bred with wolves and and, and German shepherd. And he he has a raw diet. He'll be eight next month. He's as healthy. And when people see him, they say, "How old is he?" I say eight. Oh, he looks really good. He's not fat, is he? No. Okay, he gets a lot of walks, but he but he's fed really well. And interestingly, Do you feed him carnivore. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's only he's only he's only ever he's only ever had that. What do you now for people who don't feed their dogs carnivore and don't know how? What do you what do you feed your dog and like how much do you feed him a day of it? So he's he's thirty seven. You'd have to work it out in pounds, but he's thirty seven kilos. So he gets depending on it around a kilo and a half. Of me today now with dogs it's it's generally sort of like fairly sort of specific <clears throat> it's that you have 80 percent muscle 10 percent bone 10 percent organ and that's like a good that's like a good all-round sort of like uh mix i get it from a um a company that that, that, su that supplies that you know and you can eat right you, you, not chicken you, and yeah There'd be there'd be there'd be there'd be there'd be some chicken, there'd be some duck, there'd be some lamb, um, but it's yeah. And I would I would just urge anyone who's who has a dog to fit to feed them because they're just so much. He doesn't go to a, a vet. He doesn't get the illnesses that that other dogs have, um, and he's just very very fit and 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 content. And interestingly. <laughs> I was at the, I was at the pet store the, the 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 other the other day and and I was looking at some of the pet treats because um, one of the things that I'm, I'm going into business like producing my own uh, jerky in the UK and and having um, carnivore treats for you know for dogs and I was looking at the the the, the dog ones, <laughs> pet ones and it was made in China and the list of ingredients again was 
it was just, it had peanut oil, it had peanuts, it had canola oil, it had hydrolyzed soy protein with the meat. And you're just thinking like, no wonder your fucking dog is sick. Yeah, I don't even know what that stuff is. You know it, what I'm saying? It's, yeah. Dogs it's so don't eat too. that. It's, it's like you said earlier, the further away you get from natural, just stay natural. That's all you got to do. It's so, it's so simple, but uh, yeah, we, we go further away from it. I think I heard Dr. Anthony Chafee say they did a study or something on dogs, and when they were strictly carnivore, they lived like 10 years longer on average, something like that. Yeah, that's damn near doubling a dog's life. Yeah. If they live 10 to 12 years, I mean, you're talking, I would love to double my dog's life. Right. You know? Michael, could you tell us more about um, the Mason survival protocol? I've seen a lot of guys with the shirt on. I've got a general idea, but just for the, for the audience. So, so the, okay. The, the, the name has really just come about from it's me. It's the essence of, it's the, it's, it's the essence of what I do. The food that I eat, the way that I cook it, the training that I do, the breath work that I do, but also the, like the experience that I've got in coaching literally thousands of people over the over the years from little kids, big adults, military, a whole spectrum, different 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 cultures, um, which was what I was doing when I was um, as as a ski coach in 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 in, in Switzerland. My martial arts training, the training that, that took me to train in, in Japan, in Israel, I studied under and, uh, a true grandmaster in, in Japan. And also my personal sort of, <clears throat> my personal sort of journey of um, having a, uh, being a drug addict in my, in my 20s and then changing everything around in, when I was 22, which was in 1986. And so if you look at the, whether you can see it on the bottom, uh, on the bottom of the logo, it's got the Mason Survival Protocol since 1986. And 86, it wasn't when I was born. I was born in 1964, but 1986 was the the year that I changed the direction in 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 my life. So, so I understand about addiction. I understand you know, all the things you know around that. Um, and so, the Mason Survival is. The, the protocol is just really the essence, the essence of, of me, and what I what and and what I can bring from all the learnings and the teachings and everything that I've had over the years, the whole journey. Man, you're looking great, man. I'm telling you, what you're you're it's working for you. Carnivore is working. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, so many people they get to age thirty and they think their life's over. And for a lot of people, when you look, you look at people, I thought you think, Jesus Christ. I mean, it's like you look screwed. And then people in 40s and 50s. And then, and I think people think, okay, once you're 50, things are going to go like that. And as long as you've got good health insurance, you'll be okay. And it's like, well, that's not how I want to live. Yeah. You know, I'm looking forward to in January. So I'll be 60 in January. I mean, I'm looking forward to that sort of like, so my, um, one of my hashtags is fit at 59 next year. It's going to be fit, fit at 60. And, you know, I, I'm looking forward to that, that fit at 70. It's like, I just want to keep on, I suppose, ultimately smashing the, the, the preconceptions that, that people have about age that they have about if you've got, if you're ill, if you, whatever that illness is, whether it's a me metabolic illness that you're, that you're screwed for the rest of your life, that you've got to be beholden to doctors to medicines, to all this stuff. And I just want to say, well, you know, there is another way. And it doesn't matter where you are at this point in time. You can start today and you will get, ultimately, if you follow like the, the simple things of which carnivore is, it's, it's, you can't make it any simpler for people. If you, you, will, you will get better. It may take time. And one of the, the, I think, the things that people sort of, they expect instant miracles. You know, oh, I've been on Carnivore Week and I haven't lost anything and blah, blah, blah. It's taken you 40 years to get where you were. It's not going to take you seven days just to, you know, it's 
so again with with the, the survival protocol is how i can bring that that consistency and show people how can be we can all be motivated everyone gets motivated everyone gets motivated new year's january the first right i'm going to not drink for, i'm not going to drink i'm not going to do this i'm not i'm going to go i'm going to join a gym and then it's only 8% of people who make those those resolutions finish it so i just want to show that we get, with consistency how do you and then there's you know the, the layers of how do you create that consistency but motivation won't get you there motivation will get you to that potentially will get you that start start point oh yeah right, i'm ready to go i'm starting carnivore next month why next month start it now right start it now if you haven't got the stuff in the in the, in, in, in the fridge now go to so start tomorrow you know, and then when people realize it's like, well, today is all we have. This is where our power comes from. Realize it's like, it's now. It's this minute. It's today. You can't start next week, next month. You might not oh, be here to... next month. Yeah, exactly. You know, oh, I've got to get into the right mindset. Well, hold on a minute. You couldn't get into the right mindset with what you've been doing to get you out of the situation that you're in now. So why do you think that mindset is going to get you motivated and consistent to do that next month? But this is the, this is like the programming. This is the, all the barriers that people put up. People want to get well, but they have all this other programming that has little, Oh, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. Yeah. They, they got to change the paradigm. They got to change their habits. <clears throat> they got to change their attitude. You know, if you've got a bad attitude and you think it won't happen, you're dead in the water. Wouldn't you say? And and you know, you know, with that, it's like, well, people want to. How do I change my attitude? People may know that, like, okay, my attitude sucks, but I haven't got anything to replace that. I don't know how to change my attitude, and that is that's that's where the the. Let's call it the, the the knowledge comes in. Like, how do you change the attitude? So you can so you can have loads of information, but unless you make start making that switch, you know that internal. Let's call it that internal head job. Mm -hmm. You know, under you know understanding, you know how food has 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 affected you. How all the other type of um, let's call it programming as a you know, as affect you you know your beliefs your biases etc etc and everyone's different because everyone's got different parents different schools different policy everything but once you start to understand well when I eat when I eat that it makes me feel like that and and you start getting a bit of a uh, you know, bit of knowledge that's where that's when then you can start making those changes I mean it's uh you know Victor Frankl you know made this you know, the point of from stimulus to reaction, that space in that space in the middle, that's where the power is. Yeah, that's the luminal you know, space. And, and and initially and because we 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 react automatically. You know, but once we armed with that knowledge of like what your uh, action does, we can that space becomes bigger and we can start making a choice. Because at the moment when you're in, let's call it active addiction with, let's say with food, you don't have a choice. You know, but once you start seeing what it's doing and what you can do, then that space starts to open up. Mm. And that's and you know, and that's and that's and that ultimately is where where the power is and when we can start making choices, that self-responsibility, I'm in charge of me. Mm. not you doctor thing who's telling me or or mr mate not that i go i'm just as an example not that he has or your your cholesterol is really hard we've got to put you on statins oh yes doctor mm -hmm. i you know i was i was brought up with my parents going to the doctor the doctor coming round for everything and he used to write out this prescriptions he used to my dad had a private doctor and he used to come round on a Sunday morning with this little doctor's bag, you know, writing out a prescription. What do you need, Harry? That's my dad's name. Oh, yeah, that. Or oh, what do you need? Like that. 
well, what do you need? Oh, yeah, what do you need? And that's it. And my parents were born in the time. Parents were born in the time where the doctor is like the top tier of, that's it. Oh, doctor this and doctor that. Oh, doctor said this and doctor said that. And now people are starting to sort of like that. It's starting to sort of crumble, thinking like, shit, they know. A lot of them know fuck all. They just, right. they just push. They just, they just push it. They're just pushing farmer. Right. I, I, I love what you're saying. That's, I don't, it's something I said a while ago when I started doing carnivore. I felt like for the first time I was finally in control. And uh, I kept saying this saying, but it's like I'm, I'm the captain of my own ship now. I'm finally in control. Where before the food was in control, or the doctors were in control. Now I'm in control of the food and my health care, my decisions, and everything. It's kind of a really liberating thing with carnivore that I wasn't really expecting going into it initially. Well, the yeah, thing is, have you ever tried listening to Bob Proctor? You sound like you listened to him once or twice. Well, well, Bob Proctor is 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 one of these guys. Like, there's 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 a lot of guys, these guys who, who who talk within. Let's call it the the new thought movement. But that is, but that is, uh, it's new thought, but it's it's from ancient ancient philosophy. So you know, Hermes, Socrates, they all, Jesus, Muhammad, they all sort of talked about, you know, st you know, st you, know st you know, stuff like this. Um, and I'm not getting into any sort of like re 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 religious thing, but this is this is uh, ancient sort of philosophy. Our right to be um, sovereign over ourselves and the decisions that we make and the responsibility that we have, the responsibility that I have as a human being to look after this shell that I have while I'm here. It's as it's as it's as simple as that. I've seen how illness um, has destroyed my, <clears throat> my my family, and I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be, you know, ten years, twenty years, you know, in a wheelchair that I can't do anything, and then I'm behold because then I won't have a choice. Oh, Mister Mason, you need you need um, you need to take your pills today, or you need to have the injection. There will come a point where I don't have a choice, and they're just doing it automatically. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want all, you need to have a, we need to put this vaccine into you and stuff like that. And it's like, that's, that's not how I want to live. I don't think anyone wants to live like that. Um, but I think how. A lot of us are though. Yeah, because that they, they don't know what, they don't know what else, they don't know what else to do. Yeah. We've become, we've become completely disconnected. But we ultimately we become disconnected with ourselves. And, you know, we're not disconnected. We shouldn't be. We're just, it's like, you know, one, I'm one unit, but I, but my head is disconnected from my, from my body. And mind, body and soul should be connected, right? Mind, body and soul. And it's, you know, it's, that's, that, that's, that is ultimately the, the real power that we have. We can put all those things together, you know, and with that, it's, and that's why some people after being on carnivore or anything after a while, <clears throat> They start to realize, well, that's taken some layers away. But I still have to start really sort of like dealing with some of the mindset layers with it with, you know, with within me. It starts peeling stuff away. That's at least what I found. And that's what also what you know what I see with um with people. Peeling back layers of that onion, man. We all got work to do. Absolutely. Coach has, would say there's, there's never a graduation. We're just always going to keep trying to get better each day. You know, po c consistently polishing the diamond. Yeah. And in, and in doing that, the diamond gets, you know, gets scratched. And then we polish a bit more. We polish a bit more. You know, there's no, there's no, there's no, you know, it'd be nice if there was some sort of like end game, but there's, but there's no end game in, in that other than me living the best that I can. Uh, today with what i with what i put inside myself the choices that i make the the choices that i make to the the stimuluses that i get and so my 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 reaction and you know i still have this thing when <clears throat> when people behind you know okay we're digressing a bit from the actual sort of carnival but it's but it's but it is pertinent um in terms of making that automatic decision to do something someone is I think you call it in America tailgating. They're right behind you. 
they overtake. And, you know, in the UK, we drive on the other side of the road. I would say the right side. Um, but anyway, we drive on the other side of the road. And so I'm driving. Someone goes past. And this immediately goes up. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, it's like immediate. The people in the car don't know any different. And, and, and so getting back to that stimulus and the reaction, it's the same stimulus that people will think, fuck you, let's go and have a donut because a donut or something like that, some form of comfort food, it's going to make them feel better. And so it's like managing those reactions that I don't need to start going down a route, whether it's anger yeah. or whether it's going and eating a whole load of donuts or ice cream or, you know, or, or, or shit like that that makes me feel better for that instant. Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. I, I could listen to you talk all day, dude. Yeah, You're me too. Awesome. I, wish we, I wish we had some more time. Unfortunately, hey, no. we got to wrap it up. So it's Michael Mason, the Mason Survival Protocol. Where can we uh, send people? I, I have your YouTube channel listed, but do you have a website or something you want us to shut up? So I don't, I don't really use, um, I don't really use YouTube that much. But on on Insta, <coughs> excuse me, on Instagram, I'm Mason Survival. Got it. So they can they can find they can find me on that. Cool. I, I'll I'll Maybe share that in the up. description. I got it right here. Mason Survival Instagram. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. Really appreciate your time. I really appreciate you. I wish we had more time to, to hear you some more, but uh, we'll send people over to your Instagram for sure. I'll hit you up, Michael. Nice Thank to you. talk to you. Yeah. And well done to, and, 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 and congratulations. Well done for everything you're, you, you're, you're doing it because the more people that know about this, the more people that think, shit, there is a way out. There's you know, hope. And, that's the goal. Yeah, there's so many hopeless people out there and they don't need to be. Yeah, absolutely. Man, you are awesome, dude. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Who's up next? Uh, Mr. Uh, Russell Banks. I'm going to update this description here on YouTube. I'll be right back in a second here. Hi, Alia. Welcome Hello. back. Yeah, thanks. I had to get a few oh, hours. Uh, my back is a lot better now. <laughs> Carrie, thanks for letting me go and come back. We're down to the last hour and a half. <laughs> hey, thank, thank you for everything you're doing. Don't you're welcome. Me. Oh, wow. Someone in my own chat just said, hi, welcome back. They're still there. Oh, my God. I love you guys for watching my the stream all night long. <laughs> and we got a super chat. We just got a super chat. Nice. Now I'm full of energy off of four you, and a half hours. Could you do an update, Ali, or do you need a little more time? I need a little bit more time. Who okay. is, is anyone updating the grid, or was that Adam? You guys, a $500 donation gets you a call from Carrie, and you get your name in the credits of the documentary. Oh, wow. A I lot didn't of people have that. taken uh, advantage of it. So, you know. Hey, there's Adam. I've been updating it. Uh, okay, <laughs> good. Right back. Yeah. It should be up to date, except for that latest uh, super chat. Okay, good. <laughs> Adam, I'm feeling it. Yeah, Adam. Oh my God! Thank you for letting me leave and then come back while you guys are still here. Yeah. I tell you, I cannot feel my beef cheeks. <laughs> yeah, I started to get leg cramps from sitting in this chair for so long. I'm like, man, I'm just gonna hop off here because nobody wants to see my face right now. Gravity oh is my not gosh. my friend when I sit this long. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just sucks yeah. you right in the chair. How are you guys doing out there? Are you guys getting sucked into your beds or wherever you're sitting to? Some of you been here since the start. I've seen you guys messaging all day, like Rick, uh, Primal Mike. You guys, I know you two for sure have been in here since the start. It's amazing. Oh, it's crazy. You guys are awesome rock stars. Yeah, and you guys, make sure you go in the description, pick up uh, the Redmond's, the little mini salt uh, holder. So you got you can salt on the go. Get you a custom uh, water bottle, pick up some merch, do some early holiday shopping, you know, like <laughs> get it while it's cheap and, uh, you know, you don't have to go to a store. And and if you're really late, you don't have to pick up like an air freshener from the gas station before you go to the Christmas party because you totally forgot. So shop early. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I just, um, I just got the latest one on there, Alia. So it's it's all up to date. 
Okay, and also the the um what is it called? The GoFundMe. Yep. Okay. And and the uh red red uh travel salts. Nice. All right, okay. I'm I'm refreshed. I'm ready to go. Sweet. Sweet. You know what? I think I need to close out. Give me one second. Let me just close it and then What do we got on the clock there, Carrie? Uh, 121. Wow. Oh There's a one on there. There's two ones. Wow. It's just it's too wild. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing for? I'm laughing at, I'm laughing at uh, JT. She's tired, guys. No, I'm laughing at JT. No, I've just had some sleep. And the, oh, my God. There's two ones on the clock. This is amazing. Are we updating the thing? Sorry, I just stepped away for a minute. Uh, he, uh, yes. Oh, so, cool. or if, if Carrie wants to do the final update right now, and then I'll do the next one. Not Carrie, uh, Adam. I'm just trying to reopen uh, the grid. I, I I'm can a do Mike, it. man. He's a tough guy. I didn't think you'd give up, Mike. You've got a you've got a warrior spirit, spirit dude. Do you have it open, Alia? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I closed it, and now I can't even. My email is not opening, so give me one second. Okay. Because I can't share my screen because for some reason, Apple, when I screen share, it changes the resolution on my laptop to the resolution of the iPad. So, mm, okay. So you can only see like half of the spreadsheet. That's weird. Yeah, it is weird. It's very annoying. Well, how about we pull Russell in in the meantime and then we'll figure it out? There okay. Go. Yeah, it's good. Good idea. Russell Banks, how are you, sir? Hey, I'm great. How are you? How you doing? Well. How you doing, Russell? Good. Russell. <laughs> Good to Russell, see you. It's been a while since we spoke, but there's a lot of new people on here. Could you uh, maybe give us a little bit about your background and your carnivore story? Yeah, I started on uh, August 5th, so it's been around six weeks or so. And so far, I'm down 40 pounds, and I feel a heck of a lot better. I'm off of several medications already, so I'm on the right awesome. road. Awesome. So it's uh, every. How you find uh, uh, I've been since our, since August 5th. I started. So. Okay. How did you hear about it in August? Well, my brother has been on and off of it for a, a few years and he had sent me uh links to both carrie's site and um dr barry yeah. and uh he he would email me you know youtube videos here and there <laughs> so uh he he had been planting the seed for a while and finally one day i uh picked it up and looked at it and i said i'm gonna do it and uh uh I did it the wrong way, like everybody always talks about. I, I just went completely carnivore overnight and <laughs> paid some of the consequences for that. But uh, it, it's it's all going better now. <laughs> so rough first couple of days? First couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite part about carnivore so far? Well, I've always been a steak lover. So, I mean, and just not having to sit there and think every other diet I've ever done in my life, which I, you know, I've done, done a bunch and I've actually lost all the weight and gained it back a couple of times. So in my life, um, but yeah, every, every other diets, you know, count this, count that, count that, keep track of this, keep track of that. I love just go eat a steak. You're done. <laughs> so even though you're eating like, uh, I feel like even though like you're just eating beef, butter bacon eggs and stuff at least for me um some people might be like well that's so restrictive that's all you eat i feel like it's less restrictive because i don't have to worry about what i'm eating all the time exactly exactly you don't have to uh count did i did i eat three grams of steak and was i supposed to add five pats of butter and then two strips of bacon with that or no you just eat <laughs> yeah i think chafee said if you're using a calculator you're just you're eating wrong all right you're doing well, it wrong. Russ, when we spoke last time, you had sort of a somewhat similar situation to Bill in Alaska, right? 
Yeah, yeah. I, well, when I started, I I seriously thought I was well over 600 pounds because I didn't have scales that I could weigh. And the last time I had weighed was 15 years ago. And it was in a hospital, you know, I was in a hospital about 15 years ago and I was 500 pounds then. So I'm thinking, you know, I had to have put on at least a hundred pounds since then. And, and that's what I was thinking. Um, and I ordered some scales off of Amazon that went up to 660. And honestly, I was afraid when I stepped on them, I was going to be over that. But uh, um, to my great surprise, when I stepped on them, I was actually uh, right at 500. So uh, I had a little bit of a head start that I didn't think I was going to have. Um, part of it's because I used to drink two 12 packs of Coke a week. Ooh. And about a year ago, I switched to diet sodas at least. So I guess maybe that had some impact on my <laughs> weight at least. But uh, yeah, I was I was pleasantly surprised to find out my starting point's only around five hundred. So and and now I'm down to four sixty one. So oh, congratulations! You got a you got a little head start, and you didn't even know it. That's right. So um, what's it? What's your typical? Uh, meal look like what, what are you eating um lots of lots of ribeyes uh and lots of hamburger and occasionally bacon and eggs uh but yeah i uh i eat more more steak and hamburger than anything else uh, I, i'll have either one of the two and uh i'm typically eating two meals a day right now uh i you know i started i was actually doing three at the start and uh, it two just seems I, I did the priming with uh you know the the steak and butter gals um group you primed up i primed up and uh it was <laughs> that was much and so i just eating when i'm just hungry it seems to level out at about two meals a day sometimes one i, I did one the other day i didn't even realize it anybody uh, else in your family that i hadn't he said, he said well, my brother's, brother. uh, yeah, he's doing it. He, he lives a, a good ways away. So we talk on the phone a lot, but we don't see each other much. Um, but we, we do, we do talk almost every day. So yeah, he's, uh, he's doing it. He's lost a pretty good bit too. Uh, he, he kind of stalled out there for a little bit and staying at the same weight, but he's still doing the diet. So it'll come off. What does your doctor say? Have you talked to your doctor? Yeah, she said uh, she said it's not sustainable. You can't do you can't do that. And I said, well, I said, can we agree that what I've been doing so up to this point is not healthy? She said, yeah. I said, okay. Well, you just did my blood work. Take my blood work in six months, and then we'll talk. Oh, yeah. Remember, she works for you, man. You don't, you know. Yeah. So, she does. She doesn't run your life. You run your life. So yeah, you, you can always so, get a new doctor if you feel like you need one. He uh, he kind of reluctantly agreed to that, and uh, and I, I then I proceeded to say, by the way, let's let's go over my medicine list because anything that you don't have a very good reason that I need to be on, I want to quit. So I I got off of several medicines. Uh, I went ahead and got off all of the 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 psycho medicines uh because you know i had i had had to i have had depression in the past but um actually and it, it, it had pretty well gone away since before carnivore but i was still taking the medicines so i was like you know get rid of these i read my bible every day and that that takes care of the depression and this diet is just going to boost it so <laughs> no that's great you we all got to have something that i think that helps us if it's if it's the bible then definitely stick to it like we need to set ourselves up for success i think uh too many of us are putting booby traps you know we're leaving chips in the house or something we're setting ourselves oh, up I, to, for, to fail, I, had the, I had the the fortune of I've, I've, I've joined a great church fairly recently and uh when i started this um several of the guys from the church came over and emptied my house of all carbs I said, if, it, if if it's not beef, bacon, butter, or eggs, throw it away, give it away, do something with it, just get it out of my house. 
would you suggest other beginner carnivores just throw away all the temptations? Absolutely. Uh, that uh, that removes a big stumbling stone. I, you know, fortunately, I, and I that that's one of the times it's good that I live alone because uh, you know if you live with a a spouse or somebody else that doesn't want to jump on the diet with you, you're kind of stuck keeping someone around. But I, in my in my situation, it was easy just to get rid of it all. Russ, and, uh, so when we spoke last time, you haven't left your house in a, a very long time. Is that right? It's been about seven years. Wow. Mm. Uh, what? Do you, what are your plans? Like, what is your goal? Are you, do you have anything sort of uh, figured out at this point, or are you just doing it one day at a time? Pretty much just one day at a time. At this point, my church took up a collection. They were going to buy me a motorized wheelchair so that, I, I mean, I, I can't even go see doctors or anything right now because uh, the ambulances won't, because of COVID, won't take you anywhere except to the hospital. And that's the only way I really have. I can't really get in a normal car uh, or I uh, I couldn't last time I tried. I, I, I don't think it'll be very long before I can again. But, um, but yeah, they had taken up a collection to get me a motorized wheelchair, and the insurance has been, you know, playing games. So I haven't gotten it yet. But um, the whole point of the wheelchair is I was going to go see a bariatric surgeon. Um, and I'm so glad I started this before I did that. Uh, before, <laughs> I think God may have blocked up that wheelchair to keep me from that mistake because uh, there is definitely no no need for a doctor to cut inside of me I mean, all i gotta do is eat steak bacon and butter <laughs> i'm glad you found carnivore i mean otherwise who knows what they would be suggesting to you no doubt uh so i'm, I'm happy about that uh now the you know the wheelchair would allow me to do a lot of other things that i can't do right now and, and until i get to a point where i can do them without it but I really think, you know, staying on the carnivore is going to take care of that sooner rather than later. What are you doing for exercise? Are you doing like uh, resistance bands or are you just... Um, what yeah, are you doing? that's pretty much about all I've got right now. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's just... Uh, now, standing up from my desk is getting to be less and less of a problem. But it's, you know, it's still not the easiest thing in the world. I still have to use a cane or a walker to walk, but I, I use a cane mostly. Because the walker is too, too bulky to use in my little apartment here or duplex. Yeah, you got to uh, do what you got to do, man. But uh, what's your uh, favorite cut of beef? Ribeye for sure. Uh, ribeye. You ever oh, had yeah. ribeye steak? I haven't. I've, I've been hearing a lot of people compare it to ribeye. What do you guys think in the comments? You guys ever have chuck eye steak? All we order is parts of the chuck so i'm sure i've had chuck eye we usually order the entire chuck so it's in there and what's funny about that is only one part of it is too hard to eat like hmm. one little part of it we haven't figured out how to cook but everything else is fine now so, i have been getting what over calls chuck steaks uh but because you know they look a lot like a ribeye they're fairly marble but they're a lot tougher but uh they're cheap so i've been eating a few of those but not not chuck eye but uh just they just call them chuck steaks. <laughs> Russ, you mentioned um, the steak and butter gang coaching. Is that something you're doing regularly? Yeah, yeah. She, uh, and in fact, I think you you actually had sent her an email telling her about me when I first started this, and she uh, she sent me a link and uh, and got me hooked up with her site. And um, yeah, I've been doing. They they do Zoom meetings. Uh, uh, you know, several several nights a week on various topics. So I've been I've been doing the the sugar and carb addiction Zoom meetings and the uh, the Friday night they've just got a nine scale victories kind of weekend Zoom meeting. And I did the one on priming for a while, but uh, I think I'm past the point where I need the priming right now. <laughs> What's your favorite non scale victory? You were just mentioning it. Um, just the the ease of getting, getting up out of my chair really. And, uh, I have a chair in my kitchen that I had been afraid to sit in because I nearly, uh, fell every time I went to get out of it. And I'm, I'm able to sit in it without any problems again now. So I can sit in the kitchen and cook, um, 
cook my steaks awesome. and whatever. It's so the little that, things like that that I think people take for granted. Definitely. Yeah, because I definitely, you know, I couldn't stand over the stove long enough to cook uh, fry, fry eggs and bacon and stuff, but I can sit there while it fries. <laughs> getting it done. Getting it done, you guys. We, we shouldn't find excuses, man. Uh, like Sean says, find solutions. Yep. It, uh, yeah, but everything just, just is getting a little easier every day. And uh, that, uh, that's all I'm asking. Absolutely. Just keep headed in the right direction. Sounds like you're headed in the right direction. You feel like you yeah. are with carnivore? I do. I, I, I've, I've had one, one slip up, uh, and I did exactly what uh, Dr. Barry told me to do. He said, you know, when you... When you fall off the wagon, he says, just the next thing you eat, make it beef, bacon, butter, or eggs. So that's what I did. And, uh, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> good on you. That's what I'm eating now, man. Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. It feels good. <laughs> I got my bacon on here, so I just, I can't get enough of it. <laughs> you know, I've actually been up so long, guys. My ba my bacon is wilting here. It won't even stay up anymore. It's just flopping <laughs> over. Russ, so you have a YouTube channel, Grateful Carnivore? I do. I haven't got much on there yet. Uh, I'm I'm got some ideas about what I end up eventually want to do with the channel, but I haven't really done a lot yet. Uh, but I think I'm going to make it a twofold channel, spreading the the word of the carnivore diet, and as well as uh, talk a talk a good bit about Jesus because uh, you need you need spiritual health to go with the mental with the, the physical health so I'm gonna try to get both of those words out on my channel and I think that's the kind of the direction I'm gonna take it but I haven't uh, like I said I've only done a few updates so far all right well we will uh, we'll shout you out people will go check out Russ at grateful carnivore check him out he's grateful yeah, and he's carnivore. Sure. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll put another update on there in the very near future because I haven't done one in a while and uh, kind of let people know that's the plans for my channel. And... Yeah, let them know how you had how much fun you had on the live stream here. Make a little vlog <laughs> out of it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you, Russ. We appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks, hey, thank you. Thanks for supporting the doc. Hey, I, I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing the movie. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Thanks to you, man. <laughs> All right, y'all take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. All right. Semi retired Bob, let's go. Yeah, we have an update, Ollie, or we should do we do have an update? We do have an update. One right. second. So we're at thirty thousand. We just made it to thirty thousand dollars. Woo! Woo! Make and dance. It's yeah, we can dance. Uh, and so we're seven hundred dollars away from the next target called thirty-one thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm sure that's going to be made in no time. Uh, Twenty-one thousand to the GoFundMe, six thousand super chats, seven hundred. Um, yeah, you guys can see the rest. Wow. So, hey, Ali, are, is yeah. the water bottles? Is that the total like for the water bottles? That is the total profits for the water bottles. Oh, nice. Oh, I guess yeah. that makes yeah. sense because there's 30. Yeah. Okay. It's, wow. not, it's, not, it's not updated either. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll do that next. Bed, We're so. killing it, man. And I'm telling you, everybody, go out there and do your holiday shopping early. And then especially if you got that carnivore in your life, they're going to be like, oh, man, you got me the water bottle. Oh, you got me the Redmond Salt thing. Or like, oh, you got my name in the documentary when it comes out on Netflix. You guys, that's a great gift to surprise someone with. Pay the 500, you, they, you can get the call, you can keep it secret, and then you get their name, and then they watch the movie or the doc, and then they see their name at the end, be like, yeah, I hooked you up. Once oh, in a yeah. lifetime opportunity, don't sleep on it. How many of these are there? I'm having trouble seeing. I, I can't see straight oh, anymore. Total? Let me see. I'm going to take this busy. down. All right, here we go. Um... We got over it's a thousand people like... watch right now. Last hour, home stretch. Hey, last hour, real quick. One more shout out for these Redmond Salt, portable travel salt. I bought my little, little carrier. You get a random one, hold it on your keychain. You go, you go out to dinner. You go to a friend's house. Gift. Comes preloaded. You can refill it. Makes a great gift. Definitely the link is in the description, gift. and all of the proceeds go to the Carnivore Diet documentary. 
I'm Everyone surprised you weren't selling those salt. knives, Carrie. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, it looks like here it says 94 orders. Oh, on let's the website. go. It says orders 94. So those wow. water bottles, too, they're high quality, man. Everything is just great. Pick up a compassionate carnivore shirt. Like all that stuff makes great holiday gifts, man. When someone opens it up and they're carnivore, they're going to be like, yes, dude, somebody was paying attention. <laughs> nice. Yeah, dude, I really like yours, Adam. That one. Yeah. Can you show it one more time, Adam? Guys, look at how nice that this cup color is. is. Amazing. It's got his yeah. It's got his logo on it and everything, man. It's got it's, my name on it. Yeah, it, telling you that's that's quality, guys. All right, should we say hi to semi-retired? Yes, Bob? let's go. Yes. I'm excited to meet him. Semi-retired hey. Bob, how are you? Let's unmute one second. Hey guys, how are we doing today? Great. Good. Good. Nice to meet you, bud. We're hanging in there, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Carrie, you don't look any worse to the wear. <laughs> I feel like I got some big, heavy uh, heavy eyes right here, but we'll I see. I know I've got some big, heavy eyes. I didn't get home from work last night till almost 1 o'clock in the morning. And wow. By the time I caught up on all the football scores and let this, th let this thing run on my computer, I got about two and a half hours sleep. Oh, no. What's your football uh, team? i for a carnivore, though. <laughs> Maybe for you young kids, that's enough. That ain't near enough not, for me. Not anymore. <laughs> Bob, just uh, for, for our audience, I really enjoyed talking with you last time, but uh, we got a lot of new people here in the audience. Would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and how you found carnivore? Sure. Um, very quick. I was kicked out of the Army in 1983 because I had gout. I followed all of my doctor's directions and that led me to diabetes about 25 years later. And then I added the diabetes diet to the gout diet. And all that did was get me a triple bypass surgery about five and a half years ago. And I was basically sitting around the house waiting to die when, for whatever reason, um, Dante Ferrigno's video, 125 days on the lion diet popped up into my YouTube feed. Watched that. That led me to Dr. Barry and Dr. Chafee and Dr. Fung and, 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 and the list goes on forever, but primarily Dr. Barry and Dante Ferrigno. And 16 months ago, I just started. I said the heck with it. I was sitting around the house waiting to die. So I thought, you know, this is either going to kill me or I'm going to get a little pain relief out of it. So I started that, and let's see here. A uh, quick recap of everything that's happened to me. Um, my spinal stenosis is 99% better. My arthritis is 99% better. My type 2 diabetes is gone. My fatty liver disease is gone. My chronic kidney disease is gone. I have not had a single gout attack since I started this diet. Um, what else? There was something else I'm missing here. Oh, yeah, and I've lost 155 pounds. Wow. Oh, no nice. biggies. Oh, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good for you, man. Yes, well, indeed. The, the, the spinal stenosis, um, just a quick question on that. Do you know, is that kind of a common thing that people overcome on carnivore? Because my mom's a carnivore now, and she was on, the, she was on here earlier, and she was listing off all of her things. I never heard her say that before, but she said the same thing. She had spinal stenosis and seems to be recovering from it on carnivore. Yeah, well, spinal stenosis is a narrowing of the spinal column so that when you move your back, your the the your central nerve actually rubs on the outside, and the the inflammation goes down when you get to an inflammation-free diet. Um, I don't know that everyone will get relief from their spinal stenosis, but I, I was, I'm one of the lucky ones that has, um, but I'm not, I'm not up on that enough to tell you if it's a common thing or not, because okay. I haven't heard a lot of people talking about it. Interesting. And how is, uh, how has your mental mood sort of thing changed after carnivore? Oh, I guess the best thing I can say about that is uh, 
I was at work last night, Dave, the owner, I've worked up there off and on at the miniature golf course since 1990. And he said, I'm just a completely different person. Um, that this, le this summer I reminded him of the guy he hired back in 1990, mm. as opposed to the older guy that was, had been with him for a long time. Wow. Wow. That, that felt good. Yeah. Yeah. How many meals a day are you eating, Bob? Um, I'm still primarily one meal a day. Um, this summer, I have at, been adding in a second meal two or three times a week because I'm doing so much. And I'm close. I'm close to goal. I won't say I'm at goal, but I'm within about 20 pounds of where I want to be now or where oh. my brain thinks I want to be. Um, and because I'm doing so much, you know, my yard, my own yard work, cutting the grass, going to the YMCA four days a week, working out, um, two days in the pool, walking as hard as I can in chest deep water, two days working out on the cable machine to strengthen my shoulders and my chest. I'm doing push-ups, I'm doing sit-ups, I'm doing, I can't do a pull-up yet, but I am hanging and I'm doing wall pull-ups. Um Oh, yeah, and I, I walk every day anywhere from three to five miles on top of all that. So there are days that I just feel like I need more. So I still primarily eat once a day, but my second meal will be, you know, just a quick little six scrambled eggs or a pound of ground beef or something like that as opposed to my usual you know, pound and a half of ground beef and 10 eggs or, you know, a two and a half pound chuck roast or something like that. And how long have you been on the carnivore diet? 16 months. I started on May the 9th last 16 year. Months. Wow. And what's your favorite non-scale victory in those 16 months? Well, I can stand for more than two to two and a half minutes without severe pain. Now I can do all the stuff I'm doing. I mean, because that's really why I started the carnivore diet. I had no expectation of weight loss when I started this thing. I was, I was just looking for a little pain relief because I was taking the maximum amount of Lyrica that you can take in a day. And I was taking uh, Tramadol on top of that in between the Lyricas just to get through a day. And I can't even tell you the last time I took a pill. That's amazing. It's, it's been 10 or 11 months now. What does your family and your friends think about uh, the carnivore diet? Um, well, my sister seems to think it's okay. Um, she's, she's a very skeptical person, but, you know, she's... She's an actual hard scientist that wants actual science data on everything. And, you know, as I always tell her, okay, well, you know, as soon as you find me some science about any kind of nutrition, then we'll talk about this. But, you know, she's a, a nuclear physicist, so she's, she's in the hard sciences. Um, <clears throat> my sister Judy thinks I'm nuts. <clears throat> and that's okay. But she's always been the small one in the family. So I, that and my friends, yeah, there's a mixed reaction. They see what's going on. A couple of them have asked me about it. One of them has even started trying recently. So we'll see what happens. I have, another, I have several other friends that are convinced I'm going to die. I'm like, well, you know. Where my life was 16 months ago versus where it is today, even if you told me for sure that this diet was going to kill me in six months, I still wouldn't trade any of that last six months for going back to how I was living because that was not living. Explain your mindset then versus now. What's the difference in the way you're thinking? Well, then, I, <clears throat> excuse me. My voice is a little hoarse. I like I said I was outside of the golf course most of the night. Um, 
I was basically just sitting around waiting to die. I had no long-term plans. My long-term plans was to wait and see if I'd get up the next morning and then decide what I was going to eat hmm. and what I was going to watch on, on TV because that's really all I could do. And now I, uh, I'm got tons of long-term plans. I am still planning on through hiking the Appalachian Trail in 2025. I bought a chunk of land down in Texas. I'm going down there in about a month to start building my own homestead. I'm not going to I'm not going to actually start doing livestock and that kind of stuff until I get it ready to the point where I think I can live there year round because it's kind of hard to take animals with you when you go home to Omaha. Um so I figure it'll take me probably two winters to get everything set up to stay down there year round. And then I'm going to have chickens and goats and sheep. And since I've got 10 acres, I may even have a cow or three. Carrie says, don't get male goats. They're, uh, they're kind of worthless. <laughs> you want the females so you can make like goat milk soap and all sorts of stuff. I don't know that I'm planning on doing any of that kind of stuff. We'll see where it goes. Right now, I'm planning on raising food. Well, if you do want goats, I know Carrie's got a couple. Yeah, you can have them. <laughs> I'll, even, I'll deliver them personally. I'll drive them down to Texas. I love those goats. Those are my favorite goats. Bob, um, you've done an incredible amount of uh, YouTube videos, like over 400 or so. Yeah. Are, are, I'm trying to think. I'm looking on your channel. Are they all uh, carnivore related, or were you doing it before? No. If you if you go back, there's about forty. If you at the top of the tab, when you click on the videos tab, there's a newest and oldest. You oh, click on the oldest, and oh, that'll wow. bring up that'll bring up my old photography channel stuff. Wow. <clears throat> the most interesting in all of that stuff is I do have. A five or six video series on the Omaha Zoo. What a what a transformation! Go Bob. subscribe, wow. guys! Wow, wow, wow! Show Bob some love. Some yeah, go subscribe, semi-retired Bob. The link is in the comments and below. So, Bob, I, I saw some really cool people. You had Anita from Ketogenic Woman on not too long ago. What's some uh, some sort of standout uh, people that you've had on your channel, or vice versa? <laughs> Anything remarkable? Um, well, you know, I've I've interviewed Professor K. I've interviewed Dr. Barry, um, Russ from Homestead Howe was just a couple of weeks ago or last week. I don't remember which, but uh, I really enjoyed talking with him. I've talked to so many piece, people; it's hard to pick, you know, one or two because <clears throat> if I don't like the people, I don't have them on my channel. Um, <laughs> So I like everybody I've interviewed. Um, later today, after everybody recovers from the from this 24-hour live stream, this afternoon uh -huh. you can tune in and watch me have a chat with Coach Bronson. Oh, awesome. nice. What time? I usually release those at 2.30 Central. Okay. Cool. Hey, so you had a good time with uh, Russ, Homesick Buckeye. Yeah, Russ is great, and you know he's a fellow Buckeye. So nice. You know, we we to... around. He was on earlier, and he he sung a bunch of songs and sang for Ollie. He's so funny. <laughs> yeah, because I was gonna leave Ollie a birthday thing on her Facebook, but she apparently has it set so people can't write on her timeline or something. Oh. I didn't know that. Girl. I'll have to fix that. Well, Bobby, <laughs> you're just going to have to sing her a song, man. <laughs> Actually, it was yesterday. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm 40 plus one day, so. <laughs> you're saying, yeah. Oh, well, it's yesterday. It, it was yesterday. You're, it's beyond her birthday by about six hours and 13 minutes, according to my clock. <laughs> right? I went to sleep. I went to sleep after my birthday ended. <laughs> <laughs> Today, yesterday, it's all blending for me. Yeah, and I saw I saw a good bit of it. So Sean had to go to bed so that he'd get, go to work or something. Or what's 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 with the intentional carnivore bailing out of hosting? Yeah, <laughs> what is he a lightweight? He, he started he the hardcore seventy-five card. challenge, and so he has to do hardcore exercise an hour and a half a day, like no fail, 
Don't know why it started a day before, a few days before the stream. Just going to say that, but there you go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the funny thing is he just texted me too. So he must've just went to sleep for like two hours. Yeah. He's oh, in the chat. Funny. <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, in all honestly, yeah. I can't thank him enough. It was, I, I was just like, John, we have to have you on for this 24 hour live stream, like as a guest. And he's like, no, I'll come on and host it with you. I was like, wow. Okay. So that's pretty cool. It's a cool guy. Yeah. I uh, was hoping to do more, but Saturday is such a busy day for me. Yeah. I mean, because first off, I have to watch my Buckeyes play. I mean, there's, when you get to be my age, you got to have your priorities straight. And watching Buckeye football is way up there. But I've, I've, even, even at my very worst health, I still worked on Saturdays out of putt putt. I mean, this guy that I work for is such a great friend. The summer after my heart surgery, when I wasn't supposed to be doing anything, he went out and bought a really expensive chair stool kind of thing so that it would sit up high enough that I could come into the clubhouse and just sit down and talk to customers because that's my strength is talking to customers. And I've been there since 1990. So he likes having somebody that sort of knows what's going on around. You're the guy, man, you know, carnivore. You're killing it. I know a little bit. I've watched a few hundred thousand videos. I don't know. I've, <laughs> I know I, I know I have watched everything Dr. Barry's put out, and I've watched everything oh, wow. Dr. Chafee's put out. I've listened to all of his podcasts that are out there on his on the podcasting sites. I think I've caught up to everything Dr. Mason's ever put out. That's um, amazing. There's no possible way to go back and catch up on Dr. Baker's library because he puts out four or five videos a day. Right. Um it it's interesting, Bob, because I, I don't watch as much as you do, but I watch an incredible amount of that stuff. And a lot of it, I feel like I'm not, I kind of know it already. We had, um, we had someone on earlier, and she was saying it's probably because you, sh you want to surround yourself with people that you want to be like. And just in the general public, we go to the grocery store, and there's sugar and everything, and everyone's eating junk food. So this is kind of a way, kind of like a community thing. Do you feel that's why you're doing it, or is it just because you kind of like watching the carnivore stuff? I like watching – it's a, some of everything. I like watching the carnivore stuff, and I'm always looking for new little nuggets that I've forgotten because, you know, when, you, when you've put out as many videos as I have, and as you know, when you have an active audience, they ask questions. Mm. And <clears throat> sometimes I'll spend four or five hours looking for a video that I saw – nine months ago just to answer a question for a viewer right it's dedication to the craft man that's why you've got subscribers uh, uh can you can we do we got his link in the description yeah i put oh, it yeah. in the description and in the comments i'll put it in the comments again you guys go in the description and show bob some love some yeah, go subscribe. love go subscribe you guys we've got over a thousand people watching right now bob Got some great videos and some great uh, people joining you. I love Anita from Ketogenic Woman. She was on our last live stream. Uh, she's wonderful. She's got a great uh, YouTube YouTube channel for sure. Yeah, I had originally scheduled with her um, a few months ago. And then we got to talk and she's like, I'm in the middle of getting this ready to move. Yeah. I said, hey, you know, I understand. Let's just hold on it and we'll we'll sit down and chat after you get moved and she wasn't completely unpacked yet but she was moved into her new house when we when we sat down and had our chat yeah yeah that's funny she was telling me that too when we were doing the the 10 hour live stream she's so fun to watch too i told her this on the live stream she's kind of like uh mr rogers on carnivore or something she just has that nice soothing calming uh demeanor about her yes yes i like watching anita um bob uh i think I'm, craig smith was in here last time I, I probably shouldn't even be saying this but he said you never answer any of his questions and he's, <laughs> like, 
Because he never asks a serious question. Right? <laughs> oh, because he just asked about the water bottle. Yeah, he keeps asking about the water bottle. Oh, he's probably water. talking. He's probably talking about this one. He makes fun of my pink water bottle. Because <laughs> um, I hit those of you that are on that are Amazon affiliates. You know, when you hit a certain level, that you can get extra bonuses by pushing extra products. And I I played with it one time, decided it's not really for me, but I wanted to actually have one to try before I told anybody about it. And this was the company that I picked, and I bought the pink one because the pink one was several dollars cheaper than any of the other colors. And that's exactly why I got the pink one. Because you drinking any it, electrolytes? I do uh, a shot of keto chow daily minerals every morning in my hot drink. When I'm having coffee, I put dump it into my coffee. When I'm not doing coffee, I just have a cup of hot water with the daily minerals in it. So, Bob, you said you've been going for about 16 uh, months. Yeah, it's been, uh, well, today's the 17th, so it's been 16 months and eight days. Now, a question I have for you. Has it been very smooth, other than the first two weeks or whatever, has it been very sort of smooth and steady the whole time? Or have you had anything where it's like, whoa, something's changing drastically for me here? Um, it's been fairly steady, except, you know, this summer. I shouldn't say it's not getting any better this summer because I've made a lot of gains in my strength. Um this summer and I'm doing a lot more, but it was, it was all fairly steady. I had, you know, nobody ever loses weight and improves in a straight line. There's always the, the pauses and the peace in the Valley. As long as you're generally trending in the right direction, then I consider that to be steady progress. Right. Um, and I had pretty steady progress over the first year. Um, Fairly steady weight loss, fairly steady improvement and everything. Although, you know, my arthritis and my spinal stenosis and basically all of my pains, those got to the 80% better very quickly. And then the rest of it takes a really long time as your body heals. Um, it just, it, it does slow down it's like your body decides oh we've healed enough now we have to do something else for a while all right well I, we i had a weird thing happen and then adam here did and um a friend ryan that was on earlier where it was really smooth for me like the weight loss was fine but then um i just hit six months and well six months and one day now um it's all really easy. Like I would just eat and I wouldn't really think about it. But then for like the last two weeks, all of a sudden it was like a light switch went off and I just got ravenously hungry, just could not eat enough food. And I think it's because I got down to my goal weight. I got rid of most of my fat, but um, I was talking to Sean a little bit more about it. And he was, he was saying he was experiencing something similar. So it was kind of weird. Yeah. And that, that happened to me as well just this summer but i've i've attributed it to all of the other stuff that i've been doing uh. i mean you know because between you know it takes it takes a couple of hours to get all of my walking in and then doing yard work and i've also recently added prepping the trailer my uh, my camper trailer i've got everything out of it and i'm working on sealing resealing the floor got to make sure there's no cracks in it. When I was going down to North Carolina to spend the winters, it wasn't such a big deal, but I'm going down to rattlesnake and scorpion country now, so I don't want any creepy crawlies getting into my trailer. Right. Do, do you feel like um, carnivore is uh, spreading more, like wildfire at this point, or maybe not quite that much, but a lot of people don't talk about it, but the more we were talking today, a lot of people said this, the ripple effect. Like, for example, me, I did it. My mom and stepdad are doing it. Both of my sisters are doing it. And then they inspire someone, and it seems like it's really starting to spread. Have you noticed anything like that over the 16 months you've been doing it? 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, just when I started, when I put out my first video six on carnivore about 15 and a half months ago, because I waited a couple of weeks to tell my friends I was going carnivore, which is really how my first carnivore video came out. It was really just a way to contact the 25 or 30 friends I had all at once to let them know what I was doing. Um, there were a few other carnivore channels that I noticed. I mean, but they were all the big ones. Steak and Butter Gal, um, Kelly Hogan. I forgot to mention Kelly Hogan. I've watched everything I can get my hands on of her. I adore Kelly Hogan. She came on earlier. It was the first time I had met her, and she was awesome. I can't believe she how was... fired up and excited she was. Yeah, she After... seems like a, a bundle of energy. Yes. Yeah, which is really impressive because I'm like, I was that fired up too because I was so excited about carnivore, but she's been doing it for so many years. The fact that she's still that excited and passionate about it was pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It is very cool. But yeah, so there were, you know, there were a few other what I would call people like us out there doing some carnivore channel type stuff. But now you can't. As, as we used to say back in the hills I grew up in, nowadays you can't swing a dead cat without hitting the new carnivore channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I apologize to any popular. cat lovers out there that aren't familiar with that expression. <laughs> hey, they're wet behind the ears, Bob. Got to dry them off. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're, and they're, I mean, they're just, they're everywhere and... I figure for every one channel out there, even if you're a small channel, you're reaching somebody. Right. And the bigger you are, the more people you're reaching. I do believe it's spreading. And I believe it's spreading very fast. Hey, I Bob, think, what, what, what about you, the documentary that you think is important for us to, to spread and share and support? All of it. I mean, just the fact that carnivore is an option. I mean, the healthcare system in the Western world is broken. It has become ruled by the big pharmaceutical companies. Big food companies sell cheap crap to make people sick. And the big pharmaceutical companies have pills to alleviate the symptoms of that sugar poisoning that's going on, the sugar and seed oil poisoning. Because that's the big culprits in what's happening to our health as a nation. You know, there's only, if you do run the numbers, there's only about 12% of the population that does not have some form of metabolic disorder. And of those 12%, if you use the charts that they used when I went in the army in 1981. Only about 15% of that 12% is considered not frail. So 15% of 12% of the population, whatever that works out to, would qualify for the armed services using the guidelines that I was in, that I enlisted under back in 81. That's, that's something that we need to fix, and we need to fix it fast because we're basically we're fat, drunk, and stupid, and we're, we're not going to survive much longer as a, as a society because people can't do things. So we really need to keep pushing forward and getting the word out, and... Uh, all of the YouTube channels reach a lot of people. But if we can get the, the Carnivore Diet movie made and out there on a platform like, like Netflix, we can reach so many more people so quickly. And I think that's the point where our modern medicine system is going to have to stand up and take notice because of the, because I know how long it takes to get stuff like this out. I think about the same time the carnivore diet movie 
is done and ready for release is about the same time that the earliest studies that Dr. Baker over at Rivero, those studies are going to start getting done, or at least preliminary data is going to start coming out on them. Then we'll have a complete package to present to the world to show them, hey, this is what happens when you eat just meat and eggs. And it's so much better than what's going on right now. You guys, that was a pitch right there. Yeah. I, now that. I'm more hype about the, the documentary now. So, <laughs> Well said. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. You betcha. Hey, so everyone you get... check out Semi-Retired Bob at YouTube. I left a link in the description below. Go subscribe. Check him out. He's got some awesome videos over there. Always putting out really good content. Uh, we really appreciate you, Bob. Thank you for coming on. and uh, some you carnivore your... love, you guys. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy your last half hour and your <laughs> final guest. Yes. Thank you, Bob. You were Thanks, awesome. Bob. Thanks for supporting the doc. Bye. Appreciate you. Right. Hey, just one correction quick. It's not quite the last half hour. It is for everyone here, but I'm going to stay around for another two and a half. I just, we have 1,100 oh, wow. people here. We have uh, a, um, Two hours and 10 minutes of individual testimonials that people have sent in. And some of these are really, really good. I think you guys are going to enjoy watching them. So um, I'm going to stick around and watch those with you. I just wanted to mention that so people don't all drop off. But we got – should we do an update first, Alia? Yeah, I'm, I'm entering the last one. So basically we're doing right now, the last 30 minutes, a, uh, a speed round. So we have uh, 1,120 people watching, and I want everyone to do some donation. Do something in the next – 30 minutes and let's like end the last 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, even if it was a dollar, that would be awesome. Oh, well, I'll just add it to the thermometer. I'm counting it. I'm keeping track. We're up to five. Five donations for the speed round. So let's roll. Here it is. Here it is. Google Sheets. Um, that nap gave you too much energy, girl. I know. <laughs> it was a nap. <laughs> 30,877. So we're like super close to uh, 31,000. We can do that in the next few minutes here. And then we'll get it to 30. I'm ready to do another four. bacon dance. You guys make it happen. Let's I got, I'm got. i still this. up. Yeah, buddy. Let's do this. All right. <laughs> since we don't have a lot of time, let's get Todd on. I don't want to take up this time talking about donations. <laughs> Todd, how's it going, sir? Good. How are you guys? My dude. What's You're doing going well? On? <laughs> Yay. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Good. How are you guys? Doing great, man. Nice to guys you, man. You guys tired yet? <laughs> hey, and Bill just showed up too, man. You guys are like twins, man. <laughs> right on. Oh, Bill too. Yeah, we're hanging in there, Todd. You're, you're, you're no pressure. You're the closer. Oh boy. <laughs> you're the closer. Yeah, you're, you're the, you're the, the closing act, dude. Main, main event. Todd, uh, if you wouldn't mind for the audience here, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you found carnivore? Yeah, I kind of, I found carnivore well i found keto accidentally uh, i accidentally went into ketosis through a series of different diets that i was trying it was a but uh i was on a high protein low fat moderate carbohydrate diet kind of weightlifters diet and then i uh was having a hard time sticking to that because the food was terrible <laughs> so <laughs> i looked up uh how to make the chicken that i was eating not so dang dry and i found sous vide cooking and uh when i was doing that uh i thought i was cheating and i ate a couple of ribeyes there for about four days in a row and i fell into ketosis by accident but i felt great for the first time in forever uh so i started researching what it was about you know butter seared ribeyes <laughs> that were making me feel so good and losing weight and i found uh the keto diet and then i had a few runs at keto but i fell into the same trap that i see is pretty common with a lot of people eating all the keto junk products you know the the keto, keto snacks yeah yeah all the processed keto foods you know and so uh then after that i yeah, that's right kind of got i caught covid and uh at this point my health was going way downhill and i was 
uh, you know, about 650 pounds at that time. And then I caught COVID got pretty sick. My lungs got tore up, uh, from the COVID. I got congestive heart failure and I got terrible lymphedema and I gained about another 84 pounds over about a three week period of fluid. And it was pretty terrible. I swelled up something fierce, couldn't breathe, couldn't sleep. It was, it was a nightmare, but, uh, kind of when I was working through that, getting the fluid off, I decided to do another round of keto, but way stricter, more of a ketovore. And then I just kept eliminating things out of that until I ended up on, I started the ketovore, uh, September 29th of 2022. And then on January 1st of 2023, I was full carnivore, basically doing the BBB and E thing. And that's where I'm at now. I was, I estimated my weight at uh, 715 pounds in September of 2022. And, uh, just recently I'm, uh, just down to 480 now of, uh, currently. So a little under, so. Awesome. Great yeah, job. Off of everything, <laughs> you know, the gout's gone, the congestive heart failure is gone. I have a slight bit of the lymphedema left, but hardly any, it's super mild now. Um, gout's cleared up, uh, completely off oxygen, completely mobile again. You know, I was stuck in the house in a chair for over two and a half years. Uh, completely, completely mobile again, have totally had my life back. It's, it's quite incredible actually. Yeah. Todd has an amazing story. You're, you're, you're an amazing guy, dude. <laughs> I appreciate it. So I was going to ask you for this speed round. Uh, I'll, uh, man, it's amazing what you guys have done this round. That's awesome. But for this speed round, are you, you're, you're probably going to do another fundraiser or anything. Cause I, I was going to offer, I, I have a business and a seasonal. I do it on the 4th of July and on new year's I sell fireworks and I was going to pledge some money. And so in this speed round, whatever anybody donates up to uh 2500 let's say i'll match it no way wow that's generous thank wow. you i'm telling you that's I just awesome got thank you so much guy. wow Todd, thank, so thank much. you thank you yeah no worries and that's why i was saying it's kind of a pledge because on new year's when my uh because on, on, on the fireworks i'll take those out of those sales and i'll match whatever up to 2500 if that works for you guys yeah thank Absolutely. you so much that's that's quite the offer. Appreciate you, man. We're going to get this doc made. No yeah, time. It's, a, it's super important. It's amazing. Thank you. Get to work, Alia. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can't pump up the speed round. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Guys, this is amazing. So, uh, yeah, we're at like 14 donations for the speed round. So far, I'm just counting number of donations, but I'll tell you how much it is in a second. Uh, we Nice. Man, it's funny that I've been listening. I've been I stayed up all night with you guys to watch. It was awesome, but I've been listening to all of these stories, and it's kind of funny because oh, wow, I I put in a super chat earlier, but I'm having a real thing right now. It's strange. I usually only eat somewhere around one and three quarters pounds of meat to maybe two and a quarter. I don't know what it has been this week, but last two days I've had That's to eat funny. like I understand like four pounds of meat a day. I don't know what's going on, but I've just been crazy i think it's because i'm moving around a lot more like i'm 10 orders of magnitude more mobile now you know moving but I, I don't yeah know you're on is. all these live streams now <laughs> well it's been a busy work week too. yeah Holy cow. we've had a lot going on and uh i made new videos in two weeks because i just got into this i built a new space here to make videos in so i'm just almost have this ready so it's awesome Yep. What's your favorite non-scale victory for carnivore diet that you've experienced, Todd? Oh, uh, just, you know, all it's kind of as a whole, but I mean, honestly, the depression, anxiety is gone. That was crippling. And, uh, and then just the mobility. I mean, it's every day I just find something that's just amazing because just from the littlest things getting out of this chair, I used to have to, I would literally sit in this thing and spend you know, 10 minutes thinking about how I'm going to get out of this chair <laughs> you know, before I could get out of it now. You know, not, everything's just easy. You know, everything's easy. And But I think the biggest victory is just 
the complete and total freedom from sugar and carbs and cravings and like just the assurity and just the inner peace knowing that I'm no longer, you know, in a stronghold to that stuff. You know, I have no, I have no worry that I'm ever going to fall off this. Like I've never been more confident about anything in my life. It's just so, you know, even this, I was, cause you know, you fight these old habits and memories. And when I was hungry, I was like, I was feeling bad that I was hungry after eating, you know, two pounds of meat. And I was like, what the heck's going on? But then, you know, I was got to think about it. I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not craving pizza. <laughs> I'm craving a ribeye. So eat right. a ribeye, you know, for crying out loud. What am I going to, you know, clearly my body's wanting something. So it's even great now, even when I am having a craving, it's for a ribeye, you know, it's pretty crazy. Well, your your match offer has done very well so far. The one donation we got was a thousand dollars. So nice, that's awesome. I'm glad. Wow. To hear. Unbelievable. That's way good. That's awesome. So, yeah. so, Todd, thank you so much. It's so generous of you. I'm oh. uh, I'm speechless for that reason, and because I've been up for 24 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, man. Yeah. I'd love to, I think we've talked about this before, but um, once this live stream stuff's over, I'd love to talk to you more, maybe have you on the channel or do a, do a, do a video together for sure. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So you're, uh, you said you're in this, or you, you said you don't see stopping this. So is this a lifelong thing for you now, carnivore? Oh, absolutely. I'm, you know, that's why I, I put some time and money into this space here because, you know, I'm planning on, I want, I want to bankrupt the drug companies from this, you know, I, and I mean, I know that's a ridiculous statement, right? But I mean, this, yeah, I mean, this stuff is killing our friends. It's killing our family members. It's absolutely destroyed our, you know, we got to fight the propaganda. We got to fight all this nonsense. I mean, I don't know if it's true or not, but I saw Dr. Berg's video on, uh, on how YouTube was going to start, censoring or shadow banning uh you know alternate you know health or medical information or dietary information you know to save us from it or whatever i wish they would but i don't you know whatever it, we, you know to me the biggest the way we could fight this is to all get healthy doing exactly what they say can't be done you know and then you know, I know for me, my biggest testimony is going to be when I'm literally 450 to 500 pounds lighter than, you know, thousands of people have seen me. You know, I've got a lot of friends and, a, you know, a lot of people know me in my community. And when I start walking around, you know, 450, 500 pounds lighter and healthier than they've ever seen me in, you know, 20 years, they're not going to be able to deny that, you know, every talking head and, you know, professional can come up and tell me how, you know, my diet's terrible, but I'm going to have the receipts, you know, and, you know, try <laughs> to try to debate me then, you know, like <laughs> in their face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just, that's my biggest focus. And that's why I love doing these videos, doing these live streams. It's because it just keeps me super hyper focused on what the long-term goal here is, which is, you know, my mom just yesterday <clears throat> and I've been, my mom's on carnivore now, but it's been a little bit of a struggle because she's got so many health problems, but she just got diagnosed with Parkinson's, you know? And, uh, you know, I was trying to talk to her. I'm like, well, we got to stay, we got to get super serious and you got to hit the carnivore hard, you know, which is hard to tell an 82 year old woman, you know, <laughs> but you know, she's, she was like, well, I just don't see how, you know, carnivore could possibly, the, you just say that carnivore is the cure for everything. And I'm like, I don't believe, and this is just a personal feel, you know, personal opinion of mine, but I just don't believe there's all these diseases, you know, these, everybody gives these things a name, but they're just naming symptoms. The disease is that you're just sick. You're just sick because you're unhealthy because of what you're eating, what you're exposed to. And I believe that's why carnivore cures so many things is because they're all the same thing. You know, all of them are just the manifestation of symptoms from being sick, from being mm -hmm. metabolically sick. 
And, you know, I saw a meme and I'll give it this. It was funny. But the meme was basically making fun of carnivores the other day because uh, how they say it cures everything. So the meme said something about like, oh, carnivore will get your, you know, credit score up and carnivore will, you know, uh, will get, it. you know, all this <laughs> stuff, right? There, you carnivore will get your wife back, carnivore will get your dog back, you know, it's a country song basically. And uh, my dog loves steaks. Right. <laughs> but I get it because they hear that so much from the carnivore community that they credit it for, you know, a wide variety. I mean, it's secure for a lot, a lot of things, but it's just, it's just, you're just getting healthy. You're just, you're giving your body the tools that it, your immune system and your body needs to heal itself. And it doesn't matter what the manifestation of what symptom it is. It's the same disease. For 99.9% .9 of things, it's the same disease. And so, I'm, you know, I was just have to have this conversation with my mom going, don't let that get in your head just because they gave you a new name of a new disease. It's the same dang disease, you know, because I've never been more sure of it in my life after spending so much time with you guys and watching all these testimonials. I mean, uh, just when Bob was talking about the spinal stenosis, my brother's got spinal stenosis and he's been on carnivore eight months now with me and his spinal stenosis is way better you know and now granted he's been seeing a chiropractor they've been straightening out his spine because his got a curvature to his spine and it's pulling on his uh spinal cord like bob was talking about but and he got stem cells too but before he ever did any of that he was uh doing carnivore and it improved dramatically you know and uh you know just everything across the board i mean I've seen, you know, it's amazing how many common themes there are as I listen to people and it's all the same stuff over and over and over again. And it's all getting just healed after sometimes decades of doing what the, you know, professionals say to do. I mean, it's, it's incredible. We got to think for ourselves and uh, go in our own direction. What would yeah, you, we, what we suggestions would you give a beginner carnivore, Todd? You know, it's so hard because I've been helping quite a few people uh, get on it. And it's, it's you know, it's a very nuanced thing. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. But I really think, honestly, it's, uh, I think some of the most important things you can do. Because if, if they don't, if they don't have a reason or a kind of faith in it to, to stick with it long enough to, till it starts to work, they always kind of seem to break. So I really think. It's getting educated, realizing how you've been lied to, how you got sick, why you're staying sick, what what the motivation for for drug companies and food companies and professionals to keep you sick is, and how it's kind of happened. You know, like uh, when Chafee was on, he was said that that uh, other colleague his or whatever said, you know, his favorite drug was the ones that have side effects. They can sell you more drugs. I mean, I yeah. think that is. That sounds terrible, but it's a lot more real than I think we know. You know, we don't even want to believe it because it's so offensive and such a horrible thing. There's truth in the joke, though. There's truth in that joke. Right. And it's just, I think that that's very real. I think there's huge money and huge, you know, there's huge companies and huge money uh, into keeping us sick. And, you know, for a lot of other reasons, too. But, you know, clearly, if you just look at, you know, the overall health of not just Americans, but everybody that's eating a westernized diet, you know, if, I mean, it's absolutely horrendous what's happened. It's the real pandemic. I don't know that there's a bigger health risk on the planet than our diet and our medical system right now, or the drugs that people are on, you know, and I keep, you know, it's amazing that I don't hardly hear people talking about you know, not, outside of the carnivore community, I don't hear people talking about addressing depression and anxiety and, you know, different mental health issues with food. And I didn't think that it was going to help. I was doing this to lose weight. And lo and behold, all my, my depression and anxiety just went away. You know, it was just gone. It was, it was simple, you know, within, I don't know, I think within five weeks of doing, uh, carnivore or even ketovore it was gone you know completely gone and it was crippling. Uh, sorry Todd I was just going to ask you, so you had 
pretty much lifelong depression. Had, had anything else ever worked for you in terms of uh, the depression? Nothing, not a dang thing. They, you know, I'll say this, that they, they mm -hmm. prescribed me drugs, all kinds of drugs for it, but I would never take them. I, I, I always had a complete distrust of drugs and something in the core of me didn't want to take them. I've only had, to, you know, they prescribed me tons of them, but I only ever took uh, some blood pressure medication, some, uh, some, what is that stuff called? Um, I've taken blood pressure Advair inhalers. Uh, I'm trying to remember furosemide for my fluid problem. Um, I had a couple other ones they wanted to put me on for my lungs, and I'd always take them for like a week, and I go, "This is stupid." I there's something in the core of me just did not want to go down that road, mainly because I'd watch my dad and my mom and people in my family take these drugs, and those drugs always turned into you're taking two drugs and you're taking four drugs. And then all of a sudden my mom and dad have take so many, you know, we're taking so many pills. They had 20 pill bottles they're taking every month. And I was like, this can't be right. This, this cannot be right. You know? So, and but it yeah, ain't right. <laughs> nothing, it ain't right. Nothing ever helped the depression and stuff. And, and honestly, back then I, I thought they wanted me to see like, you know, uh, psychiatrist or psychologist or whatever and i just didn't i didn't <laughs> I, I i have more respect for it now but i just back then i just thought it was kind of foo-foo stuff so i just you know i come from a family where you know my dad was a real tough guy in the marine and you just kind of suck it up you know right and so that's what i tried doing but i'm not saying that i that's a good thing because man i there's a few times there's some dark dark times in my life where i'm lucky to still be here to be honest with you so yeah i, I feel you i've been there before and uh nothing nothing worked for me and friends and family that have mental health issues depression anxiety i can't i'm, I'm just thinking about it and thinking out loud but i don't know anyone that had depression and they took medication and they're like oh i'm better now it was always i took this no it's not working and take another one and another one and another one and then just try to figure it out or something no, and that and that's exactly right. You know, I that's why I just I never took them because like my nephew was on them. Uh, I had some cousins who were on them and stuff, and I just watched the circle that they go through, and they'd either be depressed and kind of, depressed and kind of hyperactive sometimes, or they would be a walking zombie and be less depressed but miserable and numb. Yes, and I was just like, I'm not doing this. Like I, you know. I've been a Christian all my life and I'm like, I'm just going to have to pray on this and give this to God. And we're just going to have to work it out because I'm not taking all that crap, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm proud of you, bud, for sure. But you're getting results, you're, uh, you're, you're doing it, man. Well, and it's so easy. This is what's the, the saddest part is, man, I watched, uh, uh, Sean Baker. He put out a video this week that was super impactful for me. He was talking about, uh, doing an amputation on a guy's leg. And he talked about how that was the worst things that he had to do as a surgeon was do these amputations. And he, he put this video out just like five days ago. And I don't know, it struck a nerve with me, but because my dad was, you know, a diabetic and he was at the end of his life, they're uh, talking about cutting his legs off, you know? And, you know, he's just talking about just how brutal it was that he had this patient. He, I had to cut, you know, and he went into great detail on the the parts of it just to, you know, to understand what it's like being in there, what it was even like on him to have to do this. But he, when he got done amputating this guy's leg, he said it's such an eerie sound to pick this leg up and throw it in a, a bucket and the sound that it makes. And that was a man's body that he just threw in this bucket and cut off of him. Mm -hmm. And he said when the guy came to, he thanked him for cutting his leg off because he was in so much pain with this rotting limb that was on him. And Sean asked him, you know, man, can we, you know, is there something we can do to help you change your diet so that you can keep your other leg? And the guy's like, Oh no, there's, there's no hope. I'm just too addicted to sugar. Wow. You mm. know, and there is hope, man. Right. Well, and there is because I know what it's like to be completely 110% hopeless, you know, and I know what that mental state is, but what's so ridiculous, what I'm so, 
just kind of enraged about now is how simple it was to really fix. It wasn't, you know, I know that it's restrictive kind of when you're in that mindset of eating all this stuff and people make, you know, kind of that kind of food and, you know, cooking and something kind of a social event and it's part of their social life or whatever. But in all reality, it's a very, very minimal thing to give up pop tarts and sugar and cereal and crap that's not doing you any good. It's a real small sacrifice to pay for such a ridiculously amazing return. You know, the, the impact that it has on your life is just incredible. And, you know, I can't say it enough. I never thought I was going to get free from that. And I am so completely free from all of that that addiction and that cycle that I'd been in for 39 years it, through all the, I mean, the money that I spent seeing doctors and being sick and taking medicine. I mean, it's, it's unreal. You know, I, I've, I spent so many, I can count several 38, $40,000 trips in the ICU over my lungs alone that I spent that money on. And it was, I was just being lied to. They would, put you in the hospital, put you in the ICU for 10 days, wrap up a $40,000 bill, come out and they'd say, all right, now go home and eat this crap and take this medicine and you'll be better. And then two years later, I'm back in the ICU with the lung problems again, you know, mm -hmm. getting worse every year, exponentially worse every year. Never worked. And then they were like, well, you might have a food addiction. And it's like, <laughs> really? <laughs> You know, it's so ridiculous. Now when I'm eating something that's, you know, and like I've said a thousand times when I was 700 pounds doing what they said, they were perfectly happy with my diet. And then, you know, I go carnivore, lose over 200 pounds, come back to them. And then they're worried about my diet. Now it's a problem. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, that's suspicious, man. Uh, my wife, she just got her blood results back and all her levels were pretty much right in the middle of the green bar. It's like green. And it was like almost pretty much smack dab in the middle for everything. And she's like, her, her uh, doctor was like, I, I guess I'll support this carnivore doctor or this carnivore diet. You guess yeah. she's, she's doing better than she ever has. And you guess, you guess you'll support her. Right. Exactly. I know it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And then, yeah. I mean, it's just so important that we fight this propaganda this machine that's been built to keep people sick. We just got to fight it with truth and results and then show them, you know, we just and, have and donations. Them. Yeah. You show guys, their, you guys got like feet. five minutes left to get your name in the credits of the documentary. 500 bucks. And you get a, you get a call from Carrie too. So like you guys are literally running out of time for that beautiful opportunity. Yeah. If you guys can, you know, if you guys can swing it, if you got a family member that's sick and I mean, I know we all have family members and so we all have people, you know, think about that if you, if you can find it in your budget to throw that in there, whatever it is, you know, it's going to get the word out to where people that we know personally are going to end up being impacted in a great way, you know, absolutely. Uh, you know, Amen. the information is going to get there. The research can get done. You know, as soon as, as soon as ever, enough people do this and we start changing our habits that it starts affecting the companies and the food, they're going to have to start catering to us. Yep. Yeah, when us. we change, we can change, we can change them, but we got to change. We got to go inside and start making good decisions and make the change inside and the change inside you'll see reflected on your outside world. Ooh, right. But we got to do it. We got to, we got to be the ones that are going to make the impact because we've been impacted by it. We got to another second chance at health and life. And so we just, we can't, you know, we can't be silent about it. We got to put it in everybody's face and we got to go ahead and have all the debates with all the people that want to have them. And, you know, I'm no doctor, but I can damn sure sit here and say, well, I'm down 400 pounds. Tell me how, if right. it's so bad. And when this documentary comes out, Todd, we got to be even, we got to be even more loud. We got to talk even more than that. That's the time to double down and throw the coals on. Yeah. We just can't let up. You know, yeah. Todd, that was the bomb, dude. Thank you for supporting this, dude. I'm telling you, man, it was a long one. 
But yeah, now, guess, guess what? We got like another two hours. I'm going to stick around with Carrie and watch these videos. Bro. It's going to be a real long night. <laughs> you guys get to go to bed. I got it. I, thank you so much, Todd. It was so I want to see the videos. But I need to, I need to give an update while Todd is here because yeah. he literally just created magic. Oh, nice. You did say 2,500, right? You didn't yes, mean like 3,700? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you say 25,000? Did you say 25,000? I'll tell you what, if I if I'll tell you what, if I have a good year, I'll make it 3,700. Okay, I'm going to tell you what we did since uh, since I started, plus you announced that. Because I said yeah. we started the speed round and then you announced that. And people's, uh, we have some work popping through here that I haven't even added yet. Nice. I went All ahead right. and added his his match on there, Ali. Oh, okay. Uh, but you have you can't add it yet because he doesn't know what he's doing yet. <laughs> okay. Well, for for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one second, one second. So, but we're gonna end it now. I know more are coming through, but we'll we'll just end the game right as soon as I'm done adding this up. And it's on one to all second. these testimonials. Um, oh, guys, look everybody at in the chat is absolutely amazing for playing this game i am totally blown away and just so you know yeah. i put a red and everyone can attest to this so i'm not faking you out todd but so i put a red line when i started the the game oh no so worries. okay good uh so the game produced um, oh give me one second that's not correct ah okay here's the right one uh Three thousand nine hundred and twenty-eight dollars. You produced three thousand nine hundred and twenty-eight dollars for the documentary. Wow, that's, that's crazy! Awesome. That is the most. You guys, show Todd some love, dude. This guy is a hard time we've made. The size of Texas, that's awesome. man. He really does. Well, I appreciate yeah. it, and yeah, quite literally, if I have a good uh, sales year, then I'll even cover that too. So, but yeah, well, let's talk. But yeah, definitely a minimum of twenty five hundred. So. Yay! Thank you, thank so, you much. Much. so much. God. And thank Man, you for sharing you, your story and being so Even fired up. that, we loved you. <laughs> no worries. I sure appreciate it, guys. You guys did awesome. <laughs> Quite the, no, we just love you for your money. You're no, down to 40 seconds. I don't even know what's going to happen when it gets down. Is the alarm go off or something? I don't even know what's going to happen. I've been waiting. The theater blows up, man, like Mission Impossible. You better be walking around with your shirt, you know, like uh, you got your coat on your shoulder and your slow walk away from the fire, man. Selfie. Yeah. So, Adam, did you add his 2,500? Yeah. It's on on the uh, first sheet. Yes, 24 hours with the extra bonus two hours. So, you guys, now we're going to play all the testimonials. Ooh, yes, yeah. so don't leave. Okay. If you're on the live stream right now, I'm sticking around for two more hours. I'm in my bacon suit. We have real testimonials. Hey, it beeped. Wow. Nice. Congratulations, guys. Yay. Now we get the so testimonials, we, guys. This now is we, we, we got to tell hey, people you guys, where get we're your, at. Your Kleenex, man. You're going to cry watching these. But we got to tell people where we're at. <laughs> yeah, tell them. Let them know. Uh, thirty-seven thousand, but there was oh, a few more that popped through. There man, was a we few got more so that... close to fifty, guys. What a effort, man! I'm telling you guys, this was awesome, dude. You guys did awesome. I can't wait for the forty-eight hour one now. <laughs> you can Not do that funny. by yourself. <laughs> I, I I don't even know what to say. Huge, huge thank you. This is amazing. I, huge shout out and thank you first to. First of all, well, it's not your birthday anymore, but Alia Wells, because this was your crazy idea. Happy birthday, girl. And no more dishes for Alia. <laughs> Adam, Graham, JT, you guys are amazing. Sean, Sean, potential carnivore. The amount of work that went into putting this all together has been insane. Like, you guys have been working nonstop. Imagine, imagine if the whole world was carnivores like this, what a world we would live in. The amount of production and, and just – creative awesome great work we got done putting this all together netflix would be really good to watch yeah let's not forget <laughs> carrie and the man oh, yeah. crew Absolutely. we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't carrie's idea to do this well, documentary oh well, come on alia call him care bear you know you want to <laughs> actually <laughs> I, I since he got the knife he's now scare care <laughs> oh, I appreciate it, but I gotta, I gotta divert that for one second to shout out some more people. You see all these amazing carnivore doctors. I, I said it earlier about 20 hours ago, but you gotta be brave to be a carnivore. 
you got to be really damn brave to be a carnivore doctor sticking your neck out. Dr. Kiltz is in the chat right now. Dr. Hampton just left a super chat earlier, came on. Man, Kiltz is Dr. Dom, Dr. Too, man. Dr. Kirby, All the doctors, Dr. Weidman, do. Dr. Ovadia. Thank you. Thank you to Those everybody, the doctors, the everybody. Changing the world for sure. We need and more not, doctors. And thanks to everybody who sent in these testimonials we're about to watch. Get your Kleenex, man. This is going to be... Uh, yeah, some tear jerkers, we some flies and some eyes, man. So we, we've shared a couple of the testimonials throughout the last 24 hours, uh, but there's many more. We weren't able to get to all of them. So the 24 hours is up. Adam, good night. Alia, good night. JT, good night. Everyone else should stay and, and, and watch these. Um, but you, you guys got to go to bed. You did way more than you guys are insane. Well, I, I, I got to. My daughter's right here, so I ain't going to bed. So I'm glad I got a, a couple <laughs> ah, hours of no, sleep. <laughs> I'm ready um, to watch these testimonials. But I want to say one more thing. So to prepare me for the live stream, Todd actually sent me a birthday present, and uh, I went and ate dinner. So I was all prepared for the live stream. <laughs> he sent me some money for my birthday. It was so sweet. <laughs> oh, nice. All awesome. right. Well, I'm out. I'm out. I love Thank this. Thank you, Alia. You're the best. Yeah, you're welcome. And look, you still have super chats coming through. Adam, get out of here. I'm going to kick you out. Yeah, Adam, go to bed. <laughs> See you later, everybody. Thanks, Adam. Good work. Bye, Adam. Thank you so much. Great Talk work, to Adam. You about a week when we wake up. <laughs> right. Thank you. All right, should we roll these? You guys ready? We still have over 1,240 people here. This oh, is what it's all about. This is what, hey, Bill Knott's in the chat, too. Uh, Hey, this Bill. is what it's all about. This is the, the thought behind the documentary. This is what uh, the great, the great, uh, hold on one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this three more times. Documented stories yes. that matter. I get goosebumps listening it's to that. It's the documented stories yes. that matter. Dr. Kill, the documented stories that matter. It's so true. It's those examples. If you want to change the world, you're not going to do it by trying to change someone else. You do it yourself. You change yourself. You document the example, and other people see it, and they want to do it, and you change the world that way. And all th this was a crazy thing yesterday. I hardly got any sleep because I was putting all of these together, and um, it really took a toll on me. Some of these, you just they really hit you in the heart, and – you could just feel the need that each of these individuals have to share their story and get it out there. And it's so important to them. So I've been up for 20. Well, I've been up for more than 24 hours because I woke up at four o'clock in the morning. I've been up for 27 up hours for straight. Too, man. I'm I not going to bed right now. I'm going to sit you. here and I'm going to watch every single one of these. I, I think we got over two hours of these. So I'm going to watch them all with you. I hope you guys will watch them with us. There's 1,200 people on here now. So. I'll stop talking. I'm going to put this on here. And, and thank you, everyone. Uh, I, I guess we can talk again afterwards. But thank you guys so much. Huge shout out. We shouted out the doctors and the team and everyone. But it's it's carnivore community. So many of you in here. Todd was in here the whole time. So many people in the chat the entire time with us for 24 hours. You guys are crazy. Yeah, thank Todd, so Rich, Primal Mike, man. We had a bunch of people in here the whole yeah. 24 hours, dude. You guys are gangsters, man. Carnivore gangsters, dude. Amazing. You guys are like kills. That was one of the questions I had for one of the doctors earlier is what if everybody in the whole world ate like you? What if everyone in the whole world behaved like these carnivores on here right now? What a world we're going to live in. All right. I'm going to share this thing. They're now. ready, Gary. One, two, three. Here we go. We're not supposed to die sick. I was just sick of being sick. The main thing has been my diet and fasting that has helped with my chemo. I've been a carnivore now for over a year. In that first year of going carnivore, I lost 120 pounds. I stopped snoring the first week. I started waking up in the mornings. I'd never been able to wake up in the mornings my whole life. Then I lost seven pounds the first month. Then I lost seven pounds the next month. Then I lost seven pounds the next month. I lost seven pounds every month for seven months. Before carnivore, I wasn't able to do and move and, and do the things that I wanted to do. My tinnitus went away, my energy improved, my sleep got better. And, and then it wasn't even a week and, and, and all the inflammation had left my body. And carnivore has freed me from all of that. And this is him now. He got into his old Boy Scout shirt from 
He hadn't put it on since he was 25 years old. <laughs> It's like I'd throw away all my clothes and my psoriasis disappeared and I had floaters in my right eye and they cleared up. The lump in my throat has gone, I get no acid reflux, I get no food reactions, I have no styes in my eyes, no ulcers in my mouth, no sore mouth, no Raynards. It's changed my entire life, without a doubt, and so many other lives. I'm down 100 pounds since my heaviest. I've overcome depression, anxiety. I'm getting stronger, much stronger than ever before. There is a 5K that I have uh, my sights on. It's amazing what's happening to me. It eliminated every inflammation in my body. Back pain, lower back pain, which I hadn't even said anything about. And it eliminated it all, right? In, in, in a week. Started at 189 and currently weigh 128. My blood pressure um, is normal. It came down. It's now normal. My mom went on the diet and her osteoarthritis went away. My dad went on the diet and he lost 70 pounds. Kid psoriasis, that went away. I've lost now uh, 105 pounds. For 30 days, I ate only meat and water. Uh, 30 days, within 30 days, I actually uh, was able to get off blood pressure medicine. I'm better now probably than I've ever been in my life and I haven't been taking antidepressants for a whole year. Yeah, you and were off all meds. I was off by the end. all meds by the end of my 30 days. And that was like, whoo, unbelievable. I had arthritis so bad in my toe, they thought it was gout. Completely gone. 18 months of suffering, they were going to do surgery on this foot. And now, honey, we are medication free. Yes. I've been talking about this diet to spread awareness in hopes that the medical community can take something like this seriously. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff DeProsperous and I'm here to tell my story. I'm making this video uh, in particular for Carrie Mann, who I've been following, but for many other doctors. But I just want to also make this video to help others because I'm having a lot of success on this journey I'm on. I have two sons, Peter and Dante, 15 and 13 years old, and I have a beautiful wife that I've been married to for 17 years, Martha. I'm making this video to share my story. My story began my journey uh, having stage four cancer, being diagnosed with stage four colon cancer that has metastasized to the liver pretty fully covered the liver on April the 6th, 2022. I then started chemotherapy treatment the end of May, 2022. I did 27 rounds of chemotherapy every other week from May of 2022 to the end of May of 2023. Every Wednesday, I was doing chemotherapy treatment. First couple rounds of my 27 rounds, I just did chemotherapy. That was May 2022 to about July, end of June, July 2022. I have a very good friend, Dwight Garlow who I have no problem mentioning, and I'm sure he's okay with me mentioning his name. He introduced me to a lot of things. And diet was the big thing, the carnivore diet. He introduced me to fasting. He introduced me to supplements. He stressed the importance of exercise, even though I've been a high school phys ed teacher for the past 20 years. I was a varsity athlete. I played high level soccer, basketball, football, rugby, track, everything in high school, in particular university soccer. So I'm here, Carrie Mann, I wanna share my story. Um, I also wouldn't mind if you shared what I'm sharing right now with these other doctors that I have followed religiously for the past year and a half. Those doctors are in particular Dr. Anthony Shafee, you're one of my favorites. 
followed by Kendi Berry, Sean Baker, Thomas Seafred, Dr. Mindy Peltz, and there's a few other ones on that list as well, including Dr. Berg, who I watched, that was the first video I watched a year and a half ago. Myself and my sons, we follow these doctors. Carrie Mann, we follow you. We watch many videos on a day-to-day -day basis. I have been granted a chemo break this past summer. So I, I went from May 2022 to May 2023, 27 rounds of chemo every other week. But I had June, July, and August off of chemo. I'm making this video today on Wednesday, September 13th, 2023, with a chemo bottle attached to me. I just spent the full day chemotherapy at the hospital, went to my natural path for hypothermia uh, to enhance the chemo. I've been fasting now uh, for a couple days leading up to making this video, and I will fast for another couple days. But in particular, my routines have been the same adding things, taking a few things away. But the biggest game changer, Carrie, Anthony Shafee, Kendi Berry, Thomas Seafred, because he's huge on the metabolic treatment, which I believe in. The main thing has been my diet and fasting that has helped with my chemo. I've been a carnivore now for over a year pretty much the whole time. Just the first couple rounds of chemo, I was still doing the standard American diet. But from about July of 2022 to today, September 13th, 2023, I've been a carnivore. Beef, bacon, and eggs, mostly ribeye steaks, a lot of beef, a lot of hamburgers, ground beef, a lot of eggs, a lot of bacon, a lot of butter. My boys are listening to this. They're helping make this video and they're nodding. A lot of supplements. I'll do other videos on supplements and fasting, but I just wanted to get this out there to carry. And all my doctors, all my carnivore doctors and all my metabolic uh, cancer fighting doctors. I'm having success. From that May to May, I had five scans and I had shrinkage every single scan. On all the tumors in my liver and the primary tumor in my colon, my primary tumor in my colon went from a CEA number of 187 down to 14 before I took my chemo break, which was pretty amazing. My liver spots all shrank every single scan and my chemo doctor was shocked that they shrank every single scan. But I know it's from carnivore diet, fasting and exercise. Those are the main three things that I'm contributing it to. My cancer's so far advanced that I have to be on chemo for now. The break was good. It didn't get worse, but I need to be back on it right now. And I'm continuing the carnivore diet and fasting and exercise. The past year and a half, because I'm in the state of ketosis, my energy level's constant. Even right now with chemo bottle attached to me, it is my downtime, but I'm feeling pretty good. I'm sitting here in my bed future videos, and I don't lie in a bed too often. I'm always coaching sports. I'm not working, but I'm coaching the sports teams as much as I can helping out as a volunteer. My goal is to hopefully someday get rid of this horrible metabolic disease I have and spread the word, especially as a phys ed teacher. I have a kinesiology degree and I'm a former athlete. I want to spread the word on what carnivore does, what carnivore fasting and a ketogenic diet does, a proper ketogenic diet. And I'm going to quote a lot of people, especially Kendi Berry, beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. Oh, the butter girl is another one I follow quite a bit. I think that's about good. Uh, Peter's going to give me, uh, how long has the video been, Peter? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. I wanted to keep it less than 10 minutes. Peter and Dante are my sons watching this. Am I missing anything very, very important? I think I covered most of it. Carrie Mann, on September the 16th, myself, my good friend Dwight Garlow, my two sons, maybe my wife, we're gonna be listening in all day 
on your live carnivore with all those amazing doctors you're going to be having on there. I know you're setting up for a documentary coming up. I'm making this video very quickly for you because I've been humming and hawing about starting my YouTube channel and getting my message out. This is my first video and I'm making it for you, Carrie, and all those doctors. So if you can forward it to the doctors, please do so. Or please include me maybe on your live carnivore day on September 16th coming up. And it would be amazing, really amazing from the bottom of my heart because I think I'm going through something really horrible right now, but it's a blessing because I'm changing myself. I want to share it with everybody. And if you can make me part of your documentary, I would love that. It would be an absolute privilege and honor. Once again, my name is Jeff the Prosperous. Carrie, please reach out to me and contact me. And thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Hi guys, my name is Laura Spath and I have been eating a carnivore diet for over five years now. This whole carnivore 24 hour live stream is such a cool event. Congratulations to Homestead Howe for putting it all together and making this amazing resource that hopefully is going to benefit a lot of people in just learning what a carnivore diet is. I'm so passionate about that because it has saved my life and so many people that I love and helped us to improve our health and just live this active lifestyle that we want to for hopefully a very long time. I really wish I could have been there today. I am in the midst of packing and by the time that you watch this, I will be on a plane on my way to Madrid, probably halfway through a bag of bacon that I brought with me on the plane. There is gonna be a lot of information from so many different experts that is gonna be thrown at you over the next 24 hours, which is incredible that there's so much information about the benefits and the impact of a carnivore diet. I just wanna remind you and encourage you to take all that advice in and then put it all aside and think about what's going to work for you and your life. It's important to understand the why and the benefits and like all the nutritional stuff, but we're normal people. I work a normal job. Like we're a normal active family um, who deals with temptations. We shop at the normal grocery store. Like you have to make this work for you. And so while you're gathering all this information, make sure that whatever you're choosing to do and how you're going to implement it is sustainable for you in your life. When I first started a carnivore diet, I was 263 pounds. I was pre-diabetic. I was struggling with severe hemorrhoids, constipation, digestive issues. Uh, I was dealing with gallstones. I had tons of skin issues. My sleep was terrible. Energy was terrible. I had knee surgery, a torn meniscus just from my body was exhausted from carrying all this weight around. And I was at rock bottom. Like I weighed myself one day and I realized I was heavier than I was than the day I went into labor with my son at nine months pregnant and he was almost two. And my body was just taking a toll and I was ready for a change. I started with keto and then very quickly uh, tried carnivore. By that point, I was willing to try anything. I had been vegan, I had done Weight Watchers, I had tried everything, but nothing stuck for me until I found carnivore, until I was able to fuel my body properly, until I was able to just deal with the simplicity. There was no tracking, there wasn't this tons of rules. I was able to take all this information and really find a way to make it work for me. In that first year of going carnivore, I lost 120 pounds. And since then I've really figured out how to keep it off, which I think is one of the hardest things to do is to figure out how to turn this into a lifestyle over just some diet that we're looking on in order to lose weight quickly. I no longer struggle with skin issues. My joints are great. Inflammation is low. My digestive issues are fantastic and healed. And overall, I'm the healthiest that I've ever been in my life. I understand that there can be a lot of fear associated with starting something like a carnivore diet, especially based on everything we've ever been told. Like, what about, I don't need vegetables? What are you talking about? How am I ever gonna poop again? What about my fiber? All of this information is seems absolutely backwards to everything we've ever been told. I really encourage you just to listen to all of these experts uh, with an open mind, and more than anything, just give it a try. I promise you, every single person who has started this started off with the mindset of like, this seems crazy, but everybody says it's working, let me give it a try. And we've stuck with it because of the results, because of how good we feel, because it's simple, because it works within our lifestyle. I'm able to travel and work, I have a grocery budget and a busy schedule and a family, and yet this is what helps me to stay consistent, to stay healthy, 
to avoid the traps of the carbs and the sugar and this this addiction that I have with food, I'm able to eat meat and nourish my body and really just focus on living a great life with my family. I encourage you to take it one step at a time. So much great information that's here, but pick one thing that you can implement. What's some junk that you can cut out of your diet, focus on getting more protein, and really just figure out how you can start implementing better healthy habits over time. I wish you all the best of luck and information with the rest of this live stream, and I will see you next time. Hi, I'm Cammie of Last Day of Normal, and I am a carnivore. I, uh, for a long time, have not wanted to be normal, but I didn't know how to be better. I didn't know how to be optimal. And that's what the carnivore diet has shown me how to do, that through eating meat, I can not be normal. I can be excellent. I can be amazing. I can have more energy, less pain. I can lose weight while not starving myself. I can strive for more a little bit at a time, having faith that true healing is happening and will continue to happen. And I'm just so grateful for carnivore. I have, I, I consider myself to have kind of a, a small capacity. You know, some people can get so much done. Look, I've been picking berries. Um, some people have this huge capacity and I've always felt like through depression and you know mental illness that I've had a rather small capacity so making decisions hundreds of times a day about what to eat is exhausting planning prepping cooking cleaning shopping all of those things are really exhausting when you only have so much mental energy and carnivore has freed me from all of that I either have a steak I have hamburger it's do I want to, how do I want my eggs done today? And do I want four pieces of bacon or two or eight? Let's be honest. So carnivore for me, huge, huge blessing, physical health, mental health, which frees you up to do all the other things that you're meant to do in life. So I was telling him about it and that's when the ripple effect started. He got on it. And uh, oh, man, he's had amazing results. Um, he's gone from almost 300 uh, pounds. It's what he looked like before. This is what he looks like a couple of weeks ago. He's lost almost over 80 pounds. It's absolutely amazing. Not only that, his depression he's dealt with for many, many years is almost gone. Uh, so many other things have improved with him. My parents, who I never thought would uh, change their diet this way, uh, but they started seeing our results and they both started on it. My dad, this was his before. So excited to see his progress. He's lost over 30 pounds. I think they hit day 85 today. And this is him now. He got into his old Boy Scout shirt. from He hadn't put it on since he was 25 years old. <laughs> That's amazing. And he's so excited. I'm so excited for him. I'm a retired family physician and uh, have a master's in physiology. Um, I suffered from a viral cardiomyositis, which is an infection of the heart muscle back in 2001, had made a full recovery of that and had done well for the last 22 years. However, at my latest cardiology appointment, I had um, an echocardiogram which showed that I was starting to show signs of what's called diastolic dysfunction, which means my uh, left side of my heart is working harder than it needs to do. And because of my background, I know that that will eventually lead to congestive heart failure and wanted to do something about it. So I, so I was beginning my ketogenic uh, journey 56 days ago. I became very obvious that um, I was very curious on why people were just trying to make things that kept their same lifestyle. And um, it didn't make sense to me. And I came across uh, Carrie Mann and a video that he did with uh, Dante Ferrigno. And I, I was very intrigued by that and then found Ryan at Against the Grain and went down the rabbit hole of Dr. Barry, Dr. Chaffee, Dr. Baker, and all the other great scientists <coughs> who have really um, 
promoted this and through the years. Uh, I've read several books now, Dr. Bickman's, uh, Dr. Uh, Bos Bosworth, uh, Dr. Boz, and um, have really been intrigued in the community and how the carnivore community has really uh, been a internal support system. Uh, lack of trolls and, and really the love that people are giving to each other. And I decided to go carnivore 32 days ago. It's been great. I've had um, a definitely an endpoint of what I want. I want to get my blood pressure as low as possible, get my weight down to a normal BMI, and uh, get my uh, after live reduction uh, down to where I'm not in diastolic dysfunction with my heart. But on the journey, I've actually seen some things in the first month that have surprised me. I had a chronic folliculitis of my scalp for which I had to take uh, doxycycline about one month out of three. And uh, that completely went away. I've not had any uh, bouts of that. And I felt one coming on the day I started and it totally reversed itself. And I've had a right shoulder pain uh, from an injury I have that also went away last week for the first time. So um, I'm on the journey. I really appreciate this community, what you're doing, what Carrie is doing with the uh, Carnivore Diet movie, uh, his wonderful family, and all the people that are coming around for this 24-hour marathon to really promote the di diet movie and to get more and more people on Carnivore. Hi, my name is Rhonda Townsend and I'm a carnivore. I am 60 years old and I'm five foot three inches tall. I currently weigh 120 pounds. At my highest weight, I was 200 pounds. So a total weight loss of 80 pounds. So um, as I stated, I started on January 2nd, 2023. But a year prior to that date, I had um, started eating the Plant Paradox program, and I was desperate to try to lose some weight and lower my blood pressure. So I did that program for a year, and I lost my first 50 pounds on Plant Paradox. And but my blood pressure never um, improved, it was the same. Um, my blood pressure was typically in the 150s over 100. So it was, um, that was, you know, too high and the doctor put me on hydrochlorothiazide which is a water pill um, but when that stopped working they prescribed um, amlodipine and that's a trauma blocker and I had side effects from that my ankles and feet were swelling up so they had to put me on a different one a tenolol um, so I was taking these blood pressure medicines for over 30 years and I prayed because I wanted to be medication free and wanted to improve my health. So I, um, nothing was working for me. To, I tried everything to lower the blood pressure. So Dr. Anthony Chafee's video popped up on my YouTube um, called Plants Are Trying to Kill You. And that intrigued me. So I watched this video and binge watched all the other videos. And then Dr. Ken Berry's videos started coming up and so I was nervous about starting carnivore at first because of all the negative feedback that you know you get and family as well um, not supporting that lifestyle but I decided on January 2nd I was gonna give it a try I said I tried everything else so let's try this and about three months later my blood pressure um, is normal it came down it's now normal and that to me just sold me on sticking to this way of eating. Um, I, I can't thank the carnivore community enough. Uh, like I said, Dr. Chafee and Ken Berry have been amazing. Um, they are just changing people's lives. And normally I would never have started a YouTube video. The only reason I'm doing this because um, Carrie from Homestead How was really motivating anyone who can to make a video and promote this healthy lifestyle and way of eating. So this is my first video and I hope to make many more. 
Um, I wish I had started filming from my the very beginning of my journey, um, but it's better late than never. So I want to help get this word out. So thank you, Carrie at Homestead Helm. Um, and I hope to be talking to you soon. Oh, my YouTube channel, I'm Rhonda Townsend at Carnivore Leo. All right, thank you. Have a great day. I've uh, been battling cancer since 2021 and I've been carnivore for almost three months now. Going through uh, training uh, for a half marathon that I want to do in the future. Um, there is a 5K that I have uh, my sights on. Hello, my name is Noble and I'm the camping carnivore. And two weeks later, well, we cleaned everything out of the house. The, we couldn't have. Things have happened between then and now, but uh, long story short, my knees feel better, my hips are better. I've lost now uh, 105 pounds. My girlfriend's lost over 80. And uh, I would just encourage everyone to check this way of life out. And Happy camping, y'all, from the Camping Carnivore. Hi, happy Wednesday. Uh, this is Christine, I'm from Sioux City, Iowa. I started Carnivore probably right before August 1st of 2023. Um, doing good, uh, feeling good. Haven't lost a ton of weight, seven, eight pounds maybe, but I uh, gotta go by inches also. I no longer have stomach issues. I weaned myself with the help of my doctor off my happy pills uh, right before I started this. And my mood is awesome. And um, I just love this lifestyle. Carrie, love your channel. Um, been finding a lot of other carnivore channels to subscribe to through your channel. Um, just wanted to say um, everything's great love the carnivore lifestyle and I've actually found a couple people at work who are doing the same thing and great results from them too. Hey everybody my name is Beverly I'm 61 year old mother and grandmother I just wanted to give a really quick testimony as to what the carnivore lifestyle has done for me. Carnivore eating has helped me to cure several chronic conditions such as migraine headaches, seasonal allergies, fatigue, depression, joint pain, extreme inflammation causing plantar fasciitis. But I think the most wonderful thing about the carnivore diet to me is my why. Last year, I became a grandmother to two baby boys who are now one year old. And that means when these boys turn 18 and experience things like graduation, I'm going to be 80 years old. So I am looking to the carnivore diet to help me with good health and longevity. I want to be around to enjoy the graduation, the parties, driving the van with the kids in it. I want to dance at these babies' wedding. So I'm going to stick around and find out what happens. I'm so glad that I tried the carnivore diet because if I didn't, I truly believe that he would not be here right now. So last year I had a miscarriage and I never thought that I would truly recover from that. When I was pregnant, I was eating for two, as they say, and I gained a bunch of weight. And then after I was just so sad that I just kept doing the same thing and I gained a bunch of weight, which did not help the mental health and it did not help the physical health health as well. A few months later, I felt worse than I ever had felt and I weighed more than I had ever weighed in my entire life. So my sister talked me into a carnivore diet and mind you, I thought it was crazy, but I had learned so much while my sister was talking to me about it and I was watching videos and everything can vary, you know. I did struggle with the diet, but I loved the progress that I was seeing. So I kept going but I was not expecting to get pregnant so soon. My son, who is now four months old, is so perfect, and I thank the Lord every day that he is here and he's healthy, but I got me a version. 
like really bad. I tried to stay somewhat keto during my pregnancy. I didn't do the best at that. After I gave birth, I did do carnivore again. I ended up doing ketovore and that's kind of just where I've been. It feels really good for me. I am down 40 pounds from my heaviest and I've kept it off. I have no more skin tags. Pretty sure I was diabetic, pre-diabetic, at least insulin resistant. My clothes are really loose on me. Like the pants that are my skinny pants <laughs> are too, too big. I know what nutrition is and I can always cut things out if I feel like I need to heal. I was always unsure how to lose weight and keep it off, but now I know that this is how to do it. So that's awesome. Sometimes it's just having the knowledge that gets you where you need to go. I am not starving myself like I used to and I eat so much. I don't count calories like ever. I used to have ankle pain from a sprain from five years ago. It would flare up sometimes. It doesn't happen when I'm eating a meat-based keto diet. Hardly any issues with my tummy and bathroom stuff like I used to have. I used to have acid reflux and heartburn. That's gone. Skin doesn't itch like it used to. My legs would itch so much. Um, I would scratch myself raw from my insulin resistance scritchy at itchiness. Popping knees no more. Keratosis polaris is better. They're just like less bumpy and less red. Uh, no more tonsil stones, those were annoying. Eczema on my hands is better, and I think it's mostly the fat that I'm eating is really helping with that. So writing this list made me realize how much carnivore and ketovore has really helped me and I can't wait to expand on this list. One last little thing, it's really fun. Me and a couple other meat-based ladies, Ellie from Nourishment Redacted and Christy from Meeting Wellness, are starting a new live stream series specifically geared towards women eating a meat-based keto diet. It's called Lioness Lifestyle Live. We hope you will come stop by on September 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It will be streaming on each of our channels and we can't wait to see you there. Bye. Hi carnivore family. I'm Mike, also known as Primal Mike on YouTube. I have been on carnivore lifestyle for over four months now, starting on May 1st of 2023. I had previously been on low fat, high protein diet, eating vegetables as my source of carbohydrates. I was a victim of mass media propaganda that assured that this type of diet is healthy, it's protective against infectious diseases and would eventually lower my chance of severe complications if I ever catch the C virus. Whether the latter statement is true, I'm not sure, but the first part for sure was not. I became malnourished. Most of my hormones were out of balance. I went from near 180 pounds of athletic, yet puffy look on standard American diet to below 140 pounds, losing significant amount of body fat and muscle in the process. Eventually, my whole body was hurt. My soul was hurt and I was a wreck. In April of this year, I decided to go for a pilgrimage trip to Mexico hoping that I will fix my soul that was damaged. And yes, I have. After I came back home, after 10 days of amazing experience, I decided to fix my body mentally and physically with the carnivore lifestyle. And I am thriving like a wild animal. My hormones start to improve and I gained about 12 pounds so far, mostly muscle, but along with body fat which is equally important for humans. I am getting stronger, much stronger than ever before. I work out like an animal every single day. I eat like an animal every single day. And I feel like an animal, strong animal, every single day. And the best is still to come. I love each and every single one of you. That's why I call you my carnivore family. I'm always here to hear what you have to say and support through your journeys. I love you guys. Thank you. This is my 42nd day on the lion diet. How do I feel? I felt uh, motivated, optimistic, more hope. 
I've had so many allergies to different foods. I went on um, a vegan, I went on fruitarian, I went on low fat diet, very low fat, and developed low B12, low thyroid function, loss of hair in the legs, uh, cold, really cold all the time, lack of energy, bad anxiety. Basically developed this white patch on my tongue, which through the years got grew bigger, it was growing all the time, it was changing shape on my tongue and eventually turned red and turned cancerous and uh, it seems to swell from one day to the next today might be a little less swelled but my lisp goes worse when it when the tongue's hurting and it swells more and the thing is is food seems to be directly related to the tongue swelling and tongue hurting so definitely plant food is out and definitely meat seems the best. It's something I cannot control and that's the pollution and how much it affects me. And I know that anyone listening to this will not think, may not have thought much about pollution. Indoor pollution, outdoor pollution, it's just as bad for you as eating bad foods. My body now has become so attuned to what I eat, how I feel with the foods I eat, how much it affects my tongue, my lymph nodes, my body, my aches, my skin. I know exactly how different foods affect me and what to eat and what not to eat. If you're in a house frying foods, the smoke then is going in the house. That is toxic, highly toxic. It's one of the worst. And you're breathing that in. That smell can linger for ages in the house. If you haven't opened your windows and got some extractor fan on to get rid of it from the house, you're breathing all that in and damaging your lungs. I'd say it's just as bad, if not worse, than cigarette smoke. My wife and I, of 44 years, we have seven children, 22 grandchildren, and should have more to come. I'll be 64 in December. It's because I want to show other people that aren't old, but maybe you've had a lot more birthdays than other people, that this carnivore diet can make you feel young again and give you a lot of confidence in what you're doing to show that how you can do this on the carnivore diet. You know, I'm not all inflamed or anything. I can get out and move around when I'm just eating pretty much meat and eggs and I do some dairy. I don't snore, my ED's gone away. My wife tells me, you got a big indent because I sleep on my side between my hip and my ribs. She kind of says, and she says, that's because you're so skinny. And I have other people telling me I'm too skinny. But I'm down to about two, nine, two I'm, excuse me, 193 pounds. And I only want to drop a little bit more, down to about 185 would be great. Anyways, we live in Idaho. I'd like to encourage everyone that's on, that's on this 24-hour uh, this marathon to make sure that you contribute some money today so we can get this carnivore movie going so, well, so Kerry can get it going and have the funds that he needs to get, to get it off the ground and, and make it a reality. And, you know, I can't wait till he goes up and he, and he's, he sees Bill up in Alaska and see Bill walk out of his cabin. Hi guys, I'm Mia, and our YouTube channel is Carnivore Rebels. I've been on this journey a long time. Uh, for me, it started with, um, I am an above me amputee, and I have been in pain most of my life, however, due to gut issues, and after the accident, I was in pain, chronic, I was on tons of medication, hardcore pills, uh, tons of pills, that would leave me lethargic. And my husband got tired of seeing me like that, and so did I. Um, we've tried keto, we've tried ketovore, and really what has worked was he found carnivore. Um, I did a 33-day challenge for carnivore, and guess what? After 33 days, my inflammation was down, I was off most of those pills, now I'm off all of them, uh, except my thyroid pill. If I could grow that back, that'd be awesome. No doctor out there ever told me anything about diet. 
except they wanted me to continue on the sad diet. I tell you guys, before carnivore, I wasn't able to do and move and, and do the things that I wanted to do and be as mobile as I am now. Um, I've always been overweight most of my life and a lot of that weight has been going away uh, slowly but surely uh, but more than anything the information and the pain is going away I don't have to use my wheelchair as much as I used to I don't have to you know depend on my crutches as much as I used to I was using a cane almost consistently and um, I don't have to do that so for me walking is now something that is more natural and I'm able to do and I'm happier. Hey, what's going on everybody? Trey from Carnivore Rebels. Just wanted to introduce myself to the larger carnivore community and tell you a little bit about my journey. 2012, I found keto. But here's the thing, 2015, I retired from the army and after years, 20 years of jumping out of planes, ruck marching, three combat tours, my body was going through all kinds of issues. Finally, in 2019, we tried prolonged fasting. It worked, but we were still having issues. Then 2022, we finally got rid of the vegetables. Once we ditched the vegetables, everything changed. Then we went full carnivore. No fruit, nothing, just beef, bacon, bacon, butter, eggs, salt and water. And that was it since then. Inflammation, plantar fasciitis, insomnia, allergies, just a few things to name it. Even arthritis are gone. Hey friends, this is Martha over at Living La Vida Carney. New channel coming on Monday. Let me tell you a little bit about what carnivore diet has done for me in such a very short amount of time. I'm into it about 100 days. By day five, blood pressure back to normal. Um, joint pain, back pain, gone. I used to walk down the stairs very gingerly because I was afraid that I would fall and I was in pain and every step was very, very painful. All of that is gone. Um, even just waking up in the morning, getting out of bed, it was, it was painful. But it's amazing. It's like, it's like I'm a new person. I feel amazing. I love it. My energy is up. My mood is up. And um, it's just, it's, it's like, um, like, like I have a new lease on life or something. It's, 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 it's amazing. So I want to ask you a question. What would happen if you gave carnivore diet 90 days? Yes, I lost weight. I got rid of a lot of inflammation, down about 28 pounds in about 100 days. What would happen to you if you gave it 90 days? If you gave it 90 days, what would happen? What if at the end of 90 days, you had hope again? What if at the end of 90 days, you could breathe okay again, sleep well again? What if at the end of 90 days, you could work out again, go to the gym or even want to? What if at the end of 90 days, you lost 30 pounds, 50 pounds, I mean, 20 pounds? What, what would happen if you gave it 90 days? Well, I want to work, walk that journey with you. We all want to walk that journey with you. There's healing and there's hope at the end of 90 days. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Christy and my carnivore journey started 31 long years ago at the age of 16. So around that time, I started putting on a little bit of weight and that led me to this vicious cycle that many of us are so familiar with of just yo-yo dieting up and down. So I didn't know how to lose weight or how to eat correctly. And I basically counted calories and started obsessing about food for many long years. And I would just reduce my calories drastically. And yes, I would take off a few pounds, but I was miserable. I was young, I should have been energetic and full of life and instead I could barely drag myself out of bed and put one foot in front of the other in order to just do life because I was so hungry and my body was so starved for nourishment. But I thought, well, that's how you're supposed to lose weight so I'm just gonna keep trying to eat less. Of course, when I couldn't eat any less, 
then I would kind of just give up and binge and here would come the sleeve of Oreos. So the weight would kind of creep back on and that cycle would just begin again because I couldn't get fat. What would people think if I was fat? So then came the Atkins diet craze and I knew about it and I thought, okay, I'm going to try this Atkins diet. Well, I didn't research the Atkins diet. My research was what people told me or what I heard because uh, social media was not maybe our go-to move. And so what I heard was, well, just, you know, cut your carbs, net carbs are fine. Um, you can buy some bars and some shakes and things like that. And so, yes, I did Atkins, but it wasn't done correctly. But I sort of stayed mostly low carb through my 30s and into my 40s. I was kind of low carb slash trying to be Atkins off and on, but kind of the same, right? With the occasional binge time and then putting on those 15 to 20 pounds. But where my real journey began, where the success story of my journey began was about six months ago in February. And I had put on that pesky 15 pounds again and I thought, keto, I haven't done keto, I'm gonna try keto. And at that time, again, it's not like I did any research into keto, I just knew, well, on keto, bacon equals good and bread equals bad and I'm just gonna do it. And so I sort of jumped in and this time I did go on social media because back in 2020, I'm a teacher, they sent us all home and they said, just teach from home and figure it out with no training. And so we had to lean on somebody and we leaned on each other at that time. So I learned about Facebook groups and getting on those through that. And so when I went on keto, I quit very quickly, maybe a week in, joined some Facebook groups about that. And somebody, some awesome person, <laughs> posted about Dr. Barry, and I did not have a clue who Dr. Barry was. But I thought, well, I'm gonna go ahead and watch this guy and see what he has to say. And through that time, I learned how to eat keto the correct way with the heavy meat-based, the real whole foods, and I started incorporating that into my diet. Now, I did lose weight. I lost just about 20 pounds, and I dropped from a size six down to a size two on keto, which was excellent. And really that's what I was looking for. But slowly and gradually, the vegetables and other things just sort of disappeared from my plate. It was never a conscious choice. I just like meat, you guys. Pretty soon the rest of that slid off my plate. <laughs> the rest of those carbs slid off my plate and I realized that I am a carnivore. What I didn't realize by accidentally kind of sliding into that carnivore life was all of the other benefits that I would gain. The mental health benefits. I don't think it, I can state enough how trapped by food I was, how obsessed with food I was, thinking about every morsel of food, every fat gram all my life from the age of 16 to the age of 47. And now on carnivore, that is gone. I think about food when I get hungry. When I get hungry, I eat a big plate of meat and then I don't think about food until I get hungry again. That has freed up so much mental space in my head. And the other thing about that is I used to be anxious, very anxious, mostly socially, like socially anxious. I didn't really wanna be around people. I do think I'm an introvert. I still think I'm an introvert, but I'm not afraid to talk to people. In my prior state, I would not have been making this video and putting it out there on YouTube, and nor would I have started my channel. So it's called Meeting Wellness. And I wanted to make this channel because a lot of people, a lot of stories include a lot of weight loss, and that is great. On my body, it's not a lot of weight loss. You, it's not something you can just look at me and say, wow, look at her before and after picture. Those are powerful, but I, I don't have those. Uh, but what I have is a just plethora of mental benefits, um, two of which I described here, but which I go into detail on my channel. So I hope you guys will stop by my channel, Meeting Wellness on YouTube, and I'm gonna go meet some wellness, one more YouTube video on my channel, and one more piece of ribeye at a time. Hey, Carnivore community, Carrie and everybody else. Um, my name is Vitaly. 
I'm from uh, BMW Health Journey. Uh, I just started my channel not too long ago, started to document my journey on getting healthy. <clears throat> uh, I've been doing carnivore, uh, carnivore diet for just a little bit over 100 days. I started with uh, 378 pounds and lost so far 71, 72 pounds or so. My why it was uh, I developed blood clots in my leg and three days later I was back in the ER and they found blood clots in my lungs. Depression set in, almost cost me my family. My wife couldn't handle the pressure. <clears throat> and my depression, all that stuff, so I had to do something. Start praying to God for guidance on how to heal myself since uh, doctors didn't really help. None of the doctors said you need to change your diet to fix your problem. And Dr. Barry, with his videos start popping up in my YouTube channel, on our YouTube feed. And I was kind of brushing it off because a carnivore diet to me was, how can you sustain yourself on meat? And uh, since I've been praying and I thought to myself, maybe, hey, that's what it is. Maybe I should check it out. So I started watching Dr. Barry's carnivore one-on-one videos and I binge watched them and decided to give it a try. So just a little over 100 days later and 71 pounds down, I don't have issues with blood clots anymore. My lungs, I breathe normally unless I jog <clears throat> or sprint. Uh, energy level went up like crazy. And if I don't exercise outside or walk at least, I won't, I can't fall asleep. And uh, to me, that's a positive thing. And uh, I mean, the car carnivore Kip, I mean, that guy is such an inspiration. Being uh, just under 400 pounds and he started jogging and stuff. I was like, man, I can do this. Why am I still walking? And recently I added the uh, jump rope to my exercises. Oh man, I feel so good. My energy, I, 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 deplete my energy so fast at the end of the day and uh, I sleep like a baby at night and I wake up real well rested and don't wake up in the middle of the night uh, shoulder pains gone uh, joint pains gone no headaches sinusitis is slowly going away I don't wake up with the stuffy nose no more uh, almost stop snoring I still snore a little bit, depends how I sleep. Uh, or, or if I sleep on the stomach or side or my back. <clears throat> Other than that, um, the people that really inspired me is Dr. Ken Berry with his knowledge, Dr. Chafee with his knowledge, uh, Carrie from ha Homestead Howe. Man, this guy is such an inspiration. Uh, Carnivore Kip. Uh, Sean from uh, International Cottonwood. Yeah, those guys are celebrities in the Cottonwood community to me. They are my role models. And uh, I, I always try to watch their videos. And yeah, Cottonwood is amazing. And I love it. See you next time, I guess. Bye. Greetings to the Cottonwood community. Hi, everybody. My name's Fred, and the first thing I want to say is, Carrie, thank you so much for doing all you do with the community. You've been a catalyst for many good things that are going on right now, especially the documentary you're doing, the 24-hour live stream that's coming up on Saturday and all that. Thank you very much again, Carrie. Um, my name's Fred. I'm from West Michigan. Um, I'm 71 years old, I'll be 72 in January. And uh, I'm just gonna talk to you about a, 
a couple of things real quick here. And uh, started out two years ago with Dr. Barry, watching him and my wife and I uh, were the, did like ketovore, carnivore lifestyle starting on October 1st back then. And um, went on through the holidays, did good and all that. And through January and got to the end of January, we were on a trip and we kind of fell off the wagon and we're off for a long time. But back started again this year on the day after Memorial Day, and I'm on day 108 as of today. So many, many things um, have transpired during that time, but uh, so far I've lost 20 pounds, and um, I've got um, uh, real good labs and some, some uh, wins to, to share with you too. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm a grandpa of 11 wonderful grandchildren, and I believe that um, we're not supposed to die sick. And I want to be healthy so I can do the things I want to do and keep on keeping on with the heart of a little boy. So anyways, um, uh, a couple of the wins are um, um, my A1C was at 6.1 a couple of years ago. And as of my latest lab earlier this year, it was at 5.6. Because Dr. Berry said 6.1 would be pre-diabetes. And I heard that and I says, I'm not going there. And uh, so the carnivore diet, I believe, I contribute that to get, bring it down. And I believe it's gonna be down a little further next time they check. Now also, um, I've had some skin tags like under my arms and things like that. Well, they're gone. I, I don't know what's up with that, but that they seem to got taken care of for, through this lifestyle. Uh, went to the dentist a few um, weeks ago, no, a couple months ago, and she checked my gum pockets. And uh, I said, how did they check out? And she said, perfect. All of them were perfect, and that wasn't the case in, in previous checkups. And, uh, and then the, another real big win was I was with my cardiologist three weeks ago, and I showed him my, my uh, log from blood pressure and all this stuff, and they do the EKG, and the, you know, the whole nine yards. And, and anyways, I walked out of there, and he had uh, reduced my two medicines down to one. And that's a huge win for me because I don't like taking drugs. And so anyways, that's, uh, that's a big deal too. Those, those are my wins that I've had so far, just in a little bit of accomplishment. I did some measurements. Um, my chest was down two inches and my belly was down one inch. And so, so that's going in the right direction also. I feel I've got another 30 or 40 pounds to lose but, and, and I believe that will come also, and it's not too hard. So anyways, um, I wanted to put this out there. Carrie offered for some of us to put videos out there and that he would air them during or after the 24 hour live. And uh, I appreciate that very much. And uh, I will be starting a new YouTube channel. Don't have a name for it yet, but I will get it out to you somehow and it's going to be a lot of informative content. I promise you it's going to be good stuff. And hopefully some of it will help you. And I'm also going to use you guys as uh, my commitment device to this lifestyle. So God bless you. God bless you, Carrie. Keep on doing what you're doing. Don't forget about his documentary that he's working on, everybody. Check out his website. And... I love you guys and keep looking up. Good morning. This is Warren Holland. Um, thank you for this opportunity to uh, tell my story. I uh, was having more difficulty breathing here during the uh, winter. Uh, my bronchial tubes would close up on me. And uh, meanwhile, I'd been having um, arthritis and, and uh, bad reflux. And um, 
I went in to see the doctor. Um, he was concerned about my high blood pressure and uh, low pulse and uh, my um, heartbeat. Um, uh, he was uh, saying that I would possibly need a pacemaker. Um, also pre-diabetic. And uh, uh, after that doctor's visit, um, um, I was looking for alternative to the uh, um, medical route. Uh, and um, I stumbled across uh, Dr. Ken Berry's um, uh, carnivore uh, uh, YouTube videos and uh, decided I was going to give it a try. Um, the results were just absolutely amazing. Um, within two days already, my wife said that um, I, I wasn't stopping breathing at night anymore. And uh, the with within a week, I'd noticed a uh, uh, big um, change in the uh, in the symptoms in the various different problems that I was having, everything from arthritis to the uh, to the heart to the breathing, and. Uh, uh, at uh, two weeks, I went in to see the doctor again, and uh, he agreed with me that um, it wasn't necessary to have the MRI, MRI on the heart anymore, uh, uh, that I should watch for symptoms uh, if, if there was anything that, that came up. Uh, he couldn't find anything wrong. And uh, at uh, uh, six months, uh, I went back in for another checkup. Everything's going very well. Um, I can't believe the amount of um, increased energy uh, that I have. Uh, I'm, I'm back to the energy level of when I was 20. I've dropped from uh, 42 waist down to a 32. Um, it's just been absolutely amazing. Uh, uh, how much uh, better I feel and uh, not as foggy minded either um, it's been quite the journey um, anyhow I uh, highly recommend the uh, carnivore diet uh, for anyone with medical problems um, you know why not why not give it a try Thank you so much for this opportunity. Hi everyone, I'm Ellie and your nourishment has been redacted. The nourishment that everyone needs is meat. High fat, delicious, delicious meat. Basically carnivore foods. Humans thrive on ketosis and I don't want anyone else to be addicted to carbs and sugar like I used to be. I'm here to support you on your carnivore journey because it's been quite a long road for me to gain my health back. I'd love to share my story with you today. I'm a mother of two young children, ages three and one, and I'm married to an amazing husband and we are a carnivore family. The lowest point in my life was back in 2018 when I was 240 pounds, depressed. I used to have painful boils I was so constipated where I would only go once a month, even though I was always told that the trick to that and the cure for that is to eat fiber, to eat vegetables. I had several panic attacks that would cause me to be in a fetal position screaming and crying for this nightmarish existence to go away. My depression caused me to drop out of college and live in my bed for five years. Without my husband, who has always been such a good support system, I don't know how I would have survived. I discovered keto back in 2018, and that's when my nourishment was finally beginning to be unredacted. I began to focus on feeding my body lots of fat, and my energy soared. My depression lifted. I was my happy self again. No more boils, no more panic attacks. 
I was able to get pregnant with my husband and we were able to have our first baby together, my daughter. During that pregnancy, my doctor bullied me into a mind space that I was going to harm my baby if I continued to do keto. So as any person would, I mean, you listen to your doctor, right? So I quit. I would do anything for my children. Then I had my baby and she had colic. We were isolated in, during 2020 and my depression hit me harder than anything. I tried and tried and tried again to do keto, but kept failing. I wasn't able to produce breast milk, even though the doctors told me to eat high carb and keep scarfing down that oatmeal. I tried to be mindful of carbs, but nothing really worked. I was around 215 pounds at the time of when I gave birth to my son last year. And now I had another reason to put my health first. I learned about the carnivore diet. I thought it was keto 2.0 and just tried it. After years of yo-yo dieting and calorie recounting and killing myself in the gym, I felt like this was my last shot to finally lose weight and get healthy. I wasn't pregnant anymore. I couldn't do harm to anyone but myself. So why not? See the mindset I had? I thought I was gonna be doing, going to possibly be doing harm to myself because I was trying to eat only red meat, high fat and tons of cholesterol. Funny how now that I'm over 130 days on the carnivore diet and I'm feeling the best I've ever felt in my life. I started carnivore at 202 pounds and now I'm in the 170s. I no longer have depression. I sleep so deeply. My gums don't bleed anymore. And I always have a smile on my face. My children now have a mother who is present and can keep up with them. I made my YouTube channel, Nourishment Redacted, inspired by the amazing doctors and other carnivore content creators because they taught me that I have to remember my why. Why I choose to eat this way and to never forget the pain that I had eating the standard American diet. <sighs> I'm so happy. My channel, my channel shows how carnivore can be simple, realistic, and I want to delve into the mental space and spiritual health. I want to help you guys. I love connecting with my subscribers and other content creators on here. And I want to share as many stories as possible so that everyone can reach help. You can take it. You can grab it. It's yours. Every human should feel like this. <laughs> Let's all band together and make sure that people have their nourishment unredacted. Thank you for listening to my story. I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye. My barefoot journey. My name's Angie Hebel. My why that makes me cry is losing my mom and dad way too early. My dad at 75 from a massive heart attack. Even after he had had a heart attack and was following the doctor's recommended diet, um, my mom died way too young from problem complications from her um, Crohn's. She was 72. My dad was 75. I want to be here for my kids, my daughters, and my grandchildren. I want to see my great-grandchildren. I um, suffer from fibromyalgia, brain fog, back problems, arthritis so bad my doctor tested me for rheumatoid arthritis. I've had injections so many times in my back and my iliac joint for my sciatic pain. Um, uh, on pills for my migraines, 
I actually get Botox shots every 12 weeks. I get um, shots in my neck every 9 to 10 weeks to as a nerve block. Um, I've had problems with my foot. Uh, I've had a um, blood clot in my leg at 52 years old. Uh, I was in pain every day. If I was at a five pain scale, which probably would be most people's eight or 10, I was doing good. I um, don't do the normal pain meds. My mom was on pain meds and I didn't, I have friends that are on pain meds, no. Um, I'm a little more naturalist, but can't do that when you're out driving around and stuff, so I just suffer in pain. Anyway, I um, started my journey July 1st, encouraged by my daughters, watched a lot of um, videos from Carrie, Homestead How. I'm on Lisa Wiedemann's little um, group, so I get to talk to her every Sunday night. It helps. I love Carnivore Me. Amanda, you're an awesome, awesome inspiration. And of course, Bill. I've met, not met personally, but I have met Mick Carey personally, and he's just such an inspiration. Um, to get to watch these people every day and be inspired is awesome. I myself am down 40... Nine pounds. I was 252 in that picture. I'm now 202. I am two pounds away from Wonderland and I can't wait. I'm feeling so much more comfortable in my body. So much more confidence. My pain is way down. My foot pain, gone. I am off two medications. I'm working on getting some other ones down, taking it slow. Um, but I have so much energy. It is just awesome. I'm getting so much done. Instead of having days where I'm curled up in my chair all day or in my bed all day because I can't move. Um, no bad migraines, usually with barometric pressure. I'd still get a migraine, even though I'm on several migraine medications and the shots. Not small headaches, but not anything bad. Um, I don't know. This journey has just taken me so far. And it's going to take me a lot farther. I want to go hiking again. I haven't been hiking for I don't know how many years. Many, many years. Because I couldn't do it. I want to go and run and play with my grandchildren. Instead of being able sit and watch them. I... I can't wait to get this out to many more people. It has to spread. I want to change my daughter's thinking to get my grandchildren off of all this poison. That would help with their hyperness, but she hasn't realized that yet. I just thank everybody in the carnivore community for how generous they are. And can't wait to meet more of you in person. I love all of you. 
join me on my YouTube channel, My Barefoot Journey. Thank you again, Angie. This is the kind of stuff you do when you lost weight. Did you catch that? I did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey. Hey. Come on in and sit down. Carrie from Homestead now. Ooh, Mr. How? Perry. I don't know why I always want to say oh, is yeah. now, because it is a right now. Yeah. Yes, he invited okay. us on his 24 hour live. So we're going to do a little recording real quick and okay. tell the people who we are. All right. So, hey, everybody, my name is G Brown, G Brown, the lifestyle changer, and this is Frederick Brown, the husband. And this is Hanging with, with the, the Browns. Browns. Yes. So, uh, we have some specific things to share. And I think one of the most important uh, things is letting everybody, first of all, know I'm a carnivore. And so am I. All right. Yeah. We're carnivores. Uh, and we are 106. 106 days. And I'm 104. We yes. did not start on the same day. Tell you about that later, y'all. Tell us, uh, share our why. Well, the why specifically for me um, dealt with pain that I was experiencing and had been experiencing pretty much all my life. But recently, in the, in the end of 2022, I had a um, severe case of, of gout, inflammation in my body, in both feet toes ankles knees uh, it was it was horrendous and honestly it was debilitating mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that that i experienced is there were times when i would alternate between a cane and and my mother-in-law's walker right to get around and, and my wife had actually recorded me trying to get to the bathroom one night unbeknown to me and um she played it for me later and when I saw it, it was, I'm glad she did it, but guys, I, I was in so much pain. It wasn't even, it wasn't even funny. Um, and, 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 and that really, that was, that was my end point when I was just sick of being sick of, of the pain. And I had gone to, um, rheumatologist. Um, and he didn't know he was exactly to be what was one going of the, on. Uh, best ones in town. Too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and he couldn't figure out what was going on. He, in the meantime, he was prescribing me medication after medication after medication, a series of medications uh, taken at various times of the day, various times of the week. And, um, and, and and all he kept doing was shaking his head. Well, let's try this. Let's try that. And I was looking at my wife. I mean, I was really getting really angry, you know, at the whole process. And never once did he ask me about nutrition. Did we even talk about food? Yeah, were never you having once. an allergic reaction? Yeah, never once. No. You know, and, and I had given him um, uh, my my background, my history of, of some of the experiences that I've had in, in terms of my uh, body's pH being off, very acidic, which I thought may have had something to do with it. But he just kind of brushed it off and just wanted to keep going down this path of, of medications. And, yeah. um, and, uh, that was my reason why. I mean, you know, I, we, no, we, we. No, wait a minute. You were reduced to chicken Caesar salad. Well, yeah, that was that was in my quest to find out what was going on. I had eliminated everything except for chicken Caesar salad. Salad, unbeknown to me, to even the dressing and and if, and if I ate a salad that wasn't romaine lettuce, that would kind of trigger me as well. Um, you know, so so I was trying almost everything. And eliminated everything from my diet, and 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 it was frustrating. It did this for almost a solid month, mm -hmm. and I was still having pain, still going back and forth to the to the rheumatologist, and and, and not being able to figure out what was going on. And um, enough was enough. And 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 until my brother in law, my wife's brother, um, introduced it to us, me, us at the same time. Right now, it, what I like is the fact that. Once you heard it, mm -hmm. you hadn't done any research. No. None whatsoever. No. It just clicked. It clicked. And the thing that clicked for me, I think the most was, I was excited about being able to eat again because this chicken Caesar salad, you know, day in and day out, one, two, three times a day, it gets old real quick. It, yeah, it gets old real quick. You were 30 days on that. Yeah. It, it gets old real quick. And and I was I was uh, frustrated and, and, and didn't want to eat. Um... And, and when he started talking about a carnivore diet and how I could eat, you know, the food that I loved 
at 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 any portion that I wanted. Man, I wanted to hear my, I kind of perked up and I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> and, but then, you know, afterwards, you know, I, I did take on the first day he introduced me. I started that day before I had my chicken Caesar salad. I said, okay, let's do this. And he cooked, cooked me a ribeye. He had like five, six, uh, scrambled eggs, six or seven, uh, slices of bacon, everything that I love. Right. And, um, uh, I, I ate to satiety. I ate until I was fully satiated. And that was great. And, and I was excited about it. And then shortly thereafter, um, I went in and, and started looking at Dr. Uh, Ken Berry and Dr. Chavis and Ch Chaffee. I'm sorry, Chaffee. I keep, Chaffee. Uh, forgive me. I always mess his name with Dr. Chaffee. So I always try to say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Dr. Baker and, 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 and watch Carrie and watch some of the, the um, other people that were in the carnivore community just sharing their experiences. You know, and uh, I was like, this is it. This has got to be it, you know, and, and then it wasn't even a week and, and, and all the inflammation had left my body. I kid you not from my ankles, um, uh, my toes. I was able to walk. Didn't need to walk or anymore. And, and, and it eliminated every inflammation in my body. Back pain, lower back pain, which I hadn't even said anything about. And it eliminated it all, right? It in, in, in a week, in a week. And, and then within uh, 30 days, within 30 days, I actually uh, was able to get off blood pressure medicine. Yeah, you and were off all meds I was by off then. all meds by the end of my 30 days. And that was like, whoo, unbelievable. For me, I didn't start with him right away. Uh, I was two days later because I was a vegan. Yes. All right. The thing is, I mean, we tit for tat. You, you see him, you see me. And, and uh, I, it just took me a couple of days. And, but I didn't start with beef. I started with lamb. Mm -hmm. um, and my why, I had a slew from fi fibromyalgia. Uh, I was getting back injections. I was doing all of these different things. And now, honey, we are medication free yes and on our channel it's meet the browns and with that we take you everywhere with us if we're on vacation you go with us uh from the ship to the train ride uh to the grocery store uh there's no topic off limit for us what's your uh, favorite one sex <laughs> sex is mine to talk about <laughs> Go to the channel, I'll tell you about it. Yeah, so if you are bold enough to ask the question, honey, I'm bold enough to answer it for you. Yeah. We have videos. Um, what was your pooping experience like? What yeah. was my pooping experience like? And mine, uh, I didn't trust the carnivore diet. I did not uh, understand because I was a vegan going two, three times a day. And you gonna tell me that I'm not going? So there's a video over there for that. Like I said, no subject is off limits with us. This is hanging with the Browns. And I want you to know, uh, I have on my Alaska shirt for uh, Bill in Alaska because we support what he's doing as well. Yes, Yay, yes. Bill and Carrie, once again, you have changed the carnivore community. And I am so, we are so Absolutely. glad to be a part of it. So we hope that some of you guys come and check us out. Yes. It is what it is. Bye guys. Bye bye. Enjoy this 24 hours. Hey carnivores. I'm Misty Marcus from the Love Style YouTube channel. I want to talk to you today about the carnivore diet and how much I absolutely am in love with this way of life. I like to refer to it, of course, like you guys probably do as a lifestyle. And leading a healthy lifestyle, of course, starts with putting the right fuel in our bodies, and that happens to be protein. That's one thing we're not confused about is protein with all the diet crap out there, and I just feel like it's not talked about enough, but you guys, you in the carnivore community, and Carrie, and these guys doing this movie, this is so exciting. We finally have a voice, and it's because of all of us collaborating together. And I just wanted to express my gratitude. I got off my high blood pressure medicine naturally. I wanted to do it naturally. I didn't want to be on meds forever. And so now my high blood pressure is gone. So that's like my favorite thing about the carnivore diet. 
I did lose 55 pounds. That was great also. But I like to talk about the health stuff even more because it's even more important. And um, my sex drive as a 51 year old woman has increased, which I did not even think was possible at my age. And it's something that, you know, is a little taboo to talk about, but I'm not afraid to talk about it because us ladies, we have a little trouble in certain departments, but this will help tremendously. So I have stayed off of alcohol and that is my other very big thing and something that has changed my life for the better. And I know that the carnivore diet has made me not want the alcohol, just like it takes away sugar cravings. Alcohol is fermented sugar. So I feel like it's helped a lot. I wrote a poem about it. Let's see if I can get through without a blooper. My weight went down, my sex drive came up. I used to use alcohol to fill my cup. Forget AA, try a carnivore diet. If you wanna lose the booze, you may wanna try it. Healed my blood pressure that used to be high. Got off all my meds, now I'm high on life. This poem is an example of the artist in me. Ketosis brought back my creativity. We got three buff doctors that have our back. Chafee, Baker, and Berry are bringing sexy back. Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs is a good place to start if you're feeling afraid. Whether keto, low carb, carnivore, or lion, all of them work and at least you would be trying. If you want the passion back in your life again, eat meat, dairy, and eggs, and the joy will never end. Check out Love Style and we'll see you there. Hi, Carnivore family. My name is Sherry Sanders and I'm a 71 year old lifelong Texan. I started my new journey of a eating lifestyle back on November the 1st, 2018 with keto and then moved into Ketovore and uh, did that up until January the 24th of 2023 when I went to the eye doctor and found out that uh, I have the start of macular degeneration or AMD uh, in my right eye, which really, really rocked my boat. But after I dusted myself off and picked myself up out of the water, I decided that I would look into carnivore. And also I did research with Dr. Kenobi and Dr. Wiederman uh, and Dr. Berry for uh, the macular degeneration and things that I could do to adjust uh, to fight that disease. So here I am. I uh, gave up everything. All I eat now is uh, beef, uh, beef liver pate because it has a good vitamin A for my eyes and uh, ate a few eggs and I eat turkey bacon and I cut it in little chips for the uh, beef liver pate because I eat biblically clean so I don't eat pork. So that's why I'm eating turkey bacon, which is, is helping a lot. So one of my favorite or the favorite thing I love to do every day is read scripture to Abba Father in heaven on a daily basis and if I lose my eyesight I won't be able to do that and the thought of that breaks my heart so that is my why I want to defeat this disease or at least stabilize it so it doesn't get any worse than what it is now so that is why I'm doing carnivore and it's been good for me so let's 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 get away from the negative and go to the what's for the positive things that have happened to me since I started the diet. The lifestyle is not a diet, it's a lifestyle. I have, the Father has graciously healed me of arthritis, adrenal fatigue, acid reflux, 
hormone issues, stomach issues, sinus congestion and allergies when I gave up the cheese, prediabetes, inflammation, and I'm sure there's many more. That's all I could remember. So I wrote them down so I could read them to you. I just wanted to uh, I know that I had to make changes before I could even pray and ask the Father for healing. And so I'm doing my part, and I know him because he's been faithful to me for 71 years, even times when I wasn't faithful to him. So I know that he will be healing me uh, one way or the other. And I, that's my hope, and that's my belief. Mr. Carey, I want to tell you that I think you are a wonderful young man. And I, for one, truly thank you for the way that you are bringing this carnivore family together. I pray that blessings on you. And those that have come along beside you and are helping you on this journey that you're on too for the healing. And I'm proud of you, the way that you're handling things. And I wanted you to know that I'll be there to help you in any way that I can on this documentary. So uh, you have a blessed day. Bye. My name is Robin Heron and I'm a carnivore. I'm 57 years old and I have 11 grandchildren. I have been a yo-yo dieter all of my life. And so Recently, within the last few years, I began to hear about a term called the proper human diet. I watched Dr. Ken Berry, along with many other YouTube content creators, talking about the benefits of a primarily meat-based way of life. So I'm just coming in here to tell you guys about my why. Why am I doing the carnivore diet? I did keto off and on for about 10 years, but in the last five years, I found it more and more increasingly difficult to stay on a keto diet. So um, as I watched, you know, people like Steak and Butter Gal and the Ketogenic Woman, Dr. Anthony Chafee, among others, as they spoke about the health benefits of a primarily meat-based way of eating, I was very intrigued. I had a lot of health issues that I wanted to clear up. So I had really wanted to try an elimination diet. But if you think about it, what would you eliminate? It seemed kind of insane that you would eliminate all vegetables and all fruit and eat only meat and meat-based products. And that that would help you find your way to optimal health. On February 22nd, 2023, I decided that I would try it. Since then, I have found some incredible health benefits. I no longer experience IBS with constipation. I am regular. I'm not hungry, and that's a miracle. I don't have any cravings for anything. I don't want any chips. I don't want any popcorn. I don't want any bread. Um, I'm just amazed that I'm able to control my own food choices. This is something that I've never experienced in my entire life, is the ability to control my own food choices. I also have an autoimmune condition called eczema, and I've had it all of my life since I was a baby. I've had a resol resolution in having um, eczema flare-ups. However, I do notice that when I eat the wrong thing or something that does not agree with me, I will have an eczema flare-up and that's a body cue that I can recognize instantly. I've had a reduction in the painfulness of my knee arthritis. I have bone-on-bone -bone arthritis in my right knee and to the point where I was really struggling to go up and down stairs and to walk my two dogs. Although this pain is not fully resolved, it's so much better that I can go up and down stairs without any trouble, and I do walk my dogs four to five times a day. I went to the eye doctor recently, and after about 20 or 30 years of progressively increasing prescriptions, 
This year, for the very first time, my prescription did not change at all. And even the guy who was doing my glasses was saying he's never seen that happen before. I'm sure it has happened to other people before, but for me, this is a miracle. I am a person who has to take an allergy pill every single day. And I have been taking allergy pills every day for many, many years. And also Benadryl at night. For the last six months, I have probably taken four to five allergy pills total. And I have probably taken Benadryl maybe three or four times since I started the carnivore way of eating. So I'm working on this as a hypothesis, but I think maybe carnivores don't have seasonal allergies. And then I also went to the doctor recently and had my labs done because I found that people were quite concerned with how my labs would be after being on a meat-based way of eating for six months. And my labs were perfect and normal. And also I'm no longer anemic. The thing that probably people want to know most about is, did you lose weight? Over the course of the six months, I've lost about 15 pounds. However, what I want to say about the carnivore way of eating or a meat-based way of eating is that this is a healing protocol. It's not a crash diet. The carnivore way of eating will improve your health and heal you from the inside out. And then your body will be able to release the weight. The main health benefit that I have found is that I have an overall generalized feeling of well-being in my body, in my mind. I feel calm, I feel balanced, and I feel settled. There's nothing that can beat that feeling. So the reason that I started my carnivore channel is because I'm seeing a disturbing trend in the African-American and people of color community toward vegetarian and vegan diets. Even I have a grandson that is a vegan and I'm very concerned that they um, are not hearing about the amazing health benefits that can be achieved through a meat-based way of eating. In my community, I am seeing a prevalence of diabetes, type one and type two, autoimmune diseases such as psoriasis and eczema, heart disease, heart attack, stroke, kidney disease, kidney replacement, MS, mental illnesses such as bipolar and ADD and ADHD, as well as sarcoidosis. If we could recognize the fact that a meat-based way of eating may be the answer for some of these health uh, concerns that we could uh, really heal ourselves from the, in the inside out. I looked all over YouTube for an African-American woman of my age or older that was doing a carnivore way of eating and I could not find it. That is why I started my YouTube channel. I feel that the Lord is calling me to speak out to my community. I started my YouTube channel so that I could talk about this and the people who want to listen to it would be able to listen. And those who don't want to listen, don't have to listen. My YouTube channel is Robin Heron, hashtag carnivorous grandma. I'm thankful to Carrie at Homestead Howe for working on the carnivore diet movie. I think this movie is going to be amazing and it's going to be a blessing to millions and millions of people. Come and see me on my channel at Robin Heron, hashtag carnivorous grandma. Hey, Carrie and the Homestead Howe community, Brian a.k.a. Love and Bacon Brian, which is my YouTube big fan here in Southern California. Thank you so much for your passion. Um, my story really quick is that my wife led me to the ketogenic diet in 2019. And that was nothing short of a miracle because for decades I had been overweight. I had just resigned to <laughs> being a fat guy the rest of my life. Um, I was super inflamed, gout, you name it. And um, when I just made the adjustment from the standard American diet to keto, 
everything started to change. I started tripping out. And back in 2019, I feel like there's a graduating class of people that were just discovering Dr. Berry and just discovering keto. And, you know, a lot of us had some initial success. And for some people, keto was enough. And my wife was one of them. Um, I, my labs were incredible. My triglycerides went from uh, deep triple digits uh, down to uh, moderate double digits. It was incredible. Um, I carried them around in my wallet like pictures of my grandkids. Um, but then the pandemic happened and a lot of life stress happened and we had our first child and just a lot of life happened and I wasn't able to sleep. My stress was off the charts and I gained back a lot of that weight. And so about six months ago when I decided, you know what, I have to heal myself again, I had heard a lot more about the carnivore diet, and it made a lot of sense to me. My wife, God bless her, she's done with keto. She led me to keto. It's all she needed, and she's done. But I wasn't done. I'm sorry. I I realized once and for all that I was addicted to sweet things. I was addicted to carbohydrates. Uh, I got to give a shout out to uh, Dr. Rob Sivas um, for putting that thought in my head. But I had to do carnivore. I was not done with keto. And so I found Dr. Chafee. I globbed on to, all right, I'm going to do carnivore. I immediately lost 15 pounds. It was like in two weeks. It was crazy. But what was really interesting is I became a bigger person physically, stature-wise. I was larger at the same weight I had hit previously on keto. So literally, there were old uh, high school shirts I had saved just for the heck of it from the old days that I never thought I'd fit into again. When I hit a, a, a certain weight in keto, I was finally small enough to get into them. Well, I'm that same weight again on carnivore, and I can't fit into them. And what I had to understand was the concept of body recomposition and how the carnivore way of losing weight keeps so much muscle. You know, my passions, I guess my niche, if someone out there is like, well, why would I want to subscribe to one more channel? My niche is a couple, well, three things really. Number one, people transitioning from keto to carnivore. Because I, like I said, I think there's a graduating class out there that keto just got us so far. And it's time to, to go to the next level. The second are people with kids, especially young kids, that they're raising carnivore or ketovore because I think that's a silent power that really hasn't been discussed a lot. You know, I know Ken Berry has a, a, a young child. I have a two-year-old that we're raising carnivore-ish, ketovore, and she's like top of the scale on development, top of the scale on growth. And I mean, I'm a larger guy. I'm six feet tall, but I'm not a giant. She's a giant. And I really think that there's a genetic potential that our kids aren't getting on all this seed oil and carby crap and starchy crap. And that might be a conversation. I know Dr. Rob Sivas has a young child as well. I would love to have that conversation. But if we can give the gift of not being addicted to our daughter, what a gift that is. So that's the second thing. The third thing, I got to tell you, this, I call it the fight, the finding Adam again project in a religious sense. Like God created us and gave us a blueprint for what fuel we run on and, you know, be in the world, not of it. And, you know, you walk around a grocery store, everything around the perimeter if your great grandmother and the 12 apostles were coming for dinner, they'd recognize all that stuff as food. All the crap down the aisles and boxes and bags with barcodes, that's what's doing it to us. But uh, but that's it. That's me. I'm here in Southern California. Land of the vegans. Well, I love vegans. Medium rare. <laughs> all right. Take care. God bless. Hi everybody, my name is Lauren and I'm from Farmer's Wife Carnivore Life. Um, I'm just doing a quick video today just to put in short my carnivore journey to try and inspire as many people as we can for this um, carnivore diet documentary that Kerry at Home said how has very kindly started putting together 
and making this happen, which is really, really exciting. Um, so going back to April 2022, last year, I became very, very sick. I had a lot of symptoms, a lot of ailments. Um, my main one was something called LPR, which they also call silent reflux, which is um, a lump in the throat uh, and a, just a feeling of obstruction. I couldn't eat anything. I lost a lot of weight. Every time I did try to eat something, I felt like my food was getting stuck. Uh, I went down to my lowest weight that I had been since I was an early teenager and um, getting down to about seven stone and 10 pounds, which was really not a good look for me. I was very, very underweight. Um, I just couldn't eat anything. Every time I ate something, I would react. And even healthy foods, um, such as vegetables and fruits and nuts and seeds and all different things I was still having reactions to. I would get swollen eyes, styes in my eyes, stuffy nose, ulcers on my tongue, a sore mouth, um, earache, I had chronic UTIs, chronic yeast infections, verrucas on my feet, Raynaud's syndrome, which is where your hands go very stiff and almost like joint pain, a bit like, feels like what I think arthritis would feel like, very painful in your hands and they go very cold. I was very sensitive to the cold and never ever felt warm. Um, I had a whole host of issues that I needed to sort in, um, but because of all of these, I started to suffer from severe depression, suicidal depression, um, I began to think to myself, if I have to live like this of all these problems, then I just would rather not live. Um, so I drastically had to take some measure to try and prevent me from having this debilitating depression. Um, so I went to the doctor um, and I got put on pills after pill. One was an acid blocker to try and get rid of this lump in my throat. Um, and I came away, started taking that, did not get better at all. In fact, I got worse and worse. Went back to the doctor and then of course I got given um, a double dose of my acid blocker. So they said take more and a higher dose as well. Came away, again, was just getting worse and worse. I then went back to the doctor with my debilitating depression because of feeling like this of all my other symptoms. And I then got put on an antidepressant. So I came away, I was on acid blockers, antidepressants, and they also wanted to give me something for my anxiety as well, because I was struggling doing my everyday tasks and I was getting anxious just to leave the house. Um, so after realizing that none of those were working and not doing me any good, I took matters into my own hands and I found a herbalist and went down a herbal route. Um, she was the first person to suggest that I cut out things from my diet. She suggested I cut out dairy. She suggested I cut out gluten, which I did. And I felt better to a certain extent, but I still wasn't fully healed. Um, it wasn't until one day I was making my lovely family a roast dinner and it was roast lamb. And I took that roast lamb out of the oven and I smelt it and saw the fat. And my body was just telling me to eat that food, eat that lamb, eat that fat. Um, so I actually googled if um, eating meat was that bad for you and I came across the carnivore diet luckily and I have been on the carnivore diet for three months and I've managed to heal all of my problems. My tinnitus went away, my energy improved, my sleep got better, the lump in my throat has gone, I get no acid reflux, I get no food reactions, I have no styes in my eyes, no ulcers in my mouth, no sore mouth, no Raynards, no joint pain. All of these things just started clearing up within the three months. Um, I am left with three symptoms. One is I still have floaters in my eyes. Another is I still have skin tags on my neck. And another one is I still haven't had a period. I haven't had a period for a long time. Um, but I'm hoping that I can also heal all these things with a carnival diet. So please, please follow me um, or subscribe to my channel at Farmer's Wife Carnival Life and join me on my journey. And hopefully you guys can help me as well. And hopefully I can help you. So cheers. Hi everybody, Frey here from New Zealand. I just want to get on this awesome thing that Kerry's doing with the 24 hour show. Um, adding my little thing. Grew up a vegetarian, thought I was fit and healthy. 
used to ride racehorses 15 a day, run marathons, but I was awfully skinny. I was obviously malnutrition. In 2014, had a fall. I spent the next nine years living in chronic pain with a disease called complex regional pain syndrome. I spent many of that time in a wheelchair. I had pain all over my body. Um, last year, I started getting menopause, and this year I spent five weeks in bed. I couldn't get out. I went to the emergency room over and over again, only to be told, sorry, um, you are chronic. This is for acute, and nobody can help you. So literally, I thought I was going to die. I doubled my life insurance. Um, I was at a point, I'm like, I'm a solid mum, my kids need me. So anyway, I found Carnivore from Charles Mattox documentary that he did on Revised, and I went and added every single doctor on there, and I followed everybody. I'm now 115 days in. I've gone from 73 kilos, which is classed as obese, because I'm 4 foot 9, down to 58 kilos. I've gone from a New Zealand size 14 to a size 8, so I've got, you know, I've got a little bit to go. But every single health problem I've had has gone. Um, I just want to thank everybody in the carnival community because without this, I don't think I'd be alive today. It was really bad. Um, when I hit menopause, my body went into overdrive and I just could not cope. I'm like, people with complex regional pain syndrome, your central nervous system's not functioning properly and every little thing just really can affect you. So... I needed to make the choice. I want to be a grandma one day and I want to be around for my children. I have a daughter in university and my kids just mean the world to me. So, yeah, everything has gone and I was told that this disease could not be cured. I just hope I could reach other people out there who have complex regional pain, pain syndrome and living in their bed all the time like I am to just try it. Like, just try it. This is the only thing and I've tried everything that works. Get off that medication and give it a go. Um, so I want to thank everybody. I do have a YouTube channel. I'm trying to help my friends out. Um, I don't have any followers. <laughs> so please come like my page. And I'll try and share more of my journey. Um, been an exciting one. But yeah, just so much love to give to the whole carnival community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jeremy. And I am a carnivore. Uh, so I started out, you know, when I was a teenager, I was able to eat a lot of food and you know i would i could uh, uh i wouldn't gain weight and unfortunately that sort of followed me into adulthood uh over time i uh ended up gaining uh weight probably in my mid 20s mid to late 20s uh because i wasn't as active as i should have been um i think by the time i got around to 2020 uh, i was actually at 475 pounds i think that was about the biggest i was that i remember recording um the way that i found uh carnivore was my mom uh earlier this year 2023 had um uh was was looking into carnivore because of uh some issues that she was having and so she had started for about a week and she was feeling, you know, very good results. She was feeling really good, had a lot of good results coming along. So I figured that I would just go ahead and look into it. And um, so I ended up watching uh, Dr. Ken Berry's video on carnivore basics, and that was pretty much it for me. Um, yeah, so I actually started uh, carnivore on May 11th. I was at 453 pounds. Uh, I had diabetes. Uh, you know, my, my blood sugar numbers were in the 250 around that time. Uh, neuropathy was starting to set in. I had fatty liver disease. Um, I was uh, D3 deficient and I think B12 deficient according to the doctors. Um, I had no energy and I was, you know, I had depression. It was just really starting to set in because I, I, I couldn't do anything and I was just really getting sick of that. Um, but the great thing is, is you know, ever since I've started, my my uh, weight has been on a nice steady decline. Um, there were a couple of times that it kind of stalled out, but uh, what I ended up doing was actually just doing switching over to just uh, you know lion diet, where it just meat and got rid of the uh, the cheese and the you know the dairy and the eggs, and that really did seem to to help me. Um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that all the other things. Uh, you know, weren't as good, but you know, lion is the best. That that's not it. It's just for whatever reason, uh, when I would sell out, that's what I would do. 
so as of this uh, recording, I am at 381 pounds. So I am down 72. So, uh, I, you know, and I'm feeling great. Um, I'm hoping very soon here to be able to go to a doctor's office and get some blood work done. Uh, you know, so I can look at my A1C numbers and hopefully they can, uh, you know, check the, the, the liver, whatever it is. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully I'll find out that that, you know, fatty liver, fatty liver disease is gone. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be able to get a job pretty soon where I'll be able to have medical and, and be able to, you know, keep these numbers checked every once in a while and have no problems. So Carrie, thank you very much, sir. Um, and thank you to everybody who's who's watching. Have a great day, and I, I hope you all enjoy uh, the rest of this 24-hour uh, live stream. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. This is your toothless carnivore coming at you from Southwest Virginia. Um, just wanted to make a quick intro video for you. Uh, my name's Elizabeth. I'm 51, and I started on Carnivore February 7th this year of 2023 and since then I've gone from 243 pounds to 200 and 199 and 200 and 199 and you know I, it can't make up its mind and I can't seem to break that right now but it's coming um, I am just tickled to be able to share a little bit about myself and my journey with you and I just am excited to have you along for the ride. Now, I am a mom, an aunt, I'm a wife, I'm a grandma. Uh, I lost my teeth when I was 32. I became a grandma at 34. And at 37, I had a heart attack. Um... That was one wake-up call, but obviously I wasn't smart enough to uh, heat it all the way. But since then, I have ballooned up to, let's see, 254 was my heaviest. And right now, I'm at the lightest I've been in over 20 years. All thanks to carnivore uh, and ketovore. I'll kind of waffle back, between, back and forth between the two. And it's pretty much saved my life. And of course, my journey is a lot like y'all's. I watch YouTube videos, you know, Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Sean Baker, Dr. Anthony Chafee, uh, Sean White, Intentional Carnivore, Carnivore Quest with Cassie and Larry, Kelly Hogan, um, Bella, Steak and Butter Gal, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And it intrigued me that we have been taught, you know, eat your veggies and here, have a, have a roll with dinner because I'm very Southern, obviously. So we always had bread or cornbread or biscuits or something uh, to go with dinner and or lunch or breakfast. And that was what I thought, like a lot of people, was the correct way to eat. Little did I know that my grandma was lied to, my mom was lied to, I was lied to, and we kept passing that lie along. Um, things change. Information is out there now that, Lord have mercy, we didn't even think it existed. We didn't know it existed growing up. Of course, technology has gone totally crazy. I was an Atari kid, and that was when I was a young teenager. Uh, but that's been a while. So, you know, times have changed, and now it's time for this old girl to uh, change along with it. So, I'm looking forward to documenting and being accountable through this account, through you all. And just know that Granny loves you, and we can do this. We'll do it together. And if y'all need anything, questions, or anything like that, please let me know. Hi, friends. I just wanted to say hey to everybody that is watching on the 24-hour live stream. Um, 
my YouTube channel is called uh, Carnivorous Rach L M T, not L M N T, because um, I'm a licensed massage therapist. So I just kind of put the carnivore and uh, massage therapy together. Anyway, um, I have been straight carnivore for 40 days now. I've had a history of binge eating and yo-yo dieting. Um, and for me, this last 40 days has been kind of a different one. I normally, I know that I lose inches faster than I do weight. So, and everybody's story is going to be different. So just remember that when you start your carnivore journey, you can't compare apples to apples. It just, it just, you know, um, really a figure of speech, but, um, I'm really excited to be a part of this carnivore community. I'm really excited for Carrie's documentary for the, uh, carnivore diet documentary, um, and to see Bill's progress and all the other people that he's going to go around traveling to video. Um, my hope is that I, for myself, that I lose weight. I've never really had any health issues like a lot of people out there do. I just have weight. Um, and for me, in the last 40 days, I've lost uh, inches. I haven't really measured, but I know I have. I've probably lost two pounds and I know with my history that's kind of normal for me. Um, I have more muscle mass on my body than I do uh, body fat. Um, I'm currently at 231 right now. When I started I was at 235 in the beginning of August. So with that being said, um, I really am looking forward to the end of the 90 days where I know I really will probably already start to see more of a change, a physical change. I know I, I've seen a little bit um, in my skin. I've seen a little bit in um, my clothes being looser. So um, go go with that encouragement that everybody's going to be different, especially women out there. Um, we don't lose weight like men do. And that's okay, you know, that's how God created our bodies. We are meant to be different. Um, so anyway, I hope this is uh, short enough or not too long enough. Um, I'm excited for this 24 hour live stream. I'll see y'all later. Bye. My name is Jess. My name is Chad. And we, we are, are carnivores. carnivores. The reason I started carnivore was about a year ago, my dad was diagnosed with colon cancer. And he asked my brothers and myself before he passed to make sure we got healthy. So immediately after he passed, I decided to go on a carnivore diet. What did the health benefits you experienced? Um, immediately stopped snoring, which saved us. Um, I sleep through the night. I have more energy than I probably had in 20 years. Uh, I feel like I'm in my 20s. I'm 45 years old. Um, I've lost 36 pounds. I started at, uh, I think, 193, and I've got down to 156. Uh, I used to have brain fog. It'd get me a few times a week. That's now gone. I had sinus problems. That's now gone. Overall, feeling a lot better. I started carnivore um, as a Hail Mary kind of for addressing and fixing mental health issues after I attempted last year. I tried everything else, figured what could carnivore hurt. I had no idea how much the standard American diet wreaks havoc on your mental health until I started a carnivore diet. I've also lost over 60 pounds in six months. Um, started at 189 and currently weigh 128.8. Uh, I sleep better though I don't sleep through the night yet. I'm not waking up. 
half dozen times. I might wake up two or three times. Um, and then it's, I'm right back to sleep. Um, no longer had any major depressive, depressive disorder. No longer had anxiety. I don't have panic attacks anymore. And those were daily occurrences. Um, not suicidal anymore, so I'm able to keep the promise that I made to my husband and my kids um, that I'd never do that again. And I feel better than I have in probably 20 years as well. I have more energy, I'm building muscle, um, and I'm happy, finally. I'm happy again. So I get to experience what true happiness and joy is. So that's our story. Yep. Okay. Hey, Carrie. This is retired fat guy, Paul. I am coming to you with uh, what's changed, how, how I got involved in in this uh, carnival way of life. Um, although I'm not 100% carnivore, I still stick to a carnivore-based diet. Um, I basically turned the, the pyramid upside down and I learned this from you. I learned this from Dr. Ken Berry and following Anthony Chafee. All suggestions from you. Uh, you motivated me in many ways to take charge in since doing so. I started June 13th, 2023. Um, immediately lost about 12 pounds just doing meat after coming back from Maui. Um, after two weeks of carnivore, I transitioned into keto to let my body catch up and take over the changes that, that are happening. Um, approximately 25 days ago, today is the 13th of September, I went more carnivore. I tried to go carnivore, but my body wasn't 100% accepting it. So I went to carnivore, which is beef, butter, bacon, eggs, salt. I do mix in some berries. Um, and those are strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, and raspberry. They don't tend to bother me too much. Also, in doing so, I, I lost another um, 12 pounds, about 12 pounds. So all in all, I'm down 32 pounds, which is great. But other things that I've noticed is tenderness in my head has lessened to some days where I have zero ringing going on in my head. Um, type 2 diabetes, I, don't, I was never officially there, but I know I was in the pre-stage. I will be getting labs done in the next week or so. Um, I will show those later on as well, also on my channel. Um, I lost a lot of inches, seven, uh, five to seven inches, depending on where you measure me. Um, those are things. My CPAP machine used to register six, seven, eight times an hour I wouldn't breathe. There are days that I have 0.9 incidences, 0.5. Uh, last night I was point, or 1.8, I believe. That is lessening and lessening. When I take naps in my chair occasionally, I no longer snore. Um, if I do, it's very, very, very minor. Um, I walk a lot. I, my joint pains are less. I have missing pieces in my body. So I don't think I'll ever have those, but I actually can move more. I have less gout issues. I do have it from time to time, um, but I don't hardly take any medication. Um, where I used to take allopurinol, I don't take allopurinol at all. Uh, I haven't taken any of that since about the end of June this year. So things are looking up. I thank you. I thank the community. Y'all are awesome. Um, that's what's been going on with me. And I invite 
you and all your viewers to jump on board give it 30 days and if you don't if you're not successful for doing as long as 30 days 60 days 90 days stop stop doing the sugar go to the whole food if you're going to do anything at all and uh, there's plenty of material here on on youtube to know what a whole food diet is stay away from the sugars so though sugars are what's messing us all up um enjoy your meat and just eat less of everything else more meat less of everything else that'll be getting you a good start but thanks again carrie thanks for the opportunity and i look forward to working with you take care bye all right i think we did it we did it You guys, are you guys awake? Graham, you awake? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm awake. I saw you nothing on. <laughs> hey, I'm one here. I'm here. One last time. Uh, thank you, everyone who watched. I got one more thing to share with you, though. It's kind of funny. I think it's funny. JT thought it was kind of funny. Uh, huge thank you to everyone who watched. Uh, there's some people on here that were on all night, like Todd over here. Thank you, Todd, for your generous uh, match at the end there. Thank you, uh, Alia, Adam, Graham, JT, the whole team, everyone that's put this whole thing together. And huge thank you. I keep saying it, but we have to elevate the voices of these good doctors. We need we need to encourage and have more good doctors like this. Uh, Dr. Tony Hampton being a big one. He's been in the chat here a lot of the night. Dr. Kiltz, uh, Dr. Chafee spent a couple hours with us. Dr. Barry jumped on, Dr. Baker, Dr. Wiedemann. Not going to forget him either. Dr. Philip Ovadia. Just amazing. Uh, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. There's some good uh, comments. Jennifer was saying maybe we should do these, the testimonials at the end. I, I'm glad. It seems like everyone is uh, enjoying the testimonials at the end. I put that together very quickly. So um, I'd love to do that maybe on a regular basis. That was a suggestion by Jennifer. Uh, what I'm really going to do next is start filming the documentary which is the whole purpose of all this. So I'm, I'm so excited about that once I wake up and realize that that's happening. Um, but these, these individual testimonials could end up in the documentary or some of them could end up in the documentary. So it would be cool to do more of these on a regular basis. There's so many of them. I have a, a lot of people emailing me during this saying, how can I submit mine? How can I submit mine? So uh, maybe we can do that and I can edit them more. This, this one was cool, but it was normally I would, Splice it down a little bit more. Um, those were all coming in yesterday, and I threw it together as quickly as I could. So uh, thank you, everyone, so much. Uh, a couple people were asking what the total is. I, I'm not sure what the total is. It's kind of hard to track between the three, but um, it's exceeding all expectations. So we're very thankful for that. Uh, it looks like the GoFundMe one is like $88 short of 60000 So Yeah, so if someone's got 88 bucks. Pop it in there. If they want to drop in there, it'd be pretty cool if that hit 60. Uh, so JT and I uh, were laughing. Adam and I were laughing earlier. I, I want to show you guys this. This was I, – I just thought this was hilarious. Um, Adam and I were getting a little loopy around 2 a.m. or so. And God bless Adam. He's such a good guy. I told him, dude, just go. You. He had the, he had the hardest week at work. At his full time, he was so busy all week, and then he still pulled this off. Uh, so huge shout out to Adam. Um, when we were love you, Adam. To, when we were talking to Doctor Chafee, my my camera is up really high, and like if if Adam would text me something, I would look down, and it would look like I'm sleeping. But then a couple times, I'm looking right at it. I'm like, man, it looks like my eyes are closed. <laughs> and I was asking Adam. I was like, dude, like. When Dr. Chafee's looking at me, does it look like does it look like my eyes are closed? Did you show them the photo? I'm gonna show them the photo now. Here's yeah, the show them the photo. So you guys, I, I, I was I talking to Chafee, like and this these two dudes are literally sleeping and leaving me with the guy I can't even keep up with. And I was like, so, it's my first time meeting with, with them. I can't keep up with them, and they're over there dozing. So I I took my camera and I took a picture of me and Adam and. Dr. Chafee's the best. 
he he saved us. I told him this during the thing. I said, we're really tired right now. We really appreciate this. I said this to him during the thing. I was like, this is basically, Dr. Chafee, like we're a football team. And Adam and I hand you the football. And then Adam, myself, and JT lay on the ground and go to sleep. And then you run the football through the other team and take it all yes, the way down to touchdown. touchdown. And we still end up winning, but we're just laying here sleeping. Because that's pretty much what he did for us. He, uh, he answered all these super chats just brilliantly while Adam and I were just trying to stay awake. Okay, I'll stop talking. Here's the picture real quick. I, I don't know. I think this is hilarious. Hopefully you guys have Yeah, this is why we were chuckling. I was – because they were trying to stay awake, and uh, they were just so dead obvious, man, that these two dudes were sleeping. You guys see that okay? They were sleeping. I agree they were sleeping. Yeah, you can tell both. And that was <laughs> that was at the Good same night, time. Lord. Their boxes are right below and above each other, so those aren't separate photos. It looks like time. it looks like our middle. Uh, Adam looks like his middle school picture or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so real quick, I took this picture and then I sent it to Adam, and then I'm, I'm just sitting here watching while Dr. Chafee's going, and JT was handling Dr. Chafee and giving him the questions, and I'm waiting for Adam to look, and then. Adam was asleep or something. Then his phone buzzed and he looked. He finally looked up, and when he looked up, he laughed like so loud. Yeah. Doctor Chaffee, yeah, because like, he, he knew he well, then, fell asleep and he's trying to play that off, yeah. man. Well, then after Adam laughed, um, I couldn't look at Adam. I just couldn't get the smirk off my face, and I was just like <laughs> trying not to look at Adam because I knew if I looked at Adam, I would laugh. So this is what the most hilarious part is. <laughs> This is what Adam – I eventually looked up at Adam, and I had my water, and I'm like, I'm going to drink my water because then I, Dr. Chafee won't see the big smirk on my face. So I start drinking my water, and then I slowly look over at Adam, and this is the look I see on Adam's face. And by the way, he had this look on his face for about five minutes, and I could not stop laughing. Here it is. Oh, wait. i got to switch here. Sorry. Uh, one sec. This is the look. This is the look Adam had on his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, you know, every time I looked up, I was like, God, I can't look. And if I ever get I felt so bad because I didn't want Dr. Chafee to think I was being disrespectful or laughing at him. No, but everybody was wondering what was up, going Adam on. Man. That look on his face, he couldn't, he thought it was so funny that picture. So that's what mm -hmm. that's what JT and I were laughing about. Hope you guys get a little kick out of that. And, uh, we're we're Adam a little said, delirious at this point, awake, but just counting know, up totals. Point. Carrie, he said he was awake though. <laughs> yeah, it's debatable. Those it's eyes debatable. are very. Well, I mean, we got the footage. We can go back and look. I think there was a. He says he was awake. There's a period of about twelve minutes where he had that look on his face. <laughs> though, so. I don't know how you guys didn't hit your head on the desk, man. <laughs> All right, I think we can end it now. What did we do here? 26 hours and 10 minutes? Should we check one more time? See if they we got keep the... asking if we're staying here until we hit 50,000. I'm already okay. reawake again. Like, I'm, I'm not going to bed, so. We're well at 59,912. I'm going to bed. <laughs> you know, it was good, though. I had fun. <clears throat> um, you guys fell asleep and didn't fall asleep. You know, it's something to watch. Yes. Todd so, had a blast. Oh, Adam's on here right now. Adam, did you see that? <laughs> Carnival today, Adam's in the chat. Dude, Adam, go to bed already. So, Adam, this is what I was imagining when, when I looked over at you. And Dr. Chippy <laughs> was talking, and I was just like, I don't want to look. I don't want to look. I don't want to look. And as soon as I looked, Adam had this Garth look on his face, and I almost spit my water out of him. Yeah, you guys face. were sleeping. Then I ended up asking Chafee if he's going to do a <laughs> carnivore calendar for the girls. Like, things got out of hand, man, when you guys <laughs> – Ditched me there, man. I, you know, I was gonna be more funny, JT. I, I'm going to bed. What'll be All more right, funny guys. is we can actually rewind this and watch this whole incident live again and see where I will spit my water out on the thing. I, I think I turned think my camera can, uh, off and went to the bathroom after that for about 15 minutes just to try to regroup. I still think we can get the rest of the funds for the documentary of Chafee does a carnivore calendar for the ladies. It's just oh, yeah. throwing it out there, him holding steaks and stuff, you know, by the grill. Just think about it, Chafee. Yep. <laughs> Hey, we just hit it. 60,131. Hey, we did it, guys. Amazing. Nice. Again, thank we you so much. Now. Huge shout out. JT, Graham, Adam, Alia. All of their links are below. If you guys could, there's a thousand people on here. Before you leave, go That's like so all of their channels. Subscribe. Give them some love. They worked incredibly hard on this whole thing. None of it would have happened uh, without them. So Cindy Brown, too, with a $200 
super chat right here at the end. You guys are amazing. Um, I'm sure we'll update everyone tomorrow, maybe on my community tab with the totals. Um, they're in a bunch of different spreadsheets, and uh, Ali and Adam were on top of that. So thank you guys so much. We're now able to go out and start filming the documentary, which was Bring the Bring hope to the hopeless, Gary. We can do it now, thanks to everybody. You guys are the best, man. Everybody, yeah. you guys, carnivores, are the best, man. Good. Absolutely. Give yourselves a round of applause, guys. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good morning, I mean. Yeah, good morning. Whatever. I, good from my side. <laughs> good something. <laughs>